You want to get all of the achievements in Dead Rising 3? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm Wes from Recommended Playing, and I'll be your guide through conquering Dead Rising 3 Apocalypse Edition's sadistic achievement set. We'll go into extreme detail in unlocking every single achievement step by step. The majority of the tasks in Dead Rising 3 are finding quite literally hundreds of collectibles across the main game and four DLC campaigns. The main game has a set of collectibles, and each DLC campaign has their own slew of exclusive collectibles. Thankfully, we can do all of the required DLC content in one single playthrough of each. In standard Dead Rising fashion, you'll need to defeat every single psychopath and kill the greatest number of zombies you've faced yet. If you thought the original Dead Rising's 53,594, Dead Rising 2's 72,000, and Dead Rising 2 off the record's whopping 100,000 kills were pushing the limits of your patience, well, I have some bad news for you. This time around, the kill count is a little bit deceptive. You'll need to kill 100,004 zombies for the achievement, left 100,004 for dead. However, the real number is hidden deep in the bowels of the Prestige Hound achievement. You'll need to kill about 350,000 zombies this time around. Thankfully, your kill count is persistent across all game modes. This is a task we'll be working through for the entirety of our playtime. That being said, no matter how efficient you are in your zombie slaughter, you will need to spend at least a few hours at the end of the playthrough just farming kills. Of course, there's some more run-of-the-mill stuff like completing the story content and doing side quests, but Prestige Hound may as well be the entire achievement set this time around. Nearly your entire focus will be on completing the various PP trials for Prestige Hound. It's filled with mundane and monotonous tasks like building the same combo weapons 50 times over. It's a lot, but we'll get through it all together. Hell, you know what? I've done it twice at this point. Once on PC and once on Xbox. Well, worth noting is that the Xbox specifically is a little finicky at best when it comes to unlocking achievements. The PC is generally pretty good from my experience, but Dead Rising 3 is not devoid of progression locking glitches. Be careful going into this. I will be doing my best to mitigate the risk here, but there are just some circumstances that will be beyond both of our controls. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting off, let's go for an immediate win here. This is an achievement you can get at any time. All you have to do for this one is join someone else's game in co-op. This will get you the Be A Dick achievement. You have to be the joiner this time around. Simply playing co-op isn't enough. You need to join someone else's game and play as Dick for this achievement to unlock. Obviously this can come naturally by just playing online or via collusion with a buddy. This is a lot simpler than the other Dead Rising co-op achievements so it's a welcome change. Grab yourself a buddy and join their co-op game. This time it's friend of the channel Sticky Rick. He's a fellow Cool Frog hoodie enjoyer. Links to his channel are below and in the pinned comment. As soon as you join as Dick, you'll get the achievement. Feel free to play the entire game in Cool Frog hoodies if you like. As usual, if someone helps you, do them a solid and help them get the achievement too. This one's easy, but be a team player. Make sure that you join your co-op partner's game to play as Dick, and then have them join your game so they can get the achievement as well. That's just being polite. You could realistically do the entirety of the base game in co-op if you like, but unfortunately the DLCs are single player only. In this guide we'll be tackling the DLCs first. This is useful for getting some early blueprints and starting power grinding early. Grab the Be A Dick achievement whenever you can, but for now it's time to move on to the meat of the game content. We'll be starting an Angels DLC, Fallen Angel. Our first major task is to power level to as close to level 50 as possible. Dead Rising 3 has a very large difficulty discrepancy. The higher level that you are, the easier the game becomes. Getting to level 50 is a major priority. The best way to power level is by starting in Angel's DLC. Head into the DLC menu, Untold Stories, and choose Episode 2, Fallen Angel. This is not going to be a full run of Angel's DLC. This is just for some early levels by collecting base game collectibles and gathering the very valuable Thrifty Trader book. 
Starting from a fresh level 1 file is by far the hardest part of the game. Be cautious and take your time. Save frequently in the menu during this segment, and if you ever need to reload a checkpoint or start over, feel free to do so. Enter the DLC and watch these opening cutscenes if you wish. Once you're in-game, you'll want to immediately run forward and pick up the vodka in the plastic crates and start drinking. Three vodkas down should cause you to throw up after a slight delay. This may seem useless, but you'll need to vomit 21 times for one of the PP trials for the Prestige Hound achievement. There are two crates of vodka here at the start. You'll want to consume all of them, three at a time. You should get halfway finished the vomiting PP trial. We'll finish this PP trial when we come back to finish Angel's DLC for real. Once you've consumed all the vodka, there are several items nearby to pick up and you can do so to add them to the locker. You'll need to add 100 weapons to the locker, but that should come naturally as you work your way through creating every combo weapon. I will not be tracking them this time. The locker will do that for you. When that's all finished, you can hop the fence. It's time to actually play the game. Grab the tennis ball launcher if you want, and some of the junk blocking the stairs on the right side. Now you can head up the landing, grabbing some items. More importantly is to pick up the first of 70 francs on the staircase. At the top, make sure to grab a few guns on the landing. Once you're equipped with a few guns, jump over the railing and take out the first ZDC speaker. This is one of 30. Neither of these are unique achievements, but they are required for Prestige Hound. Move forward, and on your right, you can pick up your first blueprint for the Freedom Bear. You should make Freedom Bear now using the nearby Robot Bear and LMG, the light machine gun. All you need to do is create Freedom Bear. You don't actually have to use it. You can feel free to drop it or move forward and use it on a crowd of zombies. Move northbound now to exit the school grounds. You can use the nearby motorcycle if you wish. When you get to street level, you should turn around and shoot the second ZDC speaker nearby. This is to your left after exiting onto the street. Now work your way down the right side. Enter the first store on your left, Slappy's Food Fun Shack. This is the first restaurant for one of the PP trials. On one of the booths, you'll find the Roaring Thunder Blueprint. You should make Roaring Thunder now using the Blanca Mask and a car battery. Getting 200 kills with the Roaring Thunder Strong Attack is required for a PP trial, so it's a good idea to get started now. You should be level 2 at this point by shooting the two ZDC speakers and collecting a Frank statue. Go to your menu now and enter the Attributes tab. The early game of Dead Rising 3 is all about maximizing your PP gains to get to level 50 as fast as possible. The smart tree at the bottom has increases to your PP gains and as such, I recommend maxing out the smart tree as early as possible. Basically, from now on, every time you have enough attribute points, you should take an upgrade in smarts. The first upgrade is for PP gains and detection radius for collectibles. By purchasing an attribute, you'll also get the first achievement, a little ambition for buying one attribute. And now back to the task at hand. You'll want to work towards your main objective marker in Central City. You should use the heavy attack with the Roaring Thunder to clear zombies as you work your way south out of Sunset Hills. When you get close to the ambulance, turn to your left and shoot the next ZDC speaker. This is 3 of 30. Continue to use the heavy attacks on the Roaring Thunder on nearby zombies. Avoid the firefighter zombies. They're far too strong to kill at the moment. Once your Roaring Thunder breaks from overuse, double back to the ambulance and get inside. Drive this south and to your right to get down to the highway. Now cross the highway and take a slight right before getting out. You can climb onto the ambulance for safety and shoot the fourth ZDC speaker. Once that's done, you should get back in the ambulance and double back. This time, drive up the ramp on your right. There is a military blockade at the top of the hill, but you can drive through it. Head to the end of the road and turn left. Keep an eye out for a white box truck on the left side. When you see this, Exit your vehicle and jump onto the hood. Climb the hood and then jump onto the roof. Now sprint and jump across to the awning. Collect the second Frank statue here. You should be level 4 now. Jump back down to ground level. Immediately on your left you should enter Clarou Collection. Inside is another blueprint. This is for the Big Bomb. You'll want to combine the nearby propane tank with the RPG. You can throw the Big Bomb out of Clarou Collection or drop it. Doesn't really matter. You can grab some nearby healing items, and then exit Clairou Collection. Now head to your left and work your way up the street. Head up the staircase to the pavilion. You should now climb up the planters on your left side until you can climb into the building. This is an illegal safe house, but unfortunately you can't do much with it as Angel. You can grab the Leadership Losers book from the table. This isn't useful now, but you should pick it up regardless. 
Double back outside and jump back down to street level once again. Head left to the landing and you can pick up some more goodies. Mostly your goal is to restock on firearms and healing items, but feel free to pick up nearby weapons for the weapon locker. Once you're restocked, head to the store on your left, Spore Trance. The third Frank statue is just sitting on the cashier's desk. Pick it up. Now you'll want to head south to the window and shoot it to get back out to the streets. The football player zombies are too hard to kill at the moment, so try and avoid them. Use your guns liberally to clear out the zombies as you work your way southbound on the left side. You'll want to turn into the military checkpoint. Climb onto the scaffolding by using the concrete barriers. Then run across and jump onto the military truck. Now turn around and sprint then jump across to the medical trailer. At the end of the trailer you'll find a corpse. Examine it for your first tragic ending. He really lost his head over her. Now double back and get back to the street. Here you should get into the nearby ambulance. You'll have to drive this around to get to the garbage truck just slightly north of your current location. Now climb onto the ambulance and use it to boost yourself onto the garbage truck. This has the next tragic ending. Collect it. Zombie outbreaks typically produce a great deal of garbage. You can grab the harpoon gun nearby if you wish and then jump down to ground level once again. Head southbound and make sure to head into the gas station on your left. This is required for Prestige Hound. One of four. Restock on healing items if you need them before heading out and getting into the nearby SUV. Drive this a short way to get to the combo garage. Head inside for more Prestige Hound progress. Once you have credits, you can head back outside. Now cross the street and head straight forward. There is another ZDC speaker on the corner of the museum directly in front of you. Blast it with a gun of your choice. That's 5 of 30. Now head back to the SUV and get inside. Central City has a lot of roadblocks. Your only real option for driving around is southbound and then turning west. Work your way south down to the hospital now. Once you get to the hospital, exit your SUV and head to the front entrance. You'll find a blueprint for your first combo vehicle, the shock dozer. You'll want to combine the nearby backhoe loader and the ambulance into a shock dozer. Drive this through the barricade and turn left past the trailer. There is another ZDC speaker to shoot here. Get on top of the shock dozer for safety and shoot the ZDC speaker. That's 6 of 30. I also reached level 5 here and that's another achievement. If you're a bit further ahead or behind at this point, don't worry about it. Lots of time to hit level 50. Get back in the shock dozer and head south through the tennis courts. On a bench nearby is a Frank statue. Grab it for number 4 of 70. Now work your way around to the fountain area to the blueprint. This is the explosive chair. Grab the blueprint and then combine the nearby wheelchair and dynamite into the explosive chair. You should dump this immediately, it's not required for anything, all you have to do is make it. You should get the planner achievement here for getting 5 blueprints. Really handing out these achievements, aren't you Capcom Vancouver? Back to the task at hand, double back to your shock dozer and drive it westbound until you reach the stage area. You can use the porta potty here to save if you wish, otherwise head to the nearby bleachers and collect the next tragic ending. The headliner really killed it. You're done at the stage for now. You can either hop the stage and head northbound, or you can run to the taxi on your left if there's too many zombies nearby. Either way, head to the restaurant north of the stage. This is good old Colombian Roastmasters. Make sure that you head inside to get credit for entering the store. This is required for a PP trial. You can grab some food if you need healing items while you're in here. Once you have credit for entering Colombian Roastmasters, exit out the north side of the store and head up the alleyway on your left. Head upstairs and then climb the wall in front of you. Now turn around to the left and get onto the roof of Colombian Roastmasters. Up here there is a Frank statue to collect as well as the Tactical RC Super Combo Blueprint. Make one now using the toy helicopter and a machete. Make sure that you grab your gun back if you need it. Then collect Frank number 5. Now it's time to head back down to street level. Jumping back down and making your way towards your yellow main objective marker. We're almost done in this initial segment. As you work your way up the street, use your guns to clear out some zombies for kill progress. When you see the mural of the Bikini Babe, you're very close. Head to your right and then up the stairs on your left. Climb onto the roof and then enter the safe house. Your main goal is here, the Thrifty Trader Book. This increases your PP gains, it's extremely valuable to get right now. The Thrifty Trader book is all we really came here for, so make sure that it's equipped in your menu now. Then, go into your menu and level up your smarts category as much as possible. There is a potential glitch regarding the Beer Hat Blueprint. Make sure that you have it now. 
The beer hat is required for a PP trial, so if you did not get the blueprint, reset your save file and do this segment over again. Unfortunately, Dead Rising 3 is just very glitchy in terms of achievements. You can address all of your complaints to Capcom Vancouver's head offices. Save your game now. One last thing to do in this segment, but it's not required since we will be coming back here again. Multiple times, in fact. It's just nice to try to get this done now if we can. You can exit the safe house and head back towards the main objective, which is the crashed cruise liner. Clear the zombies along the way and then bash open the door. You'll encounter several firefighter zombies here, and they are especially resilient. The shotgun can take them down, but it's very inconsistent, at least at a low level. Simply work your way around to the main objective, the medical bag. Nearby is another tragic ending. You can collect this if you can now. The interior design here leaves a lot to be desired. Once that's finished, you're done with this first pass through Angel's DLC. Save your game and then quit back to the main menu. You're liable to be beaten to death by firemen otherwise. The next task is to open up Brad's DLC. The Sworn to Protect achievement is failable, and if you fail, you will have to restart the DLC to try again. This is a simple lap around Los Perdidos as Brad to rescue a set of survivors. This is a good opportunity to power level and complete this achievement. We'll also grab some generic collectibles along the way, as well as some very important combo weapon blueprints. This segment all in should take about an hour of real time. Let's go ahead and fire up Untold Stories number 4, Brad Park's The Last Agent DLC. As usual, you can watch the cutscenes if you wish, and then when you gain control of Brad, make sure to grab the Four Wheel Fun Book off the table. Once you grab this new book, make sure you go back into your menu and change your book to Thrifty Trader for increased PP gains. Vehicle durability is good, but right now PP gains are supreme. Now it's time to exit the safe house. Head out the window and jump out to the street. You do not care about the main story this time, so you can ignore it for now. Start by heading straight ahead and going to the Los Perdidos Fire Station number 5. You'll want to climb the stairs on your right. At the top, pick up the blueprint for the electric staff. This will be our go-to grinding weapon. Grab the car battery first and then the nearby traffic light. Combine these into an electric staff now. Head back downstairs and then head out to the streets. Use the electric staff liberally to rack up some kills by firing it like it's a gun. You can run and gun while you do this. Do not use all of the ammo in the electric staff. Once you're low, stop using it. Then you'll want to reset your position. You should now head for the bus and climb up the staircase on the left. Once you hit a barricade, turn to your left and climb onto the landing above you. There's another great combo weapon blueprint here for the power shout. You should make the power shout now by combining the nearby traffic cone and speaker together. The first version of the power shout is pretty lame, but it gets a lot better. Now you'll want to drop back down to ground level and use the power shout to clear zombies as you move westbound. You'll want to turn south into Special Jay's Cafe. This is just past the bus. Inside, you should pick up Frank Statue number 6 and grab the nearby propane tank. This will be useful shortly. You'll also get credit for entering Special J's Cafe, one of the required restaurants. Once that's finished, you'll want to head back to the street and head westbound again. Once you hit the next barricade, you'll want to head to your left into the Los Perdidos power plant. Once again, work up the left side and you'll find a transformer that you can climb onto. Then use the transformer to climb onto the scaffolding above. There's another propane tank here if you missed the first one for any reason. Follow the scaffolding here along the left side and cross the door to get into an apartment. There's Frank statue number 7 on the bed. With Frank snatched up, you should exit and get back onto the scaffolding. Follow this slowly around the pillar until you get to the right turn. This can be tricky and it's easy to fall off. If you do fall, just work your way back to the transformer at the north side and climb up again. Now, work your way towards the next blueprint. This is for the Electro Fire Staff. You'll want to combine a propane tank in your inventory with the electric staff to create an electro fire staff. This comes complete with an ammo refresh. You should then use the nearby materials to make another electro fire staff. This is the battery combined with the traffic light to make an electric staff and then with a propane tank to make an electro fire staff. 
Once you have the two Electro Fire Staff, you should use the Heavy Attack button to swap them from Electric Damage to Fire Damage. This is significantly better at clearing zombies for one, but we also need to get a large number of kills with Fire Weapons for a PP trial. Might as well double dip wherever we can. Once you have the two Electro Fire Staffs, return to ground level and head to the streets south of the power plant. The first survivor is here. Jack will be on a taxi. Use the Electro Fire Staff to clear the zombies around him. You should get the achievement Local Hero for rescuing a survivor, which is nice, but there's still quite a bit to do for Brad's Sworn to Protect achievement. Now you'll want to get back to the main strip and head into Big Bucks Heavy Equipment Rentals. This is on your left. I ended up at level 8 at this point from various kills with my combo weapons, which can get you another level into PP gain, which is always a priority. Once you've taken the next level in smarts, if you can afford it, head to the top of the stairs and grab the 8th Frank statue from the desk. You can grab some healing items if you have the inventory space here as well. Cross the street and use a flame blast from your Electro Fire Staff to shoot the ZDC speaker by the El Spaniel liquor sign. That's 7 of 30. I went south to the warehouse. Inside, you should head into the small room on your right for the 9th Frank statue. You can also make another power shout here using a pylon and speaker if you have the inventory space. Now head through the warehouse southbound until you can get to the Big Buck construction site. Use the power shout here to clear zombies as you work your way along the south street. You'll find Mila nearby on a truck. Clear out the zombies around her to rescue her, and when you have a confirmation, double back eastbound to the gas station. You need to enter the gas station for another PP trial. Now you should head directly north to the dumpster filled with flaming garbage. Jump inside and grab the blueprint for the electric shout. This is built from a power shout and car battery, so build one now. Jump back to the streets and start using the electric shout to clear zombies in the construction yard. You'll want to work your way westbound towards the Rancherama. When your electric shout is exhausted and out of ammo, swap to your electro fire staff and use the fire shots. You want to do your best to maintain a fairly large kill streak here. The more kills that you get, the more PP each kill is worth, so you should do your best to get as many kills as possible. The faster you level up, the better off you'll be. In the corner of the construction site, you can make beer hats using the keg and construction helmet. This is a strong multi-use healing item, and you need to build 50 of them, so make one of them now. Now you can head to the portable building and use the porta potty to save if you wish. Then you can climb the crates on the side of the building to get you onto the roof. From here, make sure to grab Frank statue number 10 before jumping back down to ground level and heading northbound. Head north through the street and you'll see a notification for Maya needing to be rescued. The direct route to her is blocked, so you'll need to cut into Bob's super tires on your left and head around. Exit the store to the street and save Maya by blasting zombies with the Electro Fire Staff. One more rescue down. With Maya rescued, you'll want to head westbound. You should head all the way to the end and jump over the ramp. Turn to your left now and enter Rocket's Red Glare. Jump the counter and then grab the 11th Frank statue from the file cabinet. That should push you to level 10. Now you'll want to continue south for more collectibles. Start by heading to your left and hopping the barricade after exiting Rocket's Red Glare. Turn to your left and jump the fence here. You should head to the blueprint on the ground in this courtyard for the Electro Ice Staff. You should instead build another Electro Fire Staff here. This is battery and traffic light to make an electric staff into a propane tank to make an electro fire staff. We'll build an electro ice staff a little later, don't worry. We will build every combo weapon. If you dropped any weapons to build this combo weapon, pick them up now and then jump back over the fence. You should head to your left into the warehouse now. Clear zombies using the electro fire staff and head up the stairs in the warehouse. Turn to your left at the top of the stairs. Now jump out the window and cross the plank to get to the roof of the Rancherama. Now follow the path left and drop down this hole. Follow the natural curvature of this building into the back room. Here you can pick up the Frank and Top 10 Drink Mixes book. This is Frank number 12. You should immediately go back into your menu and change back to the Thrifty Trader book in the Survival Guide. If you need some healing items, grab yourself a mixed juice of your choice. Every single one of them is right here. Now you'll need to double back and then exit out the main window. This will take you to the roof of the Rancherama where you can find the Super Shout Blueprint. The Super Shout requires a Power Shout which you can make using a speaker and a pylon. Then you can combine this new Power Shout with the radio. If you're full on inventory, you can skip this. We can easily build one a little later. Once that's done, you should drop down the hole once you have the Blueprint and you should be in the Rancherama. This will give you credit for the PP trial. 
Turn northbound on the street and make sure you shoot the ZDC speaker number 8 on the way out. Now continue north and make sure you focus heavily on getting a high kill streak to get as much PP as possible as you work your way back to El Spaniel Liquor. This time you should head north and you'll find Ryan on an armored van. Clear the zombies around him for a PP bonus and credit for the sworn to protect achievement. Once that's accomplished, head eastbound towards your starting location. I hit level 11 here. This is an important level because it increases your book effects. You should be equipped with the PP book, Thrifty Trader. This means that you'll get even more PP. You should get the Ladder Climber achievement for buying 10 attributes at this point as well. If you're not level 11 yet, don't worry. Pick up the upgrade as soon as you hit level 11. Continue eastbound, but head north into Fiefdom Meat Suppliers when you can. You're going to want to head to the back room and examine the tragic ending in the refrigerators at the back. Only the freshest meat here. Exit out of Fiefdom Meat Supply. You can save at the Porta Potty directly south if you wish. Now you should head westbound once again. And this time you should head into the nearby strip club. Work your way to the upper level and make sure you grab the Super Massager Blueprint. Make this now using a massager and a leaf blower nearby. You need to get 100 kills of the Super Massager for a PP trial, but it is actually significantly easier to do at max level. Don't bother with the Super Massager for now, we'll come back to it later. There's also a Frank statue in the private booth directly to your left. This is Frank number 13. This one is actually pretty tricky to grab, but make sure you get it before moving on. Now you'll want to exit the strip club via the window directly in front of the Super Massager blueprint. You can attempt kills with the Super Massager, but it's really awful until you max out the firearms category. Cross the rooftops using the plank towards the southwest. You should start by destroying the ZD speaker on the southwest corner of the roof. That's 9 of 30. Next up, there's a blueprint for the ultimate shout here. You should make one. It's very powerful. Start by making a power shout with a pylon and speaker. Then combine the nearby portable stereo to make a super shout, just in case you missed it earlier. Finally, grab the car battery to make the super shout into the ultimate shout. You'll likely need to drop some items to do these combines. Just pick them up once you're done. Now you should examine the tragic ending next to the lounge chair. They were just trying to get ahead. Tragic. Quite the lucrative trip to the roof though. Now you'll want to head north and jump down to the alley below you. Make sure you jump onto the right side to avoid a lengthy runaround. You should see a white box truck to your left. You'll want to climb onto the hood and then jump onto the roof. Now use the roof to get yourself to a small balcony on the roof of Almuda Farms. Follow this to your right and hop the sign. There's a Frank statue on the little shanty here. Jump onto the roof and grab it. This is Frank number 14. Now head to the north side of the roof, and you should pick up the blueprint for the elemental staff. You should drop most of your inventory in a safe place here. You'll want to make an electro ice staff since we haven't done this yet. Start by combining the battery and traffic light to make an electric staff. Now combine the liquid nitrogen canister with the electric staff to make the electro ice staff. Finally, combine the electro ice staff with the propane tank to make the elemental staff. Now pick up whatever of your inventory you can. Ditch any exhausted electro fire staffs. The ultimate shout is worth hanging on to. Swap all of your staffs to fire. We still need a ton of fire kills. Drop off the roof to ground level on the north side once again. Your goal is the bus depot to the northwest. Head to the boss on the left side and inspect the corpse in front of it for a tragic ending. The 103 from Albuquerque was definitely on time today. There's another blueprint in the bus station. Head inside and grab the Glove Gun Blueprint. Use the nearby pogo stick and the Proto Man cutout to make the Glove Gun. This straight up sucks and isn't required for anything, so ditch it and forget it exists from now on. Pick up whatever you had to drop to make room for this. Head back outside the bus depot and then turn westbound. Liberally kill zombies with the Electro Fire Staff and head towards the wall. There's a ZDC speaker in front of you. Blast it for number 10, one third of the way there. Now you should turn southbound and you'll get a notification for Vicky. You'll want to cut through the recycling plant as you work your way southwest towards her. Clear out the zombies in front of Vicky to rescue her. You can use the van if you wish, but head straight south to get into the store. Turn to your right and grab the slapper blueprint from the display. Combine the nearby boxing gloves and the broom to make the slapper. Once again, these are also terrible. Drop them and forget they ever exist. Pick up whatever you drop to make them. Inventory will be less of a problem soon, I promise. Head to the south end of the store and grab the Frank on the shelf. This is number 15. Make sure to swap all of your staffs back to fire. 
Head outside and there will be a ZDC speaker on your right directly after exiting. Shoot it and that's 11 of 30. You'll want to pass through Rocket's Red Glare once again. This time, you should keep heading south and clear the zombies using the Electrofire Staff for additional PP gains. You can also use the Ultimate Shout. At the end of this street, you should turn to your right and blast the ZDC speaker on the wall. That's 12 of 30. Now, turn eastbound and work your way down the street until you can turn right down an alley. There's a porta potty here to save if you wish. Your goal is to head down the street now and head to the garage door. You can grab the nearby SUV to speed this up if you wish. Once you get to the garage door on the east side of the street, collect the tragic ending. The garage door keeps sticking, for some reason. Once that's done, you can head north and you'll be back at the Rancherama and Big Bucks construction site. Use the Electrofire Staff to work your way back north now. Turn eastbound and you can use the ultimate shout once you're in more densely packed areas of zombies. You should be able to get a fairly sizable kill count. Work your way past El Spaniel Liquor and continue eastbound to get back to the power plant. Keep spamming kills with the ultimate shout until you're out of ammo with it. Now you're going to want to climb the transformer just like at the start of the game. Get back onto the upper scaffolding now. This was mainly an inventory issue before. Follow the scaffolding back to the apartment and then turn right. This time, head straight through very carefully and pick up the next blueprint. This is the Blambo. Combine the nearby Roman candle and crossbow together for the Blambo. One more combo weapon made. You should now jump back down to ground level and head north and then turn westbound. Use the Blambo to clear any zombies in your way. This has very limited ammo, so try and exhaust it to free up inventory space. You're basically done with South Elmuda at this point, and our next goal is Ingleton. I managed to pass the 1000 zombies killed threshold here, but it's not important. I'm not even going to mention zombie kills anymore. Spoiler alert, but you need to kill about 342,500 zombies. Everything less than that is just a stepping stone. Anyways, enough bad news. Continue eastbound to get back to the Elmuda bus depot. This time, head through the maintenance area and pick up the suitcase. There's a Frank statue here. Pick it up for Frank 16 of 70. Now exit into the industry tunnel and get in the student driver car nearby. You'll want to drive this north through the industry tunnel to Ingleton. You'll find Steven right before the Chinese Opera House. Get out your Electrofire staff and clear the zombies around him for a rescue. Now you can get back in your car. This is a good opportunity for a quick save now as well. You should definitely be quick saving after every rescue from now on. Drive forward and drive the sedan into the Chinese Opera House and drive it straight into this pillar. Exit your car and jump onto the roof. Then you can use it to boost yourself onto the pillar for a tragic ending. Getting high doesn't always solve your problems. Once done, jump down and head to your right. Make sure to grab the Frank statue on the table nearby. This is 17 of 70. Now head down into your right and grab the blueprint for the flaming helmet. Make sure to build one now using the nearby dragon mask and the motor oil. We'll have to make another 49 of these later. Grab whatever you drop to make this and then head south. Follow the path to the access doorway, head down and pick up the mecha dragon blueprint. This should be your 25th blueprint and you should get the journeyman achievement here. But if you don't, you know, it'll pop eventually. Good old Xbox. The Mecha Dragon combo weapon isn't great, but you should build it using a Dragon Mask and a Parasol. Keep it if you have the inventory space, otherwise you should ditch it. Once you've built it, continue down the tunnel and exit out the door. Now turn to the left and head to the end of the blue tarped scaffolding. In the small alcove there's a Frank statue. This is number 18, pluck it up. I reached level 15 here, which will get you the last tier of the smarts category. This increases your kill streak timer and gives you more PP, a very worthy upgrade. If you're not level 15 yet, don't worry, getting to level 50 is inevitable. Back on the streets, head to your left to find Kalyan on a van. Work your way there and torch the zombies around him using the Electrofire staff. Once you have rescue confirmation, head north up this street. Turn to your right to get into Sunny Luck Fortune. You'll want to clear the area and pick up the Dragon Punch blueprint. You can make one now using the nearby motorcycle engine and the boxing gloves. You'll need to build another 50 of these, but we can worry about that later. Exit back out to the streets and head back to the travel agency. There's a ZDC speaker we passed over on the way to Kalyan. Just blast it and that's 13 of 30. Now head north once again towards the Rancho Rama. After the sandbag barricade, turn left down the alley. 
I managed to finish the first of the Fire Kills PP trials, which boosted me to level 16. With all of the smarts category finished, it's time to work on, well, everything else. Inventory is obviously insanely useful, as is health. I'm going with ranged ammo, however. This will give our current inventory of Electrofire staffs an immediate, retroactive ammo boost. Inventory is next on the docket. There's lots of things to do in this alleyway, but head forward to find Kristen on a van behind the road roller. Work your way there and clear the zombies swarming her. Keep using fire because we need about 4,000 kills exclusively with flames. Once Kristen is rescued, double back to the alleyway with the van. Turn to your right and enter the garage for the Hail Mary blueprint. This is just like Dead Rising 2. A football and a grenade. This is closed in the early chapters of the main story, so this is technically getting it early. You will need a lot of Hail Mary kills over time, but for now, just build one. Head to the main street and get as many kills as you can with all of the Hail Marys in your inventory. Just unload them into zombies and then double back to the garage area. This time, you'll want to climb the van out front. Jump onto the hood and boost to the roof. This is a pretty common thing in Dead Rising 3. From here, you can jump onto the awning and then cross to the little shanty. Pick up the blueprint for the Grim Reaper. This is by combining a katana and a sickle. With that made, head north once again to get back to the main street. This time, head to your left towards the cab company. Clear out as many zombies as you can using the Electrofire Staff or the Reaper as you work your way westbound. Try and use the Reaper until you break it for more inventory availability. Access to the highway will be barricaded in Brad's DLC. Just run past it towards the cab company. There's a ZDC speaker about halfway up the street. Blast it for number 14 of 30. Then head all the way to the end of this street and you can pick up the blueprint for the sticky bomb. This is hidden in the back of the truck. Combine the scissors and the grenade here for the sticky bomb. I hit level 17 on the way here so two points into inventory for that extra space is more than welcome and long overdue. It's time to double back to the junction and this time head northbound. Head to the Diamond Panty Strip Club. It's north of your current location, and it's on the right side past the car dealership. Throw your sticky bombs here into the large crowds of zombies. Liberally dump your ammo here, trying to collect as many kills as possible. Once you've cleared out the parking lot, head north and use sticky bombs to clear more zombies. Once you've used them all, swap back to the Electrofire staff. Continue north until you see the open garage on your left. You'll want to quickly dip inside and grab the 19th Frank statue and then head out. Mike will be directly north of you now. If you have a sticky bomb left, use it to clear the zombies. Otherwise, blast them with the Electrofire staff. Once you have confirmation that Mike is safe, quickly head south for a second to shoot the 15th ZDC speaker. That's halfway done those. Now head north into the house just past Michael. You should grab the blueprint on your right now. This is for the Mecha Dragon Blade. You can make this one right now. It's a Mecha Dragon, which is Dragon Mask and Parasol, followed by a Katana. If you have the inventory space and brought the original Mecha Dragon with you, you can make a new Mecha Dragon now, otherwise just quickly combine one. Now exit the house and turn left eastbound onto the street. Almost immediately after leaving that house, you'll find another Frank statue on the porch. Just get up there and pick up Frank 20 before resuming your sprint up the street. Use the Mecha Dragon Blade to try and maintain a kill streak as you work your way to the next house. This one has a blueprint for the spiked bat on the porch. Combine the nearby box of nails and a baseball bat into the spiked bat. This is a shadow of its former self, and will be built once for credit, and never again. Maintaining the trend, get to the next house on the left side. You'll have to enter this one through the back door, so smash the fence and head into the backyard. Loop around to open the door to Matt's house, I guess? Who's Matt? Who cares? Head around to get into the bedroom. There's a tragic ending here. Collect it. Every day starts with a good breakfast. Now you can open the front door to unlock it as you head outside. Continue eastbound up the street and you'll get a notification for Scott when you're near the motel. Scott's on a van, so clear the zombies around him for the rescue credit and a nice little PP bonus. Now you'll want to head to the second level of the motel by climbing onto the nearby truck. Same trick. Climb onto the hood, then get onto the roof, and then boost up to the second level. On your right is Frank 21 of 70. Pick him up. This boosted me to level 19, so I opted to purchase some attributes. One extra health cube and an inventory upgrade. 
back on task, get back to ground level, and get back on the street. Then head back westbound to get to the crashed helicopter. Head inside and collect a tragic ending near a cornucopia of guns. This flight has been cancelled due to technical difficulties. Exit the helicopter, heading southbound. Work your way down while staying on the right side of the street. You'll want to enter the Aduna Boxing Gym. Cross to the back of the gym to find the Tenderizer's Blueprint. This combo is different than in Dead Rising 2. You'll need the MMA gloves with a car exhaust this time around. You can use the Tenderizer's now if you want to make some progress, or if you're light on combo weapons. Regardless, head back out of the gym the way you came in. If you're choosing to use the Tenderizer's, you can bust up some zombies using heavy attacks for progress as you work your way to Shanks. Once you're ready, you should enter Shanks. Immediately, you should snag the Fire Reaper blueprint from the display cases. You'll want to make another Grim Reaper using the nearby Scythe and Katana Sword. Then run to the other side of Shanks and combine the Grim Reaper with the nearby Gasoline Canister. In the back room of Shanks, there's another Frank statue to collect. Head to the back now and grab the 22nd Frank statue after clearing some zombies out. Once that's done, you can exit Shanks the same way that you came in. The Fire Reaper is useful for grinding some PP and fire kills. Use the strong attack as you work your way south to the crashed prison bus. Once again, climb onto the hood of the bus to get onto the roof. You'll find the heavy metal blueprint here. You'll want to make one using the nearby lead pipe and 2x4. Feel free to ditch your Fire Reaper or a Mecha Dragon for this. Now head to the end of the bus and try not to fall off, but if you do, like I did, head into Hamburger Fiefdom for restaurant credit, you'll need this anyways. Now just get back onto the bus and this time around, jump onto the roof of Hamburger Fiefdom. Collect the tragic ending near the harpoon gun and grenade. You may need to move them manually to collect this. At least he got a healthy last meal. Get back down to the bus and onto the center street in Ingleton. You'll need heavy metal kills for a PP trial so you can farm some now using the strong attack. Spin to win baby! Work your way eastbound farming kills. Make sure to shoot the 16th ZDC speaker south of the movie theater. If you don't have any guns, you can throw something at it. Once that's done, you'll want to enter the movie theater. Run up the right side and then follow the stairs and winding path until you can reach the roof. This is a little bit of a run. Once you're on the roof, you should head to your left and look at the landing below you. This is a very annoying jump, but if you miss, just get back onto the roof and try again. Jump onto the landing to collect another tragic ending. Break a leg at the show tonight! or more. Believe it or not, there's more on the roof. Drop back down to ground level and then head back into the movie theater. Now double back onto the roof, exactly the same as before. Instead of heading left, you'll want to run straight forward and drop down to the roof below you. On the left, you'll find the flame mecha dragon blueprint. This is more useful than the mecha dragon blade since we need fire kills. Make another mecha dragon using the dragon mask and the nearby parasol. Then combine this with firecrackers into a flame mecha dragon. Now directly north of your location is another Frank statue. Climb up to the next rooftop and snag it off of the AC unit. 23 of 70 francs. You'll want to jump down to the courtyard on your right now. Head to the door to the apartments. Open this door and head up the staircase. Enter the first apartment on your left and clear the zombies out. Now grab the 24th franc off of the bedside table. That's all to do in here for now. Head down and back outside. After exiting, immediately turn to your right and use the recycling dumpster to boost yourself over the wall into the walled off area. This area has the Death Mask Reaper blueprint. Pick this up now. Now you'll want to make a Grim Reaper again and this time combine it with the Reaper Mask nearby for the Death Mask Reaper. I hit level 20 in the apartment so I grabbed another life cube and melee weapon durability. It's nice to get the first upgrade in every category for starting out and then you can start focusing on individual categories to try to max them out. There are multiple ways out of this courtyard. Climb up the nearby car or dumpster and jump the wall to get back to the alley. Rip to your left and then turn right past the stop sign and work your way southbound back to the main street near the movie theater. This time however, your target is the big buck hardware truck. This is forward and to your left. You can use the Death Mask Reaper to clear zombies on the street first if you like. I did. Every kill adds up. This is the same shtick from those Vancouver boys. Climb up the hood of the truck to get onto the roof of the truck. Now jump from the roof of the truck to the roof of the store. Clear out the zombies on the roof if you wish and carefully sprint and jump across the roof to the south near the park. This roof has the ultimate reaper blueprint. The materials are not all here though. Before you head down, make sure that you sprint and jump across to the play area and get onto the roof to pick up Frank 25 of 70. If you miss this, 
double back to the big buck hardware truck and try again. Now you can jump back down to ground level. Then grab the gasoline can and combine it with your death mask reaper to make a ultimate reaper. This is a fire weapon so it's worth hanging on to. Exit the park to the south and then head eastbound to get back to a main street. Immediately on your right you'll see another ZDC speaker attached to the funeral home. Blast it with the electro fire staff. Now you should head northbound to the gas station. This is on your left as you head up the street. You need to enter this gas station for a PP trial. That's three down, only one left. Exit the gas station and head back towards the movie theater. This time head into the alley heading northbound. Stick to the gated area on the right side until you find a small shanty on the left. Head to the back and climb up to get onto the roof. You can pick up the ultimate Mecha Dragon blueprint here. You should make one now by combining firecrackers with a Mecha Dragon blade or combining a katana sword with the flame Mecha Dragon. Both work, both outcomes are the same. If you still have the stuff in your inventory, you could make two ultimate Mecha Dragons here. When you're done, drop down and then immediately climb the scaffolding directly north of you. Work up the scaffolding to reach the roof. You'll find another blueprint here, the Chop and Talk. Use the nearby game console and battle axe to make one. Now you can dump this and safely forget that this combo weapon exists. It's garbage. We're basically done Ingleton now. Jump back down to ground level on the north street and head to the motel once again. This time you're going to want to head northbound towards the highway. This is to get to Sunset Hills. You should focus on using the ultimate mecha dragon here. We want to keep some ammo in the electro fire staff. Work your way north until you can find a taxi. Now get in and drive the taxi to the right. The left is barricaded. On the way out you'll find another ZDC speaker on your right. Stop the taxi, get out and climb up. Blast the speaker, that's 18 of 30. Get back in the taxi and snake around the fire truck to drive up the highway towards Sunset Hills. It's probably a good opportunity to save your game as well. Drive through the highway all the way to Sunset Hills, but you should stop and shoot a ZDC speaker on your right. Don't worry, there's going to be a lot of backtracking and coming through the same areas multiple times. It's unfortunately kind of necessary, but it means if you do miss anything, it's easy to pick it up along the way. Once you're in Sunset Hills, stop and ditch the taxi. You'll want to enter the sushi restaurant on your right for store credit for the PP trial. Then jump the barricade to head southbound. You should see Jasmine on the left, but start by blasting ZDC speaker 19 on the right first. Now clear the zombies around Jasmine to rescue her. That's one more down. Double back to the north street in Sunset Hills while clearing zombies with the ultimate mecha dragon. Head to the right now and you should see Alex as you pass by the fire trucks. Alex is on a Hummer. Clear the zombies around him for a rescue. There is another ZDC speaker nearby. Blast it for PP and progress. There's only 10 left. Head southbound once that's all finished. Clear as many zombies as you can along the way using combo weapons. ZDC speaker 21 is near the school bus as you follow the street. Blast it on the way. Do your best to maintain a kill streak and farm kills with the ultimate mecha dragon until you reach the landslide. Jump over this and then follow the path, or do some silly routing if you're a silly boy like me. Continue working your way southeast down the street, and when you get close to the comm tower you'll find Greta, yet again on a van. Clear the zombies around her for a rescue and some bonus PP. You need to enter this Rancherama, so quickly head inside for credit and then double back south across the street to enter Speedy Espresso. Speedy Espresso is an important restaurant, the back room has the materials for another elemental staff. Quickly build one here using the battery and traffic light followed by liquid nitrogen followed by propane tank. You'll also get credit for entering Speedy Espresso, that's one more restaurant down. With this elemental staff you should once again switch it to fire. Now you can run northwest to get to the gas station. Just like all the gas stations you need to enter this one. This should be the fourth and final gas station and you'll finish a PP trial for some bonus PP. Now you can exit the gas station and head up to the side of the gas station to find a combo vehicle blueprint. This is the Party Slapper. Combine the nearby street sweeper and party van to make it. Get inside and you can use the attack button to suck up zombies. You need 1000 kills with this but that can be worked out over time. Drive the Party Slapper forward a ways and then get out. Cross the street and jump the yellow barricade to find a ZDC speaker. This is 22 of 30 in the parking lot. Blast it and then get back in your party slapper. You'll get a notification for Eva needing to be rescued as you get close to the intersection. You can use the sucking power of the party slapper or jump out and clear the zombies using the electro fire staff. They both work fine. 
Once that's done and Eva is rescued, get back inside the party slapper. This time, head south and exit Sunset Hills. You'll want to turn to your left and head towards the quarantine area. The party slapper is really annoying to maneuver, so when you get to the medical trailers, bail out. You'll want to work your way south to find Tracy on a Humvee. Clear the zombies around here using your stocked combo weapons for yet another rescue and PP bonus. We're getting pretty close to finishing this achievement. Nearby is the Saber Shot Blueprint. You should absolutely hunt this down. You can build it using the nearby Sawn-Off Shotgun and a Machete. You do need to farm 200 kills with the Saber Shot, so no time like the present to get started. There's also some food nearby to stock up on if you need some. Head south and get back onto the highway access. Use the Saber Shot here to farm some kills. Use the gunshots liberally and the melee strong attack to clear zombies as you work your way up to Central City. As you turn south into Central City, you'll find Alec, once again, on a van. Clear the zombies around him for a rescue. Getting very close now. There's a ZDC speaker very close to Alec, so make sure after the rescue, you blast it. That's 23 of 30. Work your way south down the street now. This is a walking only area, so jump the barricade. Past the newsstand, you'll find Jordan on the left side of the street. Once again, on a vehicle. Clear the zombies around him for more PP bonuses and rescue credit. The next survivor is to your right. Cut down the alley and head all the way to the end. Once you pass the cab, you'll find Madeline when you turn left. Before you do, make sure to blast the ZDC speaker by the military blockade. That's 24 of 30. Now turn south down the street to rescue Madeline. Clear out the zombies around her and make sure she's rescued before moving on. You'll want to continue southbound now, all the way to the end of the street. As you pass by the courthouse, shoot the ZDC speaker on your right. Only five more ZDC speakers to go. Turn left down the street and sprint your way towards the stage area. You'll eventually come across a taxi you can choose to get in and drive. I would recommend it. Get to the stage and then pass it. Bob's the second last survivor. Bob is standing near the fountain, so drive to him and clear the zombies around. Make sure he's properly rescued, and then it's time to head north up the street. Continue using your combo weapons to clear a path through the streets, maintaining a kill streak for extra PP gains if you can. You're going to want to work your way north to the Rancherama and gas station. Sam is the last survivor. She's just past the porta potty. Make sure to clear the area of zombies, and once she's saved, you're done. Once the area is clear, you should get the achievement, but this may take a while to pop. I reached level 25 here, so I also got the Expert achievement, followed by the Sworn to Protect achievement after a little wait. You should save your game at the nearby Porta Potty now. We're done with Brad for now. If you want to run around for some extra PP and kills using your stocked combo weapons, feel free. All levels will help moving forward. Once you've exhausted your supply of combo weapons or you're just ready to stop, you can spend your attribute points. At level 25, I was able to finish out my inventory and also bought combo food. Combo food is important, it's for a PP trial, and it's good to kind of get it out of the way soon. Once all that's done, make sure to save your game and then quit out to the main menu. It's time for yet another DLC swap. It's time to enter the third DLC, Chaos Rising, featuring Hunter, known colloquially as a super racist guy, or SRG for short. I think it's because I'm so racist. This is a very quick trip through the DLC to get exactly one blueprint early. We're looking for the ZAR, the Zombie Assault Rifle, and it's inside the police station, the starting location of this DLC. This shouldn't take you longer than five minutes, so head into the DLC now. This is DLC number three. You can watch the cutscenes if you wish. You can grab some nearby weapons when you gain control from the desk. Probably a good idea to get some stuff in the locker. Otherwise, make for the stairs. Keep grabbing weapons on the way up and make your way to the second level. Grab some food if you need some healing items. Pass through to the next area and work your way up the stairs to the third floor. Once you're at the third floor, head to the marker on your left, then run to the corpse to get the key. It's time to double back all the way down to ground level. Bash your way through the third floor offices back to the staircase. Descend the second floor, then pass through to get to the stairs down to the cell block. 
Once you're back in the cell block, turn to your right and use the key on the double doors. There is another staircase down here, so work your way down grabbing anything interesting or new along the way. Your biggest challenge will be this hallway. Just bash your way through or otherwise avoid combat. You're home free once you're around the corner. Simply take out the last zombie and then turn to your right to grab the ZAR blueprint from the lockers. You can make a ZAR now if you want using the nearby shotgun and AR-15. There is one more Frank statue you can get early here so it's worth doing now. Head out the door in front of you to the parking garage. You can use the ZAR here to collect some kills and PP as you work your way to the locker room on the left side. Head up the staircase and open the door. Now turn around and find the Frank statue in the open locker on your right. That's 26 of 70 and we're done with this DLC. I hit level 26 at this point. I opted to purchase the generic gun combine as well as the generic blunt combine. Generic Gun Combine will let you turn any two guns into a ZAR and it's extremely useful. Generic Blunt Combine is also useful as once you get the Split Shot Blueprint, you can turn any blunt weapon and any gun into a split shot. Easily one of the best combo weapons in the game. But that's it for this DLC. It's time to tackle our first full DLC now, starting with Untold Stories 1, Operation Broken Eagle. Operation Broken Eagle has 9 unique achievements. Most of these are story related and as a result unmissable. But Operation Broken Eagle has its own slew of unique collectible based trophies. You should be able to get all of them in around 2.5 hours while completing the DLC one single time. Dead Rising 3 just has an absolutely absurd number of collectibles, unfortunately. Operation Broken Eagle has high zombie density, meaning we can continue to power level very effectively here. It's possible to get very close to the level cap by completing this DLC. We will also be working down some of the major PP trials, as well as continuing to collect base game collectibles. Time to fire up the first DLC, Operation Broken Eagle. As usual, you can watch the cutscenes if you wish. You'll start by crash landing in the aqueduct between South Elmuda and Sunset Hills. You'll want to immediately run ahead to grab some rations to fill your health. Smash the box to grab some more rations. Fill your inventory with weapons to get yourself situated. You'll be forced into a bit of walk and listen, so move forward until it's over. Once you're free, head to the cement truck on the left side. You should know the drill at this point. Climb up the hood to get onto the roof. Use the drum of the cement mixer to get onto the large concrete pillar. At the top, head to your left to get into the shanty to find a Frank statue, that's 27 of 70. There's more to get up here, so wrap your way around the pillar to find a combo weapon blueprint. This is Sentry Cat. You can make one now using the nearby LCD screen and the beer keg. Sentry Cat's pretty lame so you can just ditch it for now. Head back down to ground level and head northbound. I managed to get the tape it or die disciple achievement here for making 50 combo weapons. This is inevitable, and we'll get it about 10 times over, so don't worry if it doesn't pop here. Continue north, working your way up the left side until you see a large dumpster. You'll want to climb in and get inside to find a tragic ending. It's hard when you get dumped. There are a lot of 2x4s in this dumpster. You can combine several of them together into heavy metals with the generic blunt combine you picked up earlier. Make a few heavy metals before exiting the dumpster. Use the heavy metal strong attack to work through the crowds of zombies. You'll need 200 total kills, so making some progress now is a great idea. Once you've broken both heavy metals, you'll want to reorient yourself. You'll want to head south to the large concrete pillar now. Climb up the ramp to get to the top. You'll find a lot of super rations here, as well as a box full of shotguns. With generic gun combined, you can make a lot of czars. You should make several czars now, and make sure the rest of your inventory is filled with super rations. When you're finished, jump back down to ground level. This time, head to your yellow main objective marker. Run up the hill towards the subway station. If you still have any heavy metal in your inventory, you should use it to get some kills. You'll eventually get a call about locating Smith for dog tags. This is one of the side objectives for Operation Broken Eagle. Head north to find Smith's corpse. Stop when you get there and collect his dog tags after the conversation. This is required. Now equip your ZAR and move forward into the subway station now. There's some extra stuff to find here. Try and clear the subway platform of as many zombies as you can using the ZAR. This just makes things a little bit easier. There's a tragic ending just in front of the central pillar. Pick it up. 
This station is not the end of the line. Once you've collected it, turn around and head up the staircase on your right. At the top, you should turn to your right. This will take you to the locker rooms. You'll find Frank 28 of 70 on the bench by the lockers. Pick it up and then double back to the subway platform. Continue to clear zombies using the ZAR as you head left through the subway car. Then head up the stairs and then up the next set of stairs to get back up to ground level. There are several soldiers waiting for you here. Use the ZAR to take them out. The Zar should kill them in a few hits and it's one of the reasons we went out of our way to make so many of them. Once this area is cleared from threats, you'll want to head to the left of the entrance. There is a ZDC camera here for you to hack. One of Commander Kane's side quests. Hack the camera. 28 more to go. Refill your inventory with rations around this side objective before moving on. You're going to want to head eastbound past the military vehicles and the small blockade, but turn to your left once you get to the junction. You'll want to take your first left into the Lost Perdidos Utilities Building. Start by going around the front desk to find a tragic ending next to the blue barrels. The consequences of a bad drinking problem. Now head back around the desk and head back down the staircase to the sewer area. This area is linear, so head to the center area. Clear the zombies using one of your ZARs. You can grab the collectibles now. The weapon cart blueprint is up first. Make one now using the nearby pitchfork and the shopping cart. Next, collect the Frank statue. This is 29 of 70. One more collectible down here, but we can't get it in Kane's DLC. You'll need to come back as another character, and it will be Angel. Spoiler alert. Double back topside to Los Perdidos Utility Company, and then exit outside to the street. You should work your way back to Slappy's Food Fun Shack. You can bust through a window here. Your goal is to make another Roaring Thunder using the Blanca Mask and Car Battery. You should use this to kill zombies with a strong attack as you work your way through Sunset Hills. Use the heavy attack on zombies until you're close to Severed Ties. Head north to get inside Severed Ties and then turn left to head up the staircase. At the top, smash the window on the right side and jump out onto the hidden balcony. Head to your right and find the Cuddly Bear Blueprint. This is made by combining a Robot Bear and an LMG to make Freedom Bear, and then combining Freedom Bear with a portable stereo. You should make one now. Once you're finished, you want to head back left and climb onto the upper level. Then turn right and jump onto the tiled roof above you. You'll want to jump across to the roof of Severed Ties to find a tragic ending near the edge by an assault rifle. Try not to lose your head in a crisis. Pick up the assault rifle. We're not done on these roofs quite yet. Head back to the tiled roof and this time head eastbound and work your way to the next roof. Continue forward and jump down to the roof below you. Then jump up the ledge and run to your left to find a Frank statue. Pick this up. This is number 30. There's another AR-15 you can pick up by the sign. You should combine this with the other roof AR-15 into a ZAR. Now you should jump back down to ground level, or a nearby bus in this case. Continue to use the Roaring Thunder in dense packs of zombies to accumulate some kills. Your target is to head to Speedy Espresso once again, so continue eastbound. Once your Roaring Thunder breaks, you can run to a clearing and put down Freedom Bear, in a better position than I did, to get a little bit of extra PP. Once that's down, you should run into Speedy Espresso to make an Electric Staff, then make an Electro Fire, and finally an Elemental Staff. When you're done, you should exit Speedy Espresso. Make sure you switch this to fire. We need a lot of fire kills still. To the right of Speedy Espresso is a ZDC camera. You should head to the corner and hack it now. That's 2 of 29. May as well continue hunting collectibles. Jump onto the nearby crashed SUV and use it to get onto the balcony. Then jump onto the next set of balconies. There's some items to grab here, notably is a hunk of meat. Make sure that you grab this for the locker. It will be important when we get into the main game. Of course, our boy Frank is here, so grab Frank 31 of 70 before jumping back down to ground level. Head back westbound to the alley between the gas station and the Rancherama. You're gonna hate this, but head to the back of the alley and combine the party van and street sweeper into a party slapper. Get inside and drive the party slapper westbound to get out of Sunset Hills. Take a left at the first junction. You should make a serious attempt at getting kills while you do this. Use the vacuum attack. Stop at the yoga studio. This is just before the intersection. You're going to want to get out and then climb the stairs on your left. Run down the right strip and you'll find a Frank statue at the very end. This is Frank 32 of 70. Now double back to the staircase and then blast the zombified soldier in front of you near the flare. Pick up the dog tags once you're done. Rest in peace, Collins. We hardly knew you. Once you're done, head back downstairs to get into your party slapper again. You should set a marker and head for Ingleton. Use the party slapper and drive south out of Sunset Hills and turn right to get onto the highway. 
Try and pick up as many kills as possible here using the vacuum and bomb on the party slapper. The faster you get those 1000 kills done, the faster we can stop using the party slapper. Once you hit the top of the on-ramp, you should cross the highway to the left side. You'll find a ZDC speaker on the left side on some arches. You should get out of the party slapper and blast it. That's 26 of 30, only 4 more to go. Get back in the party slapper and snake your way around the crashes on the highway. Make your way to the right side this time and you'll find another ZDC speaker just after the ramp on another archway. Same as last time, exit the party slapper and shoot it. 27 of 30 speakers. Get back in the party slapper and head forward. You'll want to take the right exit and get back down to Ingleton. Run over as many zombies as you can at this point. At the bottom, turn right to get to the Chinese Opera House. You'll want to exit the party slapper and head inside the Chinese Opera House. Tucson is in here. Blast him with the ZAR and collect his dog tags. Rest in peace to all those Arizona lads. Continue forward past Tucson's corpse and you'll be able to get the materials for an ultimate reaper by the table. Make a grim reaper using the sickle and katana. Then combine it with the gasoline can for a fire reaper and then with a death mask for the ultimate reaper. While you're here, you should also make a flaming helmet using the dragon mask and motor oil. Just dump this, but it is for achievement progress. We're done in the Chinese Opera House. Head back to the streets and get back in the party slapper. Kill as many zombies as you can as you work your way left to the Rancherama. You'll have to bail out of the party slapper once you hit the barricade. You should start by using the strong attack with the ultimate reaper here to accumulate some kills and lots of PP. Then enter Sunny Luck Fortune. Once again, use the motorcycle engine and boxing gloves to make a dragon punch. Now you should just drop this and exit Sunny Luck Fortune back where you came in. Finally, you can head north and jump the blockade. On your left, you should hack the third ZDC camera before proceeding through the alleyway. Work your way all the way through the alley to the garage. You should make a Hail Mary here using the grenade and the football. Run out to the main strip of Ingleton and try and collect as many kills as possible with your set of Hail Marys. Once you've dumped them all, double back to the alleyway. I managed to finish escaping 50 zombie grabs here. This is one of the inevitable PP trials. You'll get it when you get it. You may have gotten it earlier, but you will definitely get it. Back in the alley, climb the car again and get back onto the shanty. You should build another ultimate reaper here using the sickle, katana, death mask, and gasoline canister. Once you have this, head back out to the main strip of Ingleton. You should use the strong attack as you head eastbound towards Sunshine. Sunshine's parked on top of the prison bus near Hamburger Fiefdom. Just a friendly reminder, but while power grinding, make sure Thrifty Trader is active. It does get turned off whenever you change DLCs, so make sure you have it active now. Pass through Hamburger Fiefdom for credit if you missed it earlier. There's also a ZDC camera to hack between the bus and the restaurant, so make sure that you hack it. Now climb up the prison bus and you should be able to make another heavy metal here. Then talk to Sunshine who's actually alive and he'll join up with you. Your main goal is to keep Sunshine alive, but if he dies, it's actually not that much of a problem. You just need to make sure to collect his dog tags if he does. With Sunshine with you, jump down and start unloading on zombies with the heavy metal spinning attack, working those 200 required kills down. Switch to the more serious firepower of the Ultimate Reaper once it breaks. Using the strong attack, spin walk your way northbound until you clear the area and you get to Shanks. Shanks, to no one's surprise, has another Ultimate Reaper available. Use the sickle to get the katana, then combine it with the death mask and gasoline canister for another ultimate reaper. Once you've restocked, exit shanks the way you came in, and continue northbound towards the helicopter. Continue spin walking your way there clearing out zombies. You may wish to take a detour to one of the alleys on the right side for a little extra zombie density. Once your bloodlust has been sated, get to the helicopter. You should pick up the flight recorder and then head outside to the west. You'll want to hunt down the bioweapons canister, this is just on the ground. This is required and important for another side objective for Commander Kane. You should get an achievement here, covering the traces, this is story related and unmissable. Once you have the canister, you should grab the shiver or other guns if you need some weapons. You should make for the hotel now. You need to head to the illegal safe house and initiate the bio cleanse. That's one down. There's two safe houses per area, so that's one of eight. You'll be told to head to the Ingleton Cab Company to set up your base, but that can wait. Instead, head up towards the highway towards Sunset Hills. Clear out the zombies with whatever combo weapons you have available, and then make sure to hack the ZDC camera here. That should be five of 29. Double back to the helicopter now. You should have a marker for the pilot. Grab Chang's dog tags for achievement progress. May as well do a lap around Ingleton before hitting up the cab company. 
Head to your left and work your way towards the cemetery. There are several ZDC cameras to hack as well as soldiers to find. Work through the streets using your Electrofire staff. Hack the 6th camera and then continue eastbound until you hit the blockade. Make sure to hack the 7th camera here. Now it's going to be time to pick up some soldiers. Double back westbound clearing out the zombies using the elemental staff on fire mode. Try and maintain a heavy kill streak. You can switch to a ZAR to maintain your streak if too many zombies are far away. That's just good thinking. When you find the alleyway near the sewers, head down. Head to the shanty and pick up the materials to make an ultimate mecha dragon now. That's a dragon mask plus parasol into katana and firecrackers. Now you should exit back to the main alleyway. Han will be directly south of you in the flares, and he will probably freeze himself. Smash Han and pick up the dog tags. Easy peasy and one more down. Head back northeast. You'll want to enter the secret courtyard now and grab the materials for another ultimate reaper. See how easy Dead Rising 3 is when you know where all the good stuff is? Compare that to a casual playthrough. It's like night and day. Make your ultimate reaper and then get out of here. You should take a save if you can, it's been a minute. It's time to hit up the cab company, but we'll go the long way around. Head through the alley, and then head north back to the helicopter. Start using your heavy hitting combo weapons like the Ultimate Reaper and clear out as many zombies as you can as you work your way to the end of the street. You should be able to rack up a huge kill count in the hundreds and gain an absurd amount of PP. There is a trick you can do with the Ultimate Reaper that you can replenish the ammo used by the strong attack by killing zombies with the normal attack. You can use this to restock your ammo, but spin to win baby. Once you reach the end of the street, you should have broken the Ultimate Reaper so you can swap to something else. At the military checkpoint, you should hack the 8th ZDC camera. Oh hey, and this is the house with the materials for another Ultimate Mecha Dragon, and we just used up our Ultimate Reaper. Head north into the house and make another Ultimate Mecha Dragon here. You should also head to the kitchen now. This is a good place to get started on the Making Combo Food PP trial. Grab a beer and combine it with a stocked healing item. This should make a combo food. Now grab a new beer and combine it with whatever you just made. You need to do this several times, so just keep grabbing beer and keep combining it with whatever you made last. This trial can be buggy if you get both upgrades for your combo crafting speed, so getting it done now is nice. Just repeat grabbing a beer and combining it with the last drink you made. Repeat until all of the food in the kitchen is exhausted, and I mean all the food. Doesn't matter what you make, as long as you do a combine you'll get the credit. If you end up with multiple mixed juices, you can just combine them together as well. This will take a bit of time to fully exhaust the stash, but this place should be basically zombie free. You should be able to get to about 25 of 50 combo foods made here. When you're done, you can head back outside to the streets. You'll want to head south down the street now, but head to your left towards Big Bull's Quality Meats. This is another zombie free area to do your combines. Start by heading to the back rooms and getting the spiked bucket blueprint. This requires a meat cleaver and a bucket. Make this once and get rid of it. The main goal now is to continue your combines. There's a bin full of hams here, so grab them and combine them together until the bin is empty. Once the first ham bin is empty, you can head to the storefront and use the wine bin, and then the other ham bins in the coolers behind the front desk. There is a huge amount of food here, and you should use all of it. You should have more than enough food combines to make it to the 50 combo food created for the PP trial. Once again, this will take a very long time, but keep grabbing healing items and combining them until you hit the 50 combo foods created. If you want, you could consume all the randomizers you'll make and make progress on the puking PP trial, but we will finish that at a later date. Once you've done the 50 combines, try and pick up some hams and keep them in your inventory as standard healing items. You really don't want to be healing using randomizers. After completing the PP trial, you should absolutely save your game. Afterwards, exit out the way you came in and head south down the street. You'll want to pass the cab company first and continue southbound. Clear the zombies here using your stockpiled combo weapons and work your way to the corner on the left. Hack the ZDC camera now, this is 9 of 29. Now you can head back north and enter the cab company. You won't be able to save until you clear the cab company, so save first. You'll immediately need to close the gate on the right, so do so using the console. You should also grab the minigun right away in front of you as well. Blast a good number of zombies, but your priority is to get into the military truck on the right side. This has the incredibly valuable split shot blueprint. Standard split shots require a lead pipe and an assault rifle. With the generic gun and generic blunt combined, you can take any gun and any blunt weapon and shove them together into a split shot. This will easily be one of the most used combo weapons, so get used to it. Make one now and continue to use the split shot to clear the cab company. Start with the southwest side by the parking garage. 
blast zombies with a split shot or the minigun to clear them out. This is a great opportunity to get lots of PP if you can maintain your kill streak. Clear the garage and then work your way up to the staircase, wrap around, clear the zombies and climb the next set of stairs. At the top, you will always be grabbed. Clear that really annoying zombie and then head for the door. Outside, you should grab the 33rd Frank from the AC unit on the roof. Then use your guns to blast the zombies below you. When you've cleared a good number of them, you should jump back down to make sure that you've cleared the area fully. Then you should double back up to the second level. Head to the roof again and head to the end and jump to the next roof. You'll want to head inside this area and pick up the Boomer Axe Blueprint. This requires a fire axe and a hubcap. Fun fact, but the PP Trial Progress will call this the Comeback Axe. You need to collect kills with the Boomer Axe, so keep it in your inventory and jump down to ground level. This area should now have opened up, so start laying the beat down on the zombies with the Boomer Axe. Also make sure to heal up Sunshine if he's damaged. Head outside after clearing the office and head to the northwest side. Start smashing everything around here. If you want to get more value out of your Boomer Axe, Smash zombies until it's red, and then throw it. This should give you a refresh. After clearing out the area, head east to the military truck. Climb the truck to find a tragic ending that's one more down. Not the best place to catch a cab. Ironic. In the cab company, isn't it? Haha. <laughs> more areas to clear, so keep blasting at the northeast side now. Blast everything until the area is cleared out. Northeast corner cleared? Head to the blueprint just south of the area. Grab the Rocket Punch Blueprint here. This one requires boxing gloves and an acetylene tank. These are pretty terrible, so build them once and then ditch them. You should have cleared all of the areas now. If not, just do some laps around looking for stray zombies. This part of the DLC is actually pretty rough to get through sometimes. Once you're finished, head to the roof on the south side above the garage. When you're ready, grab a flare from the box and shoot it into the sky. You'll get a cutscene and the achievement, Cleaning House. You can now also save your game, and you should make sure to do so. There are a bunch of weapons for you to collect here, by the gate. Most of the military stuff is worth grabbing for adding to the locker. I gained a lot of levels and acquired a lot of attribute points at this point. 17 attribute points to be exact. With split shots available, they are our most useful and plentiful tool, so it just makes sense to max out the ranged weapons category. This gives them greatly increased ammo, firepower, and now they pierce zombies. They're absolutely disgusting to use. With the remaining 5 points, I grabbed another 2 health cubes. Then of course, make sure to save your game. There's another illegal safe house to hit up in Ingleton before we move on. This is back near the alleyway. Head south and down the street to head back there now. You can use the boomer axe if you have some left, or just resort to unloading with split shots. Once you get to the alleyway, head past it and enter the parking lot. Climb up the dumpster on the left to boost yourself onto the roof. Now head to the door and initiate the bio cleanse. That's two of eight down. The chopper blueprint is directly north of your location. This requires a fire axe and a hatchet. Make one now. You should also get the engineer achievement here for 50 combo weapon blueprints. Doesn't feel like we're halfway there yet, but maybe we are. Who knows? Xbox achievements. The Chopper does have a kill requirement PP trial, so keep it on you. There's a few last tasks in Ingleton before we consider it finished. Drop back down to ground level onto the south side of Ingleton. Your goal is the southeastern side to get a ZDC camera hacked. Use the Chopper here to clear zombies for kill progress as you work your way eastbound. Once your Chopper breaks, you can resort to one of your more potent combo weapons, like the Electrofire Staff on Fire Mode or Mecha Dragon Blade. Once you finally reach the end of the street, you should have the ZDC cameras hacked. I got another level here and three attribute points, so I grabbed one more health cube. Now you should work your way north up the street. Clear zombies with combo weapons until you can find a car. This is most likely going to be a hearse. Ideally, Sunshine will not get in your hearse and he'll be transported back to the safe zone when you tear out of there. That's a good thing. It means we won't ever have to deal with Sunshine again. At the end of the street, you should bail out and save at the nearby porta potty. The main objectives might seem pretty important, and they kind of are, but we are going to go ahead and finish out Sunset Hill's side objectives first. From the porta potty, go ahead and run back towards the motel, clearing as many zombies as possible with your stocked combo weapons to power level. As you pass by the motel and helicopter, turn right and make for the highway. Once you turn at the intersection, you can likely find materials for a split shot. 
grab an AR-15 off the ground and a caution sign to combine them into a split shot. From now on, stockpiling guns and blunt objects that you see is a very good idea. You'll want to head north shooting whatever you can until you can find a vehicle. You can use the nearby taxi, but I opted to hoof it until I found a motorcycle. There's also two blunt weapons beside it if you want to stockpile them for split shots or heavy metals in a pinch. On the motorcycle, your goal is to find another squad member. Drive forward on the highway and snake around the fire truck. Turn right immediately after and head for the flare to find Brady. Blast him and grab his dog tags. He will also drop an AR-15 so you can combine that with a blunt weapon for a brand new split shot. Afterwards, get back on the motorcycle and head towards Sunset Hills via the bridge. This is an opportunity to shoot the ZDC speaker if you missed it on the first pass with Brad. Get off the motorcycle and shoot ZDC speaker 28, only two left. Get back on the motorcycle and make for Sunset Hills. You can swap to a car if you shot through the motorcycle like I did. What a goofball. Snake your way around the busted down vehicles and get into Sunset Hills. We're starting by heading south down the strip. Jump over the barricade and enter the store on your left, L mode design. You should head to the back room to find our old friend Frank. Grab Frank 34 of 70. Head back out to the highway now and get into the party van. You'll want to drive this westbound and park it next to L mode design. This is a bit annoying and a little finicky, but you should be able to climb the van and then boost yourself onto the roof here. There are many guns, so feel free to restock as you make your way to the second roof. The lawn chairs do count as blunt weapons, so you can quite easily make like four split shots here. Anyways, drop down the roof southbound to land on a small landing, then sprint and jump to the next roof. Underneath the giant slappy, you will find another tragic ending. Make sure to pick this up. They got pretty slapped around. You're going to sprint and jump to a balcony on the right side of the next building. Make a break for it now and try not to miss. Now work your way all along this balcony to find another Frank statue. This is 35 of 70. Exactly halfway there. Materials for a split shot are just past Frank if you need one. Otherwise, double back on the balcony and jump back down to ground level. Turn to the first store on your right now, Slappy's Ultimate Playhouse. There will be a blueprint right at the door for the fighting gloves. This is a game console followed oddly by a toy gun. Build one now. These are not required for anything, so go ahead and ditch them for real combo weapons. Clear zombies and then make your way northbound again. Head back into L mode design on your right. This time grab the Pushy Bear blueprint. Pushy Bear is annoying to make and there will be easier locations to make one so you can skip it this time. Exit L mode design and jump over the barricade. Now turn to your right and head up the street towards the fire trucks. There are many collectibles to get, to no one's surprise. At the top of the hill, hack the ZDC speaker on your left. This is 11 of 29. We're getting there. Now enter the construction site on your left. Inside here is an illegal safe house for you to infect, as well as a blueprint. You should collect the blueprint and build the defiler now using the fire axe and sledgehammer. This one's an old fan favorite. And yes, we do need to get some kills with it, so hang on to it. After you've made the defiler, infect safe house 3 of 8. There's also some healing items nearby if you need them. You're done in the construction yard now, so exit back out to the street. Turn left and make your way up to the mansion. Head inside by busting open the doors, then turn right to get to the bathroom. Jump in the tub and pick up another tragic ending here. Sometimes it's better not to ask. That's it for in here. Double back and leave the mansion. We'll be back here in the main story for a real knee slapper of a side quest. Outside, immediately hop on the fence to drop down to a tennis court. Pick up the blueprint here for the Boom Bear. Combine the Robot Bear and the LMG together to make a Freedom Bear. Next, combine it with the Dynamite to make Boom Bear. Someone at Capcom Vancouver really liked these Freedom Bear variants. Listen, it's, it's just not that funny, okay? One was enough. Good old Xbox here. I unlocked Duct Tape Master for making every single combo weapon. We definitely have not done that yet. We don't even have all the blueprints. I will count my blessings, I suppose. But this is just not even close. Head south and jump up to get back down to street level. You should see a flare at the driveway and make your way there, clearing zombies with your elemental staff. Hancock should be at the front door of the house. Give him the old roasty toasty and collect your dog tags. That's one more down. There's a tragic ending behind the house. 
Climb onto the side planters and head to the backyard. What is this, Guilty Gear? <laughs> Drop down onto the patio and pick up the tragic ending. It just wasn't the season for patio time yet anyways. Head back to the front of the house and then onto the main street. There's another ZDC camera here to hack as you work your way eastbound towards the landslide. Use split shots to clear the zombies along the way and then hack the 12th camera. Keep blasting to clear the area but turn to your right to head southbound. You can take the hole in the fence to get through with less zombies if you prefer. I know I did. Head out to the street again via the hole and blast your way to the white box truck. Capcom Vancouver's one single level design idea yet again. Climb the hood, jump onto the roof, and then boost up to the roof of the building. Fabulous! There's another blueprint here. The decoy bear. There's no wheelchair, so once again, this one's hard to build right now. Not that it matters, since we've got the achievement anyways. At least I do. <laughs> Suckers. We'll make the wheelchair variants later, but you can make another freedom bear if you want. Maybe a cuddly bear with the stereo. When you're done, head to the right side of the building and drop to the balcony below you. We need to rescue Frank from the dance studio. Bust in and start blasting. You can ask questions later. Frank's in the far corner on the left side. Sweep the room and then grab Franklin. That's 36. Operation successful. Now head to the south side of the dance studio and exit via the window on your left. There will be scaffolding that you can jump onto. Then you should jump onto the steel beam and carefully walk across it to find a tragic ending. There's another handgun here and some healing items you can grab if you want. Don't fall. If you do, you're gonna have to go all the way back around. Grab the tragic ending now. Safety last. Ha. Hilarious. Sounds like someone needs to make a call to work safe BC. Drop down to ground level and oh man, I guess safety really was last. Head northbound now and jump the barricade. Head up the street and to the left side. There is another ZDC camera here to hack. That's 13 of 29. Time to head back southbound, all the way to the bottom this time. There's an illegal safe house in the school. First things first, head to your right to the bike shop. You should pick up the mini bike blueprint here. Go ahead and combine the two bikes together into a mini bike. Turn right and absolutely rock it down to the southernmost street. Then head straight across the street to the school. Loads of football zombies here who are hard to kill, so try and avoid combat. Football zombies basically become invincible while they're charging, so don't even try and stop them. All you have to do is mash circle as soon as you get grabbed and you'll immediately push them off. I guess it's B on Xbox, I don't remember. Burninate your way past the tennis courts and eventually hop the fence. This is where we started Angel's DLC. Run to the door at the end to infect it. One more safe house down and we're halfway there. I took this as an opportunity to level up once again. I opted for the next three tiers of the mechanic category. This gives us maximum posse size so we can get an achievement later. Most upgrades in the other trees are pretty underwhelming until 50, so these are all just kind of whatever from now on. When you're done, it's time to double back to street level, but you're free to grab the multitude of guns and blunt objects on the staircase to make split shots. Handgun and dictionary? Sounds like a split shot to me. Desk and shotgun? Yep, that's a split shot. This is a great place to restock your split shot inventory if it wasn't obvious. Build as many as are available, or you have inventory space for. Once you're re-equipped, you can get in the nearby sedan and drive out onto the streets. This will save a little bit of time and headache. Drive to Slappy's Fun Food Shack once again, and make another Roaring Thunder using the Blanca Mask and Car Battery. We need 200 kills with this, may as well keep working it down since we're here. Use the strong attack on your way northbound up the street again. As soon as you see that porta potty on the corner, turn to your right. Of course, if you want to save, have at her. Keep clearing zombies with the roaring thunder as you work your way to the trucks. Jump over them and you'll be right beside another ZDC camera. Hack it for 14 of 29. There is one more ZDC camera on the end of the street. Just hoof it straight there while blasting zombies with the roaring thunder. At the corner, hack the next camera. That's 15 of 29, just over halfway there. I also managed to finish my 200 kills with the Roaring Thunder just before it broke. If you didn't, just make a mental note of it, and every time you're passing Slappy's Happy Fun Food Shack, whatever it's called, make a Roaring Thunder. That's Sunset Hills cleared of this DLC's specific collectibles. Head southbound to the next street. You should clear the zombies to your left and head to Speedy Espresso. Unsurprisingly, you're going to restock on an elemental staff here. Split shots are still great, but fire kills are still required, so grabbing an elemental staff whenever you can is a good idea. Head back out of Speedy Espresso once you're done. Now cross the street, and unfortunately, you're going to make a party slapper. 
Fortunately, you'll likely get the mechanic achievement for making five combo vehicles. So that, uh, that helps a little bit. Drive the party slapper out of Sunset Hills through towards the south exit. Slurp up as many zombies as you can using the vacuum attack as you work your way through to the highway. We're going left this time at the busted bridge. Just kidding, that was just to kill some extra zombies. Head right, we're going to Central City. Wrap around the highway and when you see the green sports car, get out of the party slapper. Now run and hack the ZDC camera nearby. This is 16 of 29. Time to hit up the collectibles in Central City. Woohoo! Head southbound and this time since there's no blockade or soldiers, jump into the back of the white box truck on the right side. There's a blueprint in here. The Tactical RC Gunner. Make a Tactical RC using the Machete and RC Helicopter. Now combine it with the Assault Rifle from the back of the truck to make the Tactical RC Gunner. This is useless. Make it and dump it. Leave the truck and go southbound and take a left at the turn. Blast your way throughout the streets with a split shot. Once you get to the pavilion, climb up to the top. The illegal safe house is boarded up in Operation Broken Eagle, but you can infect it using the vent by the blue chairs. Seriously, why are there chairs here? My immersion is ruined! Infected safe house. Five of eight. There's another ZDC camera to hack a short ways away. Just head slightly eastbound and hack the 17th camera. We got a lot of the generic collectibles in Central City as Angel already. Just keep blasting as you work your way southbound now. The military checkpoint has a slew of firearms if you need to restock. Otherwise, you should go ahead and make a shock dozer since, well, you're here. You need kills with all of these combo vehicles. Drive the shock dozer to the hospital now, blowing through as many zombies as humanly possible. In the exact same location as the ZDC speaker by the barricade, jump out of the shock dozer and hack the 18th ZDC camera. There's also another soldier with dog tags just in front of the hospital. Run north and pretend it's a self-defense situation and fire into the crowd of zombies. Haverman may be laying on the ground after you ran him over with the shock dozer. Make sure to shoot him a dozen times to get his dog tags, then collect them. Make your way back to the shock dozer and jump inside. Continue westbound along the southern street. You can head to the tennis court to rack up some kills in the shock dozer. Los Perdidos has an insane ratio of tennis courts to capita. I don't even think tennis clubs have this many tennis courts. Keep driving until you see the bikini babe on your right. She's always guiding us. Get out of your shock dozer after crashing it into the 19th ZDC camera. Hack the signal once you're here. Now head into Big Bowl Quality Meats. You will find the Dutch in here. The Dutch will join up after you clear out the zombies. Rescuing the only two alive squad members will get you the achievement Live to Fight Again. Exit Big Bowl Quality Meats and head up the stairs on the right to get to the illegal safe house. Infect this one too. All that's left is South Almuda. Six of eight. Jump off the roof and get back in the shock dozer. You should do your best to abandon the Dutch here. So he goes back to the safe zone. It's for the best, trust me. If he dies, you need to collect his dog tags. It's a whole thing. Just try to ditch him. Turn the shock dozer north and then crash it into a bunch of cars and get out. Collectibles call to us. Get past the semi-trailer blocking the street and head to the front of the police station. If you need a blunt weapon, there's a car exhaust on the right side of the ramp and there's a handgun which you can combine with it to make a split shot nearby. There's another ZDC camera to hack in front of the police station. Hack it for 20 of 29. Work your way back eastbound to get to the streets again. The next collectibles are all northbound. Turn left at the street. You can use the porta potty here if you want to save or quick save. Continue north up the street, but enter the store on the left side. Grab the blueprint for the shocking touch here. This is made using a pair of MMA gloves and a car battery. This is cool if you want to do the Emperor Palpatine cosplay, but they're basically a less good electric staff. Make it for progress and use it if you want to. Continue northbound, but skip the first alley. Clear out the zombies and then head left into the second alley. At the end, you'll want to grab the bigger bomb combo blueprint. This is made using an RPG and propane tank to make a big bomb, followed by combining it with a grenade to make the bigger bomb. You should throw this or set it down near some zombies and then turn left to get into Albert's Apparel. Head through Albert's Apparel to get to the loading bay. There's a Frank statue here on some boxes. Climb up and snatch him up. 37 of 70. In the parking lot of this area is another ZDC camera. Hack it for 21 of 29. Head southbound now and head up the stairs on the right side to enter the office. Inside, enter the first door on your right. Inside, grab the Frank statue on the right. This is 38 of 70. 
exit out of the office, and then exit the loading bay to get into the alley. Use the porta potty across the alley to save if you wish. Now head into the back storage area of Z and E and grab the 39th Frank statue. Just sitting there. What are these people doing? These are collectibles. What, why are they leaving them out in the open? Get back out of the alley and continue westbound. Unsurprisingly, there's another ZDC camera to hack at the checkpoint. I opted to try and farm some defiler kills here, so feel free if you still have it. Hack the 20 second speaker once you've cleared some zombies. There are also a slew of guns here, so feel free to restock if you need some. One broken defiler later and it's time to move on. We're basically done Central City now. Work your way to the highway axis on your right. No time like the present to blow the windows out of the courthouse and pick up another Frank statue. This one's between a couple of comfy couches. 40 of 70. Exit back to the street and get in the nearby taxi. Tear out of here and serpentine your way into the south bridge. About halfway up the bridge is another ZDC speaker on the left side. You'll want to stop, get out, and blast it. That's 29 of 30. Only one more. I wonder where it could be. Get back in the taxi and drive about halfway across the bridge. There's another soldier's dog tag to collect here, but no flare marking it this time. This one's actually very difficult to spot. He's just dead on the sidewalk on the right side. You may have to do a couple of passes to see him. When you find him, grab the dog tags. Now drive all the way across the bridge to South Almuda. This is the location of our main story objective, but the collectibles call first. Head right to head through the South Almuda power plant. After leaving, ditch the taxi and hack the next ZDC camera. Only six more to go. Continue eastbound towards the illegal safe house where you started in Brad's DLC. Blast your way into the fire station. You can climb the stairs and make a new elemental staff here. Genuinely a good plan most of the time. Also, there's a few snacks around for healing if you care. You can also get to go down the fire pole. Whee! Exit the fire station now. Keep moving towards the safe house, but turn to your left and hack a ZDC camera. This is 24 of 29 on your left. Now double back to the illegal safe house. Climb onto the box and infect it. Only one more infection left to go. You should have gotten a call for Dixon's location. Mark it on your map and head there now. If you want, you can stop and climb the stairs on your left to make an ultimate shout. Usually a strong choice. Pick up anything you dropped afterwards and head back down to ground level. Continue westbound and run your way to the barricade. Jump over it once you're close. Your goal is the strip club, but you can stop and save at the porta potty first. Head through Speedy's G-Spot to the back parking lot. Dixon will be there and will likely try and attack you. Take him out and grab his dog tags. Now you may or may not have the firearms category maxed out. If you do, you can head upstairs and make a super massager. This can do some serious damage now. Just kidding, it's still middling at best. We need that level 50 upgrade. You can make one if you want, but then head back downstairs. Exit Speedy's G-Spot before heading northwest again. Blast zombies with the super massager as you head to Almuda Farms. Turn left and pass through Almuda Farms. This is strictly to get back to the roof again. Outside, turn to your right and get onto the hood of the box truck and use it to boost to the roof of Almuda Farms. Then head around to the right and get onto the roof properly. There's another elemental staff available here if you can carry it. You should follow the path around the roof to get to the illegal safe house. Follow the makeshift balcony all the way to the end. Once you're there, infect the last illegal safe house. You should get the counter-terrorist achievement now. Jump down the streets again, and right in front of you should be another ZDC camera. Hack it once again. There's only four left now. There will be a military blockade here on your right. This is for when you inevitably try and drive the armadillo back to Ingleton, which is a main story objective. We're not done it yet, but nothing is stopping you from dealing with these clowns now. Blast them with your weapon of choice. The electro fire staff or split shots will do adequately for taking them out. It is a good idea to clear some of them out now. Once you're done, more side objectives await. Continue southbound down the street. You should prioritize using the ultimate shout here to clear huge groups of zombies as you cozily mosey down the streets to Rocket's Red Glare. Before you enter, take a quick detour right and hack the 26th ZDC camera. Three left. Now it's time to head through Rocket's Red Glare and continue southbound. Make your way to the southern blockade, clearing out any zombies you have in your way. At the end of the street, hack ZDC camera 27. Two more to go. Turn left down the street and keep blasting zombies as you move forward. You're going to want to follow this street most of the way. Of course, you can detour to the southern side if you want to save at the porta potty and maybe have more zombie density. Regardless, 
Make your way to Big Buck's construction site. About halfway up the south street, you should find a ZDC camera. This is 28 of 29, the second to last. I bet you thought we were done with the gas stations. Well, not quite, Chief. Head to the gas station on your right now. Jefferson is in there. Blast all of the zombies inside until one of them drops a set of dog tags. Make sure to pick these up. We're done in there for now. It's time to hoof it north to the final ZDC camera to hack. Pass through the construction site trying to rack up a huge kill count with combo weapons. Then snake your way around the wrecked subway and hack the final ZDC camera. You'll get the achievement Eyes in the Sky for confirmation. Or you might not. You can blame Xbox and Microsoft for that one. Time to head back southbound. Cut back through the construction site clearing zombies to the flaming dumpster. Jump in and make an ultimate shout if you have the space. I skipped it. Your target is to get inside the warehouse now. Head inside Huge Industrial Co. Yes, this is the name. Make absolutely sure to save your game at the nearby porta potty here. Take this save, it's important in case you fail. Now you should head to your yellow objective marker. This will have several zombified soldiers. Just blast them all. Inside one of the military trucks is the combo blueprint for the beast. This is a chainsaw and auto shotgun. You can make one now. It's alright. Your main objective is to get in the armadillo though. Drive this a short distance and then get out since there's a tragic ending nearby. Head south and get in the mini forklift. Really hope your forklift's certified. Drive this forward directly into the metal containers. Now get out and climb onto the top and then boost onto the containers above you. Run around and get into the open container. Inside you can find a tragic ending. Pick it up. She always had a leg up on those zombies. Exit the area and get back into the armadillo. Your goal is to drive this back to Ingleton. Only it's a huge pain because you have to go the long way around. Swap your book from Thrifty Trader to Four Wheeled Fun for more vehicle durability. Drive the armadillo along the south street until you hit the end of the street and then turn right. You'll need to turn right and then drive through Rocket's Red Glare. This is fun exactly one time and you'll never guess how many times you'll be driving through this. I'm laughing. I'm just laughing thinking about it. Continue northbound and eventually you should bust through the blockade. Just keep driving forward trying not to damage the armadillo through the industry tunnel. Once you pass through the tunnel into Ingleton, you have to turn right here and then take the immediate left. Drive northbound now and then turn left past the gas station. There are a ton of explosive barrels here getting in the way, so you can get out and shoot them or avoid them in the armadillo, this is your choice. Continue driving past Hamburger Fiefdom and then turn right at the end of the road. Stop in front of the cab company and the gates will open. Then drive the armadillo into the garage. Make absolutely sure to save your game now. You'll get the delivery man achievement here for dropping off the armadillo in one piece. If you didn't get the armadillo here in one piece, you'll have to restart and try again. Unfortunate realities. With that driving segment done, swap your book back to Thrifty Trader for PP gains. You'll also want to refill your inventory with split shots and maybe some czars while you're here. Most of the side objectives are finished now. All that's really left is the main story. Exit the cab company and head to your right. You'll need to catch a cab to Central City for the president's location. Get in the cab and drive it on the highway all the way to Central City. This is an opportunity to collect some zombie kills. It all adds up and we need a lot. That being said, actually getting there is more important. As you drive to Central, you should get a call about Wachowski. I knew we missed somebody. Crash your taxi into the barricade and then blast your way out of there. Jump onto the concrete barricade now and use it to boost yourself onto the newsstand yesterday, today, and tomorrow. At the top, climb onto the Central sign for a tragic ending. Collect it. No news is good news. Hilarious. Drop down to ground level now. Set your marker for Wachowski. Can't believe we missed this guy. Head through the alley where we found a rare and valuable Frank and enter the store. Head outside to the shopping street and grab the dog tags off his corpse. That's the rest in peace achievement finished. Now it's time to head to the museum. Head eastbound through the strip until you cross the street to the stage. There's a lot of soldiers here so use ranged weapons. The split shot, Zar, or the electro fire staff is good in a pinch. Zar is actually your best bet for single target damage. Run a loop, clearing out all the soldiers in the immediate area. You need to eliminate all of the forces before you can grab your next direction. Hunt them all down and once they're cleared out, you should be near the giant T-Rex statue. At the base of this colossal beast is another limited edition Frank. I think he wants you to have it. Thank you, Tyrant King. I will not forget your kindness. That's Frank, 41 of 70. Plenty of stuff around here to get, but head north into the museum now. 
You can pick up the Mauler blueprint a little early. Combine the machete and katana into the Mauler. It's fine, I guess. A little long for my tastes. Once that's accomplished, grab the GPS tracker off the stage. You can combine some nearby AR-15s and chairs to make split shots. Good old AR-15 and chair. Perfect. I don't make the rules, man. I just play by them. After grabbing the GPS from the stage, you'll get the Eagle Has Landed achievement. We're almost done Operation Broken Eagle. The president is in Sunset Hills, but it is a good idea to head south to the hospital once again. Make a shock dozer here for more kill progress. Drive this northbound and then all of the way out of Central City. Try and rack up as many kills as possible on your way to the highway, or just get stuck on the fire truck. Either way, try and collect kills here since you need 1,000 with most combo vehicles. Head down the left off ramp and then cross to your right to get to Sunset Hills. Keep driving and turn left into Sunset. Simple barricades won't stop the Shock Dozer. Turn to your right and keep up the kills. If you need a combo weapon, make an elemental staff at Speedy Espresso. Otherwise, continue northbound until you reach the mansion. You may want to save your game at the Porta Potty. This is the final stretch for Operation Broken Eagle. Double check to make sure you have 8 of the 9 achievements. You'll get the final achievement after completing the DLC. Once you've confirmed you have Counter Terrorist, Eyes in the Sky, Rest in Peace, and Live to Fight Again, you, you should be good. The 4 other achievements are just for main story progress. All that's left is to get the final achievement due to your death. Time to wreck up the place. Head to the mansion and blast your way to the top. You'll encounter various resistance, but it's no match for the ultimate shout. Sound blast any soldiers that get in your way as you ascend the winding staircases. Once you see the gazebo on your left, make sure to grab the Party Gloves blueprint. This is Boxing Gloves and Toy Robot, which translates to American Gloves with Ducks. Make a pair now. They're pretty patriotic, but dump these. They are absolutely terrible. Continue the ascent and slaughter. Blast through barricades with the ultimate shout to get all the way to the top. Another tennis court? Seriously? Anyways, keep heading upstairs and you'll find a drained pool. Turn right and cross the bridge. There's a Frank in the middle for you to pick up while dodging through the laser sensors. That's 42 of 70. A true collector collects even when in a firefight. Keep blasting, keep moving forward. Collect guns and combine them with chairs if you're low on split shots, or a gun and gun for ZAR, but you know, whatever should be fine. Tear around the back side of the mansion, which is apparently the front for some reason. You'll need to clear all of the special forces outside before you can get inside. Keep blasting them with Zars. These guys are surprisingly resilient, unfortunately. Once the door's open, it's just a matter of blasting everything inside the mansion. Clear the area and then climb the stairs on the right side. Work your way to the left side of the mansion, killing anything in your way. Eventually, a couple of security guys will come out and you can blast them, and one of them will drop a key, and then you're done. Open the door on the right and talk to the president, but a man has priorities. Grab the 43rd Frank statue from the dresser. Now you can listen to this giant president. Seriously, Kane is like 5'11 next to the 6 foot woman. After some time, the game will end and the cutscenes will play out. Remember when Commander Kane was just like a super generic boss that you killed in 2 seconds in the main game? Well, you will. That's Operation Broken Eagle completed. Watch the cutscenes if you want and collect your final achievement. Now it's time to move to the next DLC. We're going back to Angel. Fallen Angel has 9 unique achievements like all of the other DLC. Most of these are story related and unmissable, but Fallen Angel has its own slew of unique collectible based trophies. You should be able to get all of the achievements in around 3 hours while completing the DLC one single time. A few achievements are missable, so make sure that you use quick saves and reload these saves if you fail the segments. I'll let you know when they come up, it's mostly related to survivors. Fallen Angel has reasonable zombie density, and with our menagerie of strong combo weapons, reaching the level cap is very feasible during this DLC. Now it's time to fire up the second DLC, Fallen Angel. Start from a new save file this time by restarting the story. As usual, you can watch the cutscenes if you wish. Start by re-equipping the Thrifty Trader book for increased PP gains. This resets every time you swap DLCs. Now it's time to finish the Throwing Up PP Trial. Head forward to the crates of vodka and chug them in sets of three. Afterwards, wait a second and you'll puke. 
You did this already at the start of the guide, and this is just repeating those same steps with both crates of vodka. Drinking the vodka in sets of three and doing both crates should push you to the 21 vomits required for the PP trial. This is gross, and you can't blame me for this one. I didn't design the game, and if I did, this wouldn't be in there. Once you're finished, you should hop the fence. Time to build a large number of split shots. Grab some blunt objects, such as maces, as you head to the staircase on your right. At the top, you can combine the blunt weapons with guns to make split shots. You should be able to get 2-3 to three easily. Making a Zar is strong as well. Angel has specific collectibles to collect, so it's time to get some prep work for those before heading to the main story. Work your way around the school taking out any resistance. You should hop on the motorcycle in front of you and drive it to the street. Now hang a right, and you'll want to drive eastbound on this street until you hit Speedy Espresso. You definitely need to make an elemental staff in the back room. This is important because Angel needs to burn propaganda posters as a unique DLC collectible. Elemental staves should be switched to fire, and then used for burning the posters. You are free to use it as a weapon for killing zombies in a pinch, but always reserve ammo in at least one electro fire staff for posters. You definitely don't want to get to a poster and not have any way of burning it. That would be just tragic. There will be several more elemental staff restocks, so don't be too conservative with this first one. Now exit Speedy Espresso and head northbound between Zip Gas and the Wrenchorama. Make yourself a party slapper here once again. Drive this out to the street and then head to your right and make your way south out of Sunset Hills. You'll want to take the off-ramp down and then drive back up to get to Central City. There is a military blockade here. Try and get the party slapper through, otherwise you can hop out and run on foot. Your goal is the yacht in the south end of Central. Drive the party slapper around the east side of Central City and then head southbound past the hospital. Turn right and drive past the stage and then crash yourself on the ramp. You should be very close to the entrance to the yacht now, but instead you should make a quick detour northbound. This is for the final ZDC speaker. Head north and blast zombies and then hit the 30th ZDC speaker with your split shot. This speaker is beside the Sculpt Yourself sign. Once you're finished with that, you won't be bothered with the annoying sound bites. This also got me the prestigious achievement for completing 10 PP trials. This is a simple stepping stone achievement. Prestige Hound requires that you complete all the PP trials. It's pretty brutal. It's time to turn back around now, so you should head southbound back to the street. But instead, cut down the alleyway to pass through behind the police station. From here, you should ignore the illegal safe house on your left, and instead head to the right side and to the planters beside the stairs. This is a bit of an awkward jump, but you'll need to launch yourself up and climb onto the glass roof. On top, run across and jump to the next roof. This will lead you to a Frank statue. This is 44 of 70. From here, you should sprint and jump across to the next roof on your left. There's a super combo blueprint here for the Tactical RC Bomber. Create a Tactical RC using the toy helicopter and machete. Then add the nearby grenade for the Tactical RC Bomber. Ditch this, it's just awful. Now you can drop back down to the south street and blast your way to the yacht using your stockpiled split shots. You've been here before. Behind the police station are dozens of cop zombies with guns and lots of lead pipes and other blunt weapons around. This is a prime place to make lots of split shots. You should keep this in the back of your mind moving forward. Restock if you need to, but regardless, get up to the yellow objective marker and head up to the door. Lots of guns here as well to make split shots or czars if you need them. Bash the door open and take out the firefighter zombies using a ZAR. The czar's power should make short work of them. Now work your way around to the medical bag, your main objective. If you miss the tragic ending here the first time, make sure to grab it here as well. There shouldn't be that many cob zombies blocking your path now. With that main objective done, double back to the yacht entrance. Once again, you can restock on weapons if you need to on the way. Dougie left you a motorcycle. You can use it if you want. Hey, if he left this for us, why didn't he just get the supplies himself? Good old Capcom Vancouver plot holes. Never change. With that, we're done in Central City for now. We'll be back later for main story and secondary collectibles. For now, head to South Almuda via the South Bridge. Turn right at the end of the street, and then take your first left. Now head through to the highway, making sure to carefully snake past the buses. Now stop and get out to make a shock dozer. More kill farming, even if it is really slow. Use the shock dozer to cross the bridge to get to South Almuda. There shouldn't be much resistance here, mostly just some guys with rocket launchers. Nothing that your shock dozer can't handle. Just make sure to try to hit as many zombies as you can for kill progress. 
then snake around the bosses until you hit the barricade in South Elmuda. As you jump the barricade, you'll get a small cutscene of the security cameras you'll need to destroy as a side objective. That's easy enough. When you get control, just go ahead and blast it, or you can be cool like me and skip it and come back for it later. Right now, we're working on main story. Head up north through the power plant now. Pass through and then turn right and work your way to the illegal safe house. This is where Brad started. You should restock on the good combo weapons here. On the south side, you can head up the stairs past the bus and climb up to make an ultimate shout. Since you're here and it's on the way, you may as well go ahead and head north to the fire station. Climb the stairs and make yourself another elemental staff. Keep this in your inventory for burning propaganda posters. Make sure to grab some healing items here as well before dropping down to ground level and exiting to the street. Time to head to your current objective marker. This is at the western safe house above Almuda Farms. Head west down the street and hop over the barricade. Your target is Almuda Farms, but there is large zombie density outside of the strip club. You can use this as a place to burn some ultimate shout ammo for some serious PP gains. That's definitely worthwhile. When that's finished, head back up to the north side of the street. Continue clearing zombies with your split shots or ultimate shout as you work your way westbound to the Almuda Farms building. Once you get there, simply pass through the building to get to the alley on the south side. Jump onto the white box truck's hood and then boost yourself up to the roof and then to the roof of Almuda Farms. Now it's time to work your way around. One more chance for an elemental staff here. Make one if you want, I would recommend it. It's just a strong weapon as well as flames for future poster burning. Now work your way around the balcony to get into the safe house. You'll have to go all the way around, but you'll have done this in Operation Broken Eagle. This is a very short investigation segment. Examine the various corpses around the safe house. You'll have to examine all of the corpses in the area before you can finally leave. Even if you see Winnie screaming in terror before you've inspected all the corpses. Eventually, you'll be able to leave via the large double doors out to a new balcony. This balcony has a Frank on it, so you know you gotta collect it. That's Frank 45 of 70. Follow Winnie to the corpse and you'll have to jump back down to ground level after a cutscene. Now you'll need to follow Winnie northbound to the bus depot. This area has a lot of zombie density, so the ultimate shout is a strong choice. When you hit the blockade, turn right and jump over it. Then head north into the bus depot and pass through the tunnel. The door that was locked earlier is open now, so you can make sure to talk to Winnie. There's lots of stuff in here to grab. Feel free to restock on orange juice here if you need heals. You'll have to exhaust all of Winnie's dialogue. She'll tell you that they're going to the school. You'll get the Talk It Out achievement for talking to Winnie here. You'll need to get back to the school, but you'll have to use the Aqueduct. This is your starting location from Operation Broken Eagle. To get there, you'll need to head eastbound to head back towards the safe house, then north and east again to get to the train station. Starting to sound a little bit like a broken record, but clear zombies as you make your way here using strong combo weapons, and try to maintain a high kill streak to get lots of PP gains. When you cross the barricade at the north end, you'll get a cutscene from the posters. For right now, you can burn them or skip them. I'm going to double back for them later on. We need to do laps of all four of the districts, but first we need to spawn survivors and the only way to do that is by heading through the aqueduct. Torch the poster and destroy the camera right now if you want, but otherwise make your way eastbound on the street and enter the train station. Inside is another Frank statue hidden in the back area. Head right and past the pallet jacks to find a ZDC poster. Torch it with your electro fire staff, this is going to be one of 40. Next, collect the Frank statue that's hidden inside the boxes on the shelves. That's 46 of 70. Now exit the train station and head eastbound into the aqueduct. You should definitely save your game here. Coming up is a section you can potentially fail. As you work your way northbound up the aqueduct, you will see a flare and several survivors about to be executed by a lone soldier. Your job is to get there and kill this lone soldier before he executes the survivors. The Tsar is a great option for this, but realistically any weapon will work. Take out the soldier and then you need to untie the survivors. As long as at least one survivor survives, you'll get credit for the rescue. More is obviously better and safer. Make sure to save if you're successful, and reset if you weren't. Now there's a medical kit nearby. Head westbound from the execution grounds. Pass by the truck and then into the alcove to grab the first med pack of 25. Now you should head towards the subway station just like you did in Operation Broken Eagle. Clear zombies as you make your way inside. There will be a slew of guns available as you enter, so restock if you need to. As soon as you're about halfway through the tunnel, stop and blast the ZDC poster on the right side. This is 2 of 40. You may not even notice you burn this down if you're just blasting flames like I was. 
Now you can go inside the door if you want, wrap around and make your way up the stairs to the control center, then jump off the edge to be fancy. Otherwise, just head straight into the main area. Now pass through the train car and wrap your way around the staircase to get back up towards ground level. At the top of the stairs, you should turn around and burn the propaganda poster. That's 3 of 40. The main entrance to the subway is gated, so you should head westbound through to the utility company. This is a good thing, since we couldn't get through here as Commander Kane. There's a zombie on fire with a bucket on his head. This is a tragic ending. Been a minute since we've seen one of these. Keep your distance and avoid getting burned, and then collect it. Putting your head in a bucket won't solve all of your problems. That's... that's not even... whatever. Head through the door that was locked when you were playing as Commander Kane. Kill your way through the sewers now to work your way back up to the Lost Perdidos utility company on ground level. Then head up the next set of stairs at the end, and exit out to street level now. Since we're close by, it's a good idea to just do the main story now. We'll do a quick lap around Sunset Hills for collectibles afterwards. Dodge or kill the football zombies and head right quickly to find a ZDC poster. Torch it for propaganda poster 4 of 40. 10% on that one. Now you can make your way to the school, but you'll have to go in through the front this time since the back is now barricaded. Head south and then approach the staircase. Climb up and pick up the medical kit at the top, that's 2 of 25. Now jump onto the nearby buses and use them to get inside the broken window. Pass through the classroom to get to the hallway. Take out the football zombie here by whatever means necessary. Now you'll want to collect the flaming sword blueprint from the nearby locker. Build one now using the motor oil and the broadsword nearby. We'll need to build a lot of these so get one done now. Unfortunately, this is not a great combo weapon so dump it. Now our friend Doogie is waiting so head downstairs. There are lots of vodka for healing items and machine pistols here for you to craft into Zars if you need weapons. Otherwise, just deal with the special forces here using whatever you have. You could stay behind the barricade or just go face first and start blasting. The spec ops will come in waves, so kill the first wave and then head outside to the south side. Snipe the spec ops on the balcony and then work your way through the tennis courts to the west side. Take out the remaining spec ops here and you'll complete the objective. Save your game. This will give you the hall monitor achievement. Now climb over the military truck and drop back down. Get on the motorcycle now and drive eastbound. There's another execution on the street here and it's a high priority over any other collectibles. Bail out from the bike and take out the spec ops soldier. Now free the survivors. Survivors can be killed by zombies while tied up, but as long as you rescue at least one, it should count for the achievement. Untie everyone and then when you get credit for the rescue, continue westbound to the comms tower. You should definitely save after the rescue. You should stop on your left and make a party slapper again. I know Doug is panicking, but it's fine to leave him for now. Drive past him in the monstrosity and continue northwest up Sunset Hills. You can stop at the nearby porta potty to save your game. I was neglecting my levels like crazy, so I had a lot of banked attribute points at this point. 27 to be precise. This was an easy max out whatever remaining stats there were. Starting out by maxing my health, melee, and then almost maxing out mechanic, and putting the rest of the points into agility. I am going to intentionally leave the last upgrade from mechanic unleveled. This is because some of the PP trials that require building combo weapons might fail if you build them too quickly. Just don't get that last upgrade for a little bit. It's not game breaking either way. Save again once you're finished. Time to get back in the party slapper. Launch yourself over the landslide ramp and continue heading northwest. Skid past all of the fire trucks and then pass by the barricade. Head to the north bridge from Sunset Hills to Ingleton. There are some flares here indicating another execution. Blast the soldier with your ZAR. Boom! Headshot! <laughs> Anyone remember pure ownage? No? Yes, I am that old. Anyways. Rescue the three tied up survivors and you'll get credit. Save your game again. <laughs> get back in the party slapper and make for Ingleton now. Trying to farm as many kills as possible and snake around the various blockades. Did I mention that I hate the party slapper? I managed to get to 750 kills on the trip to Ingleton, so we're getting close to never driving this thing ever again. Follow the highway and turn off into Ingleton. Now you can abandon the party slapper. The first execution site is in front of the motel. Head there and take out the soldier in the parking lot. Now untie all of the survivors. Noticing that a lot of the locations get used over and over again yet? Once you've rescued the survivors, save your game. Now it's time to head eastbound towards the cemetery. You can go ahead and save at the nearby porta potty if you wish. Your new goal is the Rancho Rama. Work your way to the central strip in Ingleton, clearing zombies with your combo weapons of choice. Turn southbound and rip down to the Rancho Rama quickly to find the execution site. Make sure that you first take out the spec ops and then free the survivors. 
Once they've all been successfully rescued and you've got credit, save your game. We're going to get all of the executions completed since you can fail. So our next target is to head to South Almuda. Start by heading south and then jumping over the ramp. Now you can head left into Sunny Luck Fortune. You should make a dragon punch here using the boxing gloves and motorcycle engine. This is for more PP trial progress. Then exit the way you came in. Head southbound towards the Chinese Opera House, clearing out zombies for PP along the way. You can use a taxi to make your way back to South Elmuda by heading through the industry tunnel. Of course, in typical Dead Rising 3 fashion, it's been barricaded. Thanks, Capcom Vancouver. Get as far as you can, and then bail out of your car and work your way south on foot. Try to avoid all of the football player zombies here and make your way through the tunnel into South Elmuda. You'll have a few opportunities to grab some more combo weapons at the various good locations in South Elmuda shortly if you need to restock. Rack up as big of a kill count as you can using banked electrofire staffs and split shots as you continue to work your way south to Rocket's Red Glare. Then you just need to cross through Rocket's Red Glare and head all the way south and finally turn left at the military checkpoint. The next execution site is outside the Rancho Rama. Start sprinting once you get close and take out the Spec Ops soldier, just the same as before. Rescue the three survivors and when you get confirmed rescue credit, save your game. That's all for South Elmuda, surprisingly, at least for now. You're close to the dumpster that contains an ultimate shout, so continue eastbound to get there, slaughtering everything in your wake. Once you reach the flaming dumpster, hop in and craft yourself an ultimate shout. Now you should jump out of the dumpster and head south to find the fireworks van. Get inside and drive it northbound to El Spaniel Liquor. Turn right towards the south bridge. Unfortunately, the bridge is barricaded completely now, so your only option is to head north through the power plant. Once you pass through, get in the nearby student driver car on your right and drive it to the illegal safe house on the east side. Another blockade, so ditch it and jump over. Work your way to the train station and you can steal a car along the way. Unfortunately, once again, you're going to have to hoof it through the aqueduct. Use this as an opportunity to rack up some more zombie kills as you work your way to Central City. Make liberal use of your ultimate shout here. Once you're through, enter the subway station again. Another opportunity for lots of firearms here once again, if you need them. Clear your way through the subway and pass through the destroyed train and then snake your way upstairs. This exit is still gated, so pass through the tunnel towards the Los Perdidos utility building. At the end, you can climb the stairs and then continue to wrap around so you can exit to the street. There's one less district to rescue survivors and that's in Central City. Clear zombies on the way towards the highway. You should make way for the comm tower and specifically Speedy Espresso to make a new elemental staff. On the way, you should make sure to pass through Rojo Diablo Mexican Restaurant. This is for credit for the restaurant's PP trial. Then you can simply continue eastbound and make a new elemental staff at Speedy Espresso. Now double back to the alley between the gas station and Rancherama and, you guessed it, make yourself another party slapper. Drive this monstrosity out and to your right. It's finally time to head to Central City. Unfortunately, there won't be much to kill after blasting everything with your ultimate shout. Exit out of Sunset Hills and take the right exit. Wrap around and head up the left side to get back into Central City. The military blockade is still here, so snake your way around it with your party slapper. Then take the first left to avoid the barricades. Drive this to the end of the street and head to your right. The execution ground in Central City is by the fountain just past the stage. Drive straight south and pass by the hospital. I completed the 1000 party slapper kills here. Oh, it felt good. And we'll never be using this thing again. Drive into the execution ground and take out the spec ops. You'll also want to try and clear out the zombies here, as they will be attracted to you and could potentially kill your survivors. Then untie the survivors to rescue them, and once you get your confirmed rescue, save your game. One execution site left. If you're unlucky, your split shot will blow up the nearby taxi by accident. Whoops! Hoof it westbound and then head north once you can to make your way to the bridge. Driving's a lot easier. Thankfully, just before the bridge is a taxi. Also, make sure to save your game if you skipped it. Take the taxi and get onto the bridge, snaking past the buses. You want to drive about halfway up the bridge and dump out of your car. Vicky died before I could rescue her. Damn. Is that a Dead Rising 2 off the record reference? Who knows? Rescue the rest of the survivors and you should get the Guardian Angel achievement for rescuing all the survivors from executions. Well, I mean most of them. If you did not get Guardian Angel, well, it could be because you actually failed it, or the Xbox is just acting up. If you do, you'll have to restart the DLC again from the beginning and try again. Hopefully you don't have to. Finally, it's time to get on with the rest of the DLC. Turn around and head back to Central City. This is important because South Almuda is blocked off. 
You can make a shock dozer or avoid it and try to get back in a freshly spawned taxi here. Zip back to the south street and drive all the way back to the north side of Central City. Your choice here. You can make another shock dozer at the hospital or keep driving northbound and then turn west to get onto the highway. The goal is back at Sunset Hills with good old Dougie. Go ahead and rip over to the comm tower for real now. Any kills you accumulate are good, but don't bust up your cab too badly. Jump out of your vehicle of choice once you get to the comm tower and talk to Doug. He'll break in. There's a combo blueprint inside for the zombie raker. This requires a leaf rake and a katana. You should craft one now. It's not the best combo weapon, but it works in a pinch and you do actually need some kills with it. No time like the present to start collecting. Kill zombies as you work your way to the top of the comm tower. Make sure to jump on the large cable spool at the top and grab the junk bike blueprint. We will need this eventually in no time like the present. Doug has the constitution of wet toilet paper, so make sure he's safe and then save at the porta potty if you wish. There are plenty of guns as well as blunt weapons around here, so jump onto the platform and make a split shot or two. Then make sure no zombies get anywhere close to Doug. Seriously, if he gets hit like once, he just he just keels over, so don't let any zombies get anywhere near him. This segment takes a very long time and zombies will continually spawn in. Just keep blasting them with your choice of combo weapons. Eventually, Doug will get that stupid door open, but it will feel like an absolute eternity. Once Doug is inside, go ahead and clear the area. You can't hurt Doug, so keep blasting with your split shots. The remote detonator blueprint is here. You should craft one now using a laptop and dynamite. Ditch this afterwards because quite frankly it's useless. Once that's done though, head into the nearby room. You can grab the fortune fighter book here. This increases your gun damage. You should definitely equip this once you're maxed out at level 50, it's insanely strong. But swap back to thrifty trader for now. We still need more PP. Continue to clear the zombies in the area and then head upstairs. A few more blasts should free the area and you can move on to the next objective. After of course, grabbing the boom cannon blueprint. This is made using a grenade and a shotgun. You have to make a lot of these for a PP trial so now is a good idea to make some progress. With the generic gun combined you can also use any available gun. There's a box full of machine pistols and a box full of grenades nearby. Grab one of each and make a boom cannon, and then dump it somewhere out of the way. You should repeat this until you've exhausted all of the machine pistols as well as grenades. If you're low on combo weapons, make sure to restock on split shots here using the machine pistols and maces. Otherwise, make all of the boom cannons you can for prestige hound progress. Then you can talk to Dougie and you're off to Hamburger Fiefdom in Ingleton. Well, after saving your game, of course. This is actually a good time to reset your game, save and exit, and then come back in. From the porta potty, head down and out of the communications tower. Clear zombies using split shots along the way. Once you get back to street level, it's time to tackle some angel specific collectibles. As soon as you get to the street, you can shoot the surveillance camera directly in front of you. That's one of seven for Sunset Hills. Next, head to your right northbound up the street. Keep on the right side and head into Big Bucks Hardware. Turn to your right to get into the lumber yard and jump on the stacked supplies to find a Frank statue. This is 47 of 70. Now head around to the parking lot. There is a propaganda poster beside the car and some explosive barrels. Blast it with a flame shot from your electrofire staff. Now head back across the street and hop the fence to get to the mansion. Immediately in front of you is a spiral staircase up to a tree house. Climb to the top and grab Frank 48 of 70. Double back the way you came and exit back to the street. Next stop is the mansion. You've been here before in Kane's DLC. Hop the fence and run up the spiral staircase. There are opportunities for weapons at the gazebo. Grab the two guns here and make a czar if you're short on weapons. Otherwise, you can save them for split shots. Work your way up past the tennis court and once you see the drained pool, make your way inside. This pool has a med pack. This is 3 of 25. Make your way to the back side of the mansion now. Head over the bridge and turn to your right. Follow the path until you find a broken wall. Turn left and climb over it. Now continue left and work your way along the raised garden beds to find a Frank statue. This is 49 of 70. Double back to the parking area. Head down and grab the blueprint for the volatile bear. Start by making a freedom bear and then adding the nearby dynamite to make a boom bear. You need a wheelchair to finish this one so keep this in your inventory for now. Next, exit the house and head southbound down the staircase. Your goal is the other house directly across the landslide. Make your way there now. Drop down and then climb up the staircase. You can grab a handgun at the foot of the stairs first. At the top, you should climb onto the hood of the truck and use it to jump up the staircase on your left. Now you can climb the staircase and get to the top and burst your way into the house by smashing the window. 
Clear the room of zombies and then inside the house on a table to your left you'll find the 50th Frank statue. Only 20 more! It's time to continue northwest for another security camera. Jump off the balcony and then onto the truck. From here you should be able to shoot the security camera if you have a strong enough ranged weapon like a Czar. That's 2 of 7 in Sunset Hills. Now you should drop down to ground level and continue northwest. Your goal is Joey's house. Get back onto the street and then clear your way up to the staircase and then follow it up to the tennis courts. Simply pass through the tennis courts and head up to the next staircase. Joey's house always has a wheelchair in front of it. Pick up the wheelchair and combine it with your boom bear to make it into a volatile bear. You can send this on its way down the driveway and then head down yourself. At the end of the driveway, go ahead and blast the third surveillance camera in Sunset Hills. Now head past it and into the construction yard on your right. Climb up the concrete and make a defiler here using a sledgehammer and a fire axe. No time like the present to farm some kills. Afterwards, you'll need to head into the safe house. Run to the right side and pick up med pack 4 of 25. Next, you can run to the table in the center of the safe house on the west side. You can pick up the Undead Solutions book. This will get automatically equipped, so you should go ahead and swap back to Thrifty Trader for increased PP gains. That's all there is to do in here for now. You should exit the construction yard and head back to the streets. Head straight out of the construction yard and you'll see an open garage. On the left is a propaganda poster. Burn it for 6 of 40 using your Electrofire staff and now head into the garage. Beside the car on the right side are the blueprints for the flaming gloves. The combo is boxing gloves and motor oil, exactly the same as Dead Rising 2. Make a pair now and keep them in your inventory, we need them for a PP trial. Now you should enter the house via the door, then bust down the next door to actually get into the house. Interior design everybody. Run through the kitchen and then head up the stairs on the right side. At the top, turn left to get into the bedroom. Pass through the bedroom to get to the bathroom on your right. Head inside and get the tragic ending by the tub. With this for company, it's no surprise she wanted to die. Is that supposed to be a joke? It wasn't very funny. That's all we're doing in this house for now, we'll be back later in the main story. Double back all the way to ground level and then exit out to the garage and finally back out to street level. Head northwest again. You can use your defiler here to start working down the kills. This is a good idea since there's high zombie density here. Use the defiler until it breaks. You also need kills with the flaming gloves, so use them next. The firefighter zombies are simply too resilient, so you can resort to gunning them down. Once you're at the highway access point, you'll need to turn to your left and burn the next propaganda poster. That's 7 of 40. Now you'll want to head south down the street by jumping the barricade. Clear zombies as you work your way to the fourth surveillance camera on the right side. Blast it and then continue southbound, but move to the left side of the street. Once you pass the garbage truck, smash the window of the store to find a med pack. This is 5 of 25. You can restock on healing items if you need some. The lap around Sunset Hills continues. Continue southbound down the street, trying to maintain a large kill count. Jump the barricade and then save at the porta potty on your left if you wish. Now head up the stairs and blast the next propaganda poster. This is 8 of 40. Save again. Why not? You're here. More collectibles call us. Continue back on the street southbound. Now that most of the elite zombies are gone, it's a good chance to use the flaming gloves. You'll want to kill zombies with the flaming gloves until they break or you're finished the PP trial. Punch your way forward as you slowly work your way southbound. These gloves actually have high durability, so you can likely get very far into the PP trial on one pair, if not finish it. Keep punching your way south until you're close to the subway station. This took me a long time, but I did manage to get most of the progress on the Flaming Gloves trial done. Only 50 more to go. Once you get to the subway, there's another surveillance camera. Make sure to shoot it. There's only two left in Sunset Hills. With the area clear, it's time to head eastbound down the street for more collectibles. Continue using the Flaming Gloves on zombies to try and finish the PP trial. Pass by Slappy's Fun Food Shack and then turn to your left. At the back in the alley is the 8th propaganda poster. Torch it using your Electrofire staff. Now you should head north up the alleyway. When you get to the intersection, head to your right and get around the crashed trucks. Just past them is another surveillance camera. I punched the final set of zombies for the Flaming Gloves PP trial here and then blasted the 6th camera. One more to go. The final camera is directly eastbound on the same street. Work your way there now using whatever combo weapons you have banked. Once you're there, blast the 7th camera and that's it for Sunset Hills. Turn right and head southbound now. There's a few collectibles left to get. Jump the barricade and then turn left immediately to find a propaganda poster behind the store. Torch this for 10 of 40. Now head back to the streets and turn towards Speedy Espresso. Head to the left side and torch another propaganda poster, that's 11 of 40. 
You should be able to scavenge materials for a split shot just outside, and then you should head inside Speedy Espresso to make another Electro Fire Staff in the back room. You can go full Elemental Staff if you want, but we only care about the flames at the moment. When you're restocked, exit Speedy Espresso and turn to your left. You should make your way to the parking lot a couple of doors down. Hop the barrier and then climb onto the Humvee to find a med pack. This is 6 of 25. You can drop down and save if you wish. That was the last DLC collectible on Sunset Hills for Angel. Now head to your left out of the parking lot. Continue westbound until you reach the southern exit of Sunset Hills. You can make a party slapper if you want here, but I just hoofed it to the ambulance and used that instead. Regardless, with whatever vehicle you have, head left out of Sunset Hills towards the quarantine zone. You should drive inside and then continue all the way to the end. There's a barricaded area on the left side. You should disembark your vehicle now and then head into this barricaded area. At the back, you can find a med pack. This is 7 of 25. There are also a few guns and healing items here, so restock if you need to. You can make a saber shot using the machete and the flare gun, so I would recommend it. It's required for a PP trial. When you're done in here, blast your way out with the saber shot and then make your way across the quarantine zone to the south side. We're headed for another tragic ending. Liberally use your saber shot and head up the left side. You'll find various materials around here for split shots, so feel free to make some if you need them. Prioritize using your saber shot though. At the end of the quarantine zone, you'll find a military truck, so head into the back. You'll find a tragic ending here along with several bottles of booze. Collect it. Last call. Not even really trying anymore, I guess. Restock on healing items and then make your way to the nearest vehicle that you can find. Despite Dougie constantly harassing you about going to Hamburger Fiefdom, it's time to collect collectibles in Central City. Drive your car through the quarantine zone and get back the way you came in. It's the only way out of the quarantine zone. You should stop and head left into the medical trailers though. You can make another saber shot here. You may as well since we can try to get that PP trial done as soon as possible. Continue left and make a saber shot. Use this to clear zombies as you continue to the other side of the highway. Loads of zombies here for you to slaughter. Use the gunshots and the strong attack liberally to cleave your way towards Central City. When your durability gets low, you should switch exclusively to shooting. Likewise, if your ammo gets low, swap to melee to get more value out of this saber shot. The first surveillance camera in Central City is right at the military blockade. Just blast it with your saber shot as you work your way into Central City. Six more to go. Head into the blockade now and then immediately turn to your left. Enter the gated area and pick up med pack 8 of 25, then double back outside. Time for a lap of Central City. Keep blasting with your saber shot as you make your way left towards the safe house. Keep cleaving and keep blasting. I got my 200 kills finished just before the Smith and Associates Pavilion. I also hit level 50 here, which unlocks the maxed achievement. First things first, head into the pavilion and restock on weapons. There's a box of guns here and you can use the nearby chairs to make split shots. Do so now, restock as much as you can. Exit the pavilion and head towards Sport Trance. On the wall is another propaganda poster. Light this up, that's 12 of 40. Now it's time to do some level ups. I was neglecting leveling up, I mean, I was banking 17 points to spend right now. All of the level 50 upgrades are very strong. My advice is to unlock Life, Melee, Ranged, and Smarts first. Smarts lets you have all book effects active simultaneously, making it very beneficial. The Ranged upgrade gives you significantly more attack power and ammo for ranged weapons. Life is steady health regeneration. All of these are worthwhile. Now despite being maxed out on your level, you will continue to level up and collect PP until you've unlocked every single attribute. For maxing out one attribute, you'll get the Specialist achievement as well, so that's kind of a two for one. You should leave the mechanic category unmaxed for now. Everything else should be fine to max out. Back on track, head through Sport Trance and break, then jump out the window. You should notice the greatly increased power of your split shots now. Things ridiculous. Head to your left and find another security camera. Blast it. Five more to go. Now turn south down the street and make a quick detour into the store entryway. There's another propaganda poster here. Torch it using the Electro Fire Staff. That's 13 of 40. More collectibles call. Continue southbound along the street. If you want, you can make a shock dozer here. Otherwise, you can just keep pumping the trigger of your split shots to clear the street. Once you pass the porta potty on the left side after the Rancherama, you'll find a propaganda poster. Burn this one as well. That's 14 of 40. Now you can save at the porta potty if you wish. Still more to do, and your target is the hospital. Continue southbound, blasting as many zombies as you can for PP gains. Directly in front of the hospital sign on the sidewalk, you'll find a med pack. This is 9 of 25. 
Continue southbound and you'll find the next surveillance camera. Just clear the street of zombies and then blast the camera. Only four left. The tennis courts have lots of zombies and they're easy pickings. Blast them all using the split shot. The faster we max out, the better off we are. From the tennis courts, head directly north into the outdoor dining area of the hotel. There's another propaganda poster here. This one's mounted quite high this time. Burn it using the Electrofire Staff. That's 15 of 40. The next target is on the far side of the stage. Work your way westbound now, blasting any zombies in your way. Once you reach the far side of the stage, clear out any of the annoying football zombies here, and then torch the 16th propaganda poster. Getting kinda close to halfway there. Before you head back to the streets, you should turn around and continue westbound along the pathway. You'll find another med pack here, this is 10 of 25. Now, you can head directly north and up the street. Keep blasting zombies for PP gains as you work your way up the left side. You'll need to cover a lot of ground here. The white box truck is blocking your path. Jump over the hood, and then turn left to get into Sculpt Yourself. Start by heading into the back office. Frank 51 is in here. Yoink! Now exit and head into the operating room on your right. Grab the med pack off the chair. Now for the consultation room. Head inside and grab the acid toy blueprint. This requires chemicals and a toy robot, and you should make one now. This is required for a PP trial, so hang on to it. Then you can exit Sculpt Yourself. Your goal is to head to the museum now. Throw the acid toy into a crowd of zombies and then make your way to the museum. Blast your way in using split shots. There should be several soldiers here you can restock off of. Just past the stairs on the left side you'll find a propaganda poster hidden cheekily behind a pillar. Blast it for 17 of 40. You'll want to turn right on the street now to head northbound. As usual keep blasting for kills and extra PP. Turn left once you see the orange pedestrian only barricade. Then head left towards the building. You should burn the next propaganda poster here, that's 18 of 40. I managed to get a level up here. This boosted me to 10 attribute points. I opted to max out agility here. Maximum sprint will be quite nice moving forward. We will get a lot of value out of it, trust me. But back on topic, head southbound and then turn right to get into another alleyway. Head westbound and make sure you turn right and take out the surveillance camera and don't skip it like I do here. Whoops! Anyways, head to the end of the alley and turn to your left to blast the next surveillance camera. This is 4 of 7. Only 3 more to go. Continue south down the street and then turn to your left to get into the pedestrians only shopping district. Keep blasting and then you'll find a propaganda poster on Maximus Infinity. Burn the 19th propaganda poster. Now you should head back westbound and leave the shopping district. Continue southbound now and you'll find another surveillance camera to blast. That's 5 of 7. Continue south and turn left at the intersection. Continue until you get to Big Bull's Quality Meats and blast the 6th camera here. One more to go. Save at the porta potty nearby if you wish. Once again, there are loads of guns here so you can restock on split shots. Grab guns from cop zombies and then grab the car exhaust on the ground or shoot parking meters for blunt objects. When you're finished restocking, head westbound back down the street. This poster is actually pretty well hidden. Head past the oil tanker and make your way into the small doorway. Turn around and incinerate the next propaganda poster. That's 20 of 40, and you're halfway there. You may need to do a little bit of reorienting yourself to torch this one. Time to double back northbound for the final collectibles. Blast your way up the street using split shots. Head all the way back to the alley from before. Once again, as you pass the military checkpoints, there are a plethora of guns and blunt objects to make split shots with. Turn to your right and save at the nearby porta potty if you wish. Continue up the alley and turn left in front of the offices. Blast the last surveillance camera. Hey, nobody's perfect. Double back through the alley and this time get into a taxi. Drive this a short ways to get to the exotic car dealer. You're gonna want to wrap around and head up the staircase. Once you're inside the dealership, head to the front desk and pick up the med pack. That's 12 of 25. There's more split shot supplies here so restock if you need to. Chair plus gun equals split shot. You should also head to the blueprint south of the front desk. This is for the Shock Blaster, new to this DLC, and it's actually really good. The Shock Blaster is an assault rifle combined with the Defibrillator. Make one now, it is strong, but not as strong as the Split Shot for clearing zombies. Restock on Split Shots and or Shock Blasters, and then leave the dealership by jumping out the window. On the west side in the parking lot, you can find the 21st Propaganda Poster. Burn it. That's it for the Angel-specific DLC collectibles in Central City. It's time to head across the bridge to South Almuda, so you should grab a car. This is just a straight shot to South Almuda. Well, well, it would be if there wasn't blockades everywhere. Just kidding. Time to go the long way around. Get used to it, kiddo. Nothing can be easy, can it, Capcom Vancouver? Barricades everywhere. 
Head back through Central City. Use the southern streets to avoid blockades. You should make your way to the Rancho Rama now. You should save at the Porta Potty nearby. I had another set of attribute points, so I opted to get the generic vehicle combines. This is useful for making combo vehicles on the fly later on. Next, I picked up generic mask and generic miscellaneous combine. We'll eventually get all of the generic combines, it's just that these are nice to get because you can make beer hats more easily. Save your game. Maybe a good point to take a break as well. It's time to tackle South Almuda before getting back to the main story. Head to the nearby Rancho Rama. There's lots of options for combo vehicles here like the Party Slapper or Shock Dozer, but I'm just gonna opt for the Armadillo. The Armadillo is fast and decently strong, but you can make some progress on PP trials if you need to. Drive the Armadillo northbound and snake your way around Central City killing as many zombies as possible. You'll want to exit Central City northbound and bust through the military blockade. Then you're gonna want to turn left and head westbound to get to South Elmuda. The highway has tons of zombies, so do your best to get as many kills as possible as you work your way to the center of the highway. Pretty much in the dead center is a crashed train. You'll want to exit and jump inside. There is Frank 52 of 70 on one of the seats and Medpack 13 of 25 right next to it. That's some pretty lazy placement. Exit the train and get back into your armadillo. Continue driving westbound up the highway to South Elmuda, but make sure you stay on the left side. When you reach the fire truck, slow down and get out. You'll want to climb onto the nearby van and then sprint and jump onto the fire truck. There's a med pack on the roof of the cab. This is 14 of 25. There's another med pack that you can pick up on the highway and it's not that far. You should cross to the right side and continue westbound. You should do this on foot. Clear out any zombies with split shots as you work your way to the off-ramp to Ingleton. You'll find a box truck on the left side. This is full of instruments, but head to the back and pick up the 15th medical pack. You'll probably need to move some guitars around. Once you're done, you should exit the truck. Now you're going to want to head into Ingleton, but you're actually going to go through the industry tunnel to South Elmuda. Continue westbound and turn right when you get onto the off-ramp to Ingleton. Blast all the zombies as you follow this down-ramp. Get in the nearby van when you can to speed this up. Turn it around and then take the right at the first intersection. Uh, of course the tunnel's blocked, so bail out and then jump over the barricade. Blast or dodge past the football zombies and then continue southbound through the tunnel until you reach the end. Once you're inside South Elmuda, you can set your side objective to mark the cameras. Then set your marker for the bus station on your left. The first surveillance camera will be directly in front of you on the left side, so shoot it. Seven more in South Elmuda. Now turn left and jump the barricade. Turn left again to get into the bus depot. Start by heading inside and going all the way to the end. You can grab the 16th med pack here. Then you should exit the bus depot and swap to the Electrofire staff. Burn the 22nd propaganda poster here on the left side before leaving the bus depot. You'll want to head eastbound up the street. Head into the parking lot here and blast the 23rd poster behind Laos Cream Dream. I earned some more attribute points afterwards, so I just continue unlocking the generic combo categories. I'm just working my way left to right, just like you should work your way left to right in South Elmuda. Continue left and shoot the next surveillance camera. Five more to go. You can head to the porta potty to save if you wish. Usually a good idea. Time to head to the most eastbound corner of South Elmuda. Continue eastbound and blast your way through using split shots. Just wreak absolute havoc on all of the zombies in your path. Once you reach the end of South Elmuda, you should blast the next surveillance camera. Then you should head a little across the way and incinerate the 24th propaganda poster using an electro fire staff. That's it on this side. You should absolutely head into the Los Perdidos fire station number 5 if you need another electro fire staff. Head to the upper level and build one. Or don't if the materials are simply not here. That's a little weird. Head back down to ground level and keep blasting with your split shots. You should cross the street and climb up the stairs. If you want to make an ultimate shout, you can take a detour left. Otherwise, simply head up the stairs. On the left side of one of these boxes, you can find Propaganda Poster 25 of 40. Torch it. Now there are more collectibles. Head to your left and then cross over the pedestrian walkway. There's another med pack here, that's 17 of 25. There's also a Frank here, make sure to snatch it up. One more set of lazily placed collectibles. Work your way to the end of the upper pedestrian walkway, then turn and head downstairs to get to the main strip of South Elmuda. Continue blasting as you head west and then hop the barricade. On your right, shoot the next surveillance camera. That's halfway done South Elmuda. Keep moving west, blasting zombies. On the side of El Spaniel Liquor, incinerate the 26th propaganda poster. Now you should quickly head north and hop the barricade. All you need to do now is blast the 5th surveillance camera and then head northbound into the strip club on the left side. 
Now that we finally have maxed out ranged attributes, the Super Massager can actually do some damage. Head upstairs and combine the Massager with the Leaf Blower to make a Super Massager. With that done, you should head back outside. Double back downstairs and then exit the strip club. Liberally! Unload the Super Massager into crowds of zombies as you work your way back to the south streets. Keep blasting, but make sure you make your way to La Fonda's Fabric Outlet. Inside is another med pack by the cashier's desk. That's 18 of 25. Your wacky antics probably attracted a lot of zombies, so spend some time blasting with the Super Massager from the relative safety of the doorway. It's totally possible to finish the Super Massager's required 100 kills here. If you get enough piercing kills, you should have enough ammo to complete the trial. That's one more PP trial down, and we never need to use this again. If you didn't finish, just keep it in the back of your mind. Back on track for collectibles, exit and head to your right. You're going to want to enter the huge Industrial Co. warehouse. Just work your way south now, blasting all of the zombies that get in your way. Remember when we got a tragic ending in Kane's DLC? Yeah, there's another medkit here. This time, you don't need forklift certification. Just head into the gap between the containers and snatch up med pack 19 of 25. Now, time to leave Big McHuge Large Industrial Co. Head to your left and save at the porta potty if you want. Now, you should continue left towards the gas station. Pass the gas station and head to the far side. You'll need to burn the 27th propaganda poster on the left. Once that's done, you're off westbound once again. The 6th surveillance camera isn't far. Just head a slight ways west and then blast it. Just a few more collectibles to get in South Almuda. Head west and take the left path to the lower street. Follow this all the way to the plane hangar. This is an important place later, but right now in front of the dumpster you should burn the 28th propaganda poster. Now you can wrap around the fence and head northbound. After returning to the street, simply turn left and blast the security camera. Only one left. Of course, as usual, make sure to blast all of the zombies around for mad PP gains. The final camera in South Omuda is just north of your current location. Just head north towards Rocket's Red Glare and blast the final surveillance camera. One more district down, but there's a few more collectibles left to get in South Omuda. Turn to your right and hop the barrier. Now turn right again to enter the warehouse. Pass through and then climb the stairs. At the top, you should turn to your left and pick up the med pack, 20 of 25. Now jump back over the railing to get to ground level and head north out of the warehouse. You should turn to your right and hop the fence. You should make another elemental staff here. Combine the battery and traffic light and then the propane tank and liquid nitrogen to make an elemental staff. When you're finished, jump the fence and head north and then turn to your right. You'll need to pass through Bob's super tires and then continue to the northern street. Once you're past the blocked path, turn right and continue straight ahead. You'll find the 29th propaganda poster on the building, so torch it. One final collectible in South Elmuda. Head westbound and work your way back towards Rocket's Red Glare. Jump the barricade and then turn northbound into the store on your left. Pass through to the north side and then turn left to burn the last poster in South Elmuda. That's 30 of 40. All that's left is collectibles in Ingleton and that's where the main story wants us to go anyways, so there we go. Head north now, clearing as many zombies as you can. Make sure you maintain an elemental staff with enough ammo to get those last 10 posters. I managed to get some levels here, so I maxed out the remaining combo categories. I was also able to max out inventory. The only stat left unmaxed is mechanic, which needs two more tiers. You're probably safe taking these upgrades, but there is a potential glitch, so I will be holding off getting them until after we've completed all of the weapon building PP trials. You can make that call yourself, whether or not you want to take that risk. You need to work your way north through the industry tunnel now to Ingleton. Once you jump the barricade, you should grab a nearby van. Drive the van northbound and stop shortly after to get into the Chinese Opera House. Head past the central pillar, and the med pack will be just sitting on your left beside a statue. Pick this up, there's only four more to go. Since you're here, you should also make a flaming helmet. This requires a dragon mask and motor oil. Make one and dump it. If you want, you can also head north and make an ultimate reaper here. Katana and sickle into gas can and death mask. Worth building if you have the inventory space. There's also two handguns to make a czar if you have the space as well. When all that's finished, it's time to leave the Chinese Opera House. Double back the way you came in. Clear the way southbound using combo weapons and turn left down the street. There's a propaganda poster in the corner of the shop's inset from the street. Head inside and torch it, that's 31 of 40. Head northbound now, but you should turn into Sunny Luck Fortune just before the barricade. Make a dragon punch here using the boxing gloves and motorcycle engine. Ditch this and then head back outside. Turn northbound and then jump over the barricade. The next collectible is in La Fonda's Fine Threads on your right. Head inside and grab the med pack off the ground. Only three more to go. 
Now, you should also make sure to head into the storage room at the back to find our old friend Frank. That's 54 of 70. Now, you can leave LaFonda's fine threads. You should head for Hamburger Fiefdom now, but understand that it is a trap. You most definitely want to save your game first. You won't be able to save until this segment is over. Work your way to the Feast Mobile, and on the way you should find the first surveillance camera on Ingleton. Blast it. The Fiefdom is surrounded by soldiers, for some reason. You're gonna want to do a lap clearing out the soldiers around the area before you even think about touching the Feast Mobile. Check out the back alleys and make sure that you clear any soldiers on the roof. Of course, there is a propaganda poster on Hamburger Fiefdom itself. Make sure that you incinerate it. Only eight more. Now, you should get into the Feast Mobile and then immediately exit. You'll be given a new set of side objectives to complete. These are Spec Ops weapon stashes, and it's as if this DLC didn't have enough collectibles already. Getting the Feast Mobile back to Sunset Hills can wait. It's time for the collectibles in Ingleton. Head westbound up the street to find both a surveillance camera as well as a propaganda poster on the corner. Standard stuff here. You should torch the poster and then turn your attention to the security camera. Seven more posters and six more cameras to go. Clear the streets, but continue westbound. Head all the way to the end and then jump into the back of the military truck. This is where the Sticky Bomb blueprint was. Grab the 23rd med pack. There's only two more to go. You can also make a Sticky Bomb here if you want or if you have inventory space. Now exit and double back to the street. This time hang a left and head northbound. Continue working your way up the street, blasting everything in your way. When you get to the corner near Big Bull Quality Meats, there will be a propaganda poster on the side. Torch it. 34 down, only 6 more to go. Continue northbound now and you'll find the next surveillance camera. Blast it. 4 more to go. Turn right to head eastbound on the northern street now. This area is chock full of zombies, so liberally clear them out using your array of stockpiled combo weapons. Make your way towards the crashed helicopter. On the right side of the buffet, you should blast the next propaganda poster. Five more to go. It's time to head northbound towards the highway. Clear a path and you'll find the fourth surveillance camera just before the highway signs. Blast it, and then double back to the street. Continue eastbound, and you should pass the Ingleton Motel. Jump the fence and head to the office. Incinerate the 36 poster. Four more to go. Start working your way eastbound now. There's two more collectibles to get here. Start on the left side and then make sure to blast the fifth surveillance camera. Then you're going to want to head right into the barber shop. You'll find the med pack just inside the door. You can go the long way around, like I did, or just go straight inside and snatch it up. 24 of 25, only one more med pack left. Now exit the barber shop. There's another surveillance camera on this street. Make your way eastbound all the way to the end of the street. Clear the zombies and then blast the sixth surveillance camera. Only one more of those left. Conveniently, this puts us at the cemetery, which is one of our main story objectives as well. Head south now through the cemetery. You can use the nearby hearse or just keep blasting here. I opted to use the ultimate reaper now. Destroying gravestones is a PP trial, so you're welcome to make some progress on it. Spin walk your way southbound towards the center of the graveyard using the ultimate reaper. At the center is a Frank statue. Make sure that you pick it up. That's 55 of 70. Now you can continue spin walking with the ultimate reaper as you work your way to the main objective marker. Now you should jump into the truck and grab the spec ops cache. Just south of the military cache are a huge amount of police zombies with guns and lawn chairs. If you're low on combo weapons, make a lot of split shots here. As you well know, chair plus gun equals split shot. Restock on split shots, otherwise continue south and exit the graveyard. Then head westbound to get back onto the streets. Turn left at the hearse and work your way to the south end of the street. Instead, you should take the first left into the open garage. Make sure to grab the final med pack, as well as another Frank statue. That's Frank 56, and the med tech achievement down. There's a box full of crowbars in this garage. You can make some heavy metals or stockpile blunt weapons for split shots. When you're ready, exit the garage and head to your left. Clear the zombies around the area and then smash the final surveillance camera. You should get the no peeking achievement here. By the way, this is where my Xbox achievements broke. Fun fact. Regardless, head north up the street now. Stay on the left side. Just before the cement mixer is a propaganda poster. Incinerate it for 37 of 40. There's only three more to go. Now continue northbound up the street. There's two more posters here. The first is on the basketball court fence, just after the cement mixer. Blast it. Two more to go. Continue northbound and turn left past the intersection. 
The next propaganda poster is just past this intersection, so you should go burn it. Instead, I opted to throw down with some zombies here and manage to finish the Heavy Metal Kills PP trial. Your goal is to head up to the movie theater and get onto the roof now. Head up the stairs and turn up to get to the next staircase and then exit to the roof. Now you should simply drop down and torch the poster on your right. 39. One left. This is an opportunity to make another ultimate mecha dragon if you need one. Otherwise, knee drop down to ground level and then head to your left. The final poster is just past the intersection on the left side. You should torch this now because we didn't torch it earlier. Whoops. You'll get the burn baby burn achievement now. At least you should. Take it up with Microsoft if you didn't like me. Now it's time to head back to the feast mobile. Head westbound along the street and make your way all the way back to hamburger fiefdom. Clear the zombies in front of the feast mobile and then get inside. It's time to get out of here. Turn to your right and then drive onto the highway access after a quick left. You'll want to drive this vehicle carefully. Avoid crashing into other vehicles. If you crash into something, you'll likely need to start over. The Feastmobile is really not that durable and it's easy to flip and destroy, so drive carefully. You'll want to make your way along the central bridge to get to the center of the highway. When you're at the center, you should stop and get out. There's another military cache nearby. Clear the zombies and then head to the back of the truck. Jump in and grab the cache. Now head back to the Feastmobile. There's one more military cache left, and it's closer to Central City than Sunset Hills. Head down the left ramp towards Sunset Hills, and make sure to park the Feastmobile somewhere relatively zombie-free. You can use the nearby sedan and drive past the Feastmobile up towards Central City. The military cache is here. There are a lot of soldier zombies, so clear them out. Grab the final cache, get back in the sedan, and double back to the Feastmobile. Swap back into the Feastmobile now, and carefully drive it back northbound into Sunset Hills. Be very careful because you absolutely don't want to fail now and repeat that segment. At the intersection, just turn right and drive this straight to the communications tower. Stop next to the junk bike, and you'll get an auto save. You should also make a manual save here too. There should be a junk bike or another vehicle nearby. All of the side objectives are finished now, so it's time to head to the main story and finish out this DLC. Drive the junk bike southwest and work your way out of Sunset Hills and into Central City. Drive all the way to the Rancho Rama and save your game at the Porta Potty. Do one final check to make sure you have all of the collectible based achievements now. These are No Peeking, Burn Baby Burn, Guardian Angel, and Med Tech. Everything else is main story progress. When you're sure you have all of the achievements, you should head to Doug's location. This is directly west of your current location and it's inside the exotic car dealership. You should head to the Rancho Rama and grab a vehicle of your choice. I just opted for the Armadillo, but use the Party Slapper or Shock Dozer if you want. You can even use the Feast Mobile now. Turn your vehicle of choice southbound and work your way west along the street until the very end. Now simply turn northbound and ditch your vehicle. You should now talk to Doug. His plan is actually awful, and listening to his advice is liable to get yourself and him killed. You do need to start up above on the vantage point, but you don't need to actually stay there. Head inside the car dealership and make yourself some shock blasters using the nearby assault rifles and defibrillators. You can also make some czars or split shots, but shock blasters are actually really good for this. As soon as you get the notification that the event has started, immediately jump down to street level and head south to the police station. At level 50 with a maxed out ranged category, the shock blaster should one-shot these fools. You'll need to make several trips back and forth between the parking lot entrance and Doug to respawn the enemies. Just continue to clear the soldiers until you've completed the various waves. If you try and stay at the car dealership, Doug will probably just die. He has the constitution of wet toilet paper after all. You can leave the tactics to me there, Dougie. After the waves are done, you'll be tasked with following Doug. You don't really have to since there's a clear objective marker, but Doug is actually like greased lightning. Other games where you have to follow someone should take a note. Follow Doug all the way to the rear of the police station and you'll get a cutscene as well as an achievement. This is Shakedown for interrogating the Spec Ops. Time for an awful costume change for no reason, in typical DLC fashion. The goal now is just to head to the north side of Central City, but there's a few things we can do along the way. Sprint your way northeast to get back onto the street. You can stop at Roy's Mart and then turn to your right. From here, turn left to get into the Burgess Dawson Hotel. Head into the maintenance room on your right and grab Frank 57 of 70 from the lockers. This is of course after you've moved a bunch of garbage out of the way. Now exit and head up the staircase on your right. Continue following this up and right all the way to the top. This is quite a few sets of stairs. At the top, turn to your left and then hang a right to get outside again. 
Head down the stairs and jump onto the roof above you. This may take you an attempt or two. On this roof, follow the small balcony as it wraps around the hotel. Drop down at the end and then follow the path around Roy's Mart. Work your way to the end and grab the 58th Frank statue by the PUMPS sign. Drop down to ground level now and head east towards the museum, but this time turn into the Burgess Dawson Hotel once again. Now turn to your left and enter the construction area. Grab the blueprint for the knife gloves here. This is an old favorite, but it's a shadow of its former self, just like the spiked bat. Make a pair of knife gloves now using the chef knife and boxing gloves. And definitely don't destroy the boxing gloves by shooting it with the shock blaster. Whoops. When that's done, climb onto the desk and jump onto the scaffolding. Then jump to the scaffolding on the right side. Next, you'll need to climb the boxes and jump back onto the other scaffolding. Platforming, as usual, can take a couple of attempts in Dead Rising 3. At the top, you should grab Frank 59 of 70, making some serious progress. Now drop back down to ground level and exit the hotel and get into a nearby taxi. This should be a fairly painless drive. Get out and then head through Sport Trance by breaking a window. This will get you around the more difficult rocket launcher soldiers. Then you can just blast them all from behind and then smash the barricade and defeat the remaining soldiers. One of which will drop a key. Before you leave, you can restock on Zars or Shock Blasters if you need to. Then use the key on the door to your left. Head downstairs and start by turning to your right. There's a blueprint down here for the Laser Sword. This is a flashlight and gems, just like in Dead Rising 2. You will need to use this for a PP trial, so time to get started. Use the Laser Sword to clear the path through the underground. At the end of the hallway is another Frank next to the lockers. Grab Frank 60 of 70. Man, it's only 10 more to go. Now continue downstairs beating zombies with the laser sword. As soon as you encounter any resistance like a soldier, swap back to actually good combo weapons like the shock blaster. Smash open the door. Then immediately head to your left and open the storage locker to find a plethora of guns and the lab key. Make some combo weapons if you need some, but the DLC is pretty much done. Turn around and use the door to get through. Work your way through the lab and blast everything in your way with the shock blaster. You'll have to kill a few sets of Spec Ops soldiers, but when you're done, just head to the lockers at the end and open them up. Unfortunately, the DLC will end before you can grab the blueprint, but we will be back here later as Nick. Angel will change her name to Noble Sacrifice and try and go out in a cool way, but if you think about what her plan was for exactly two seconds, you'll realize it was, like, remarkably dumb. That's Angel's DLC completed fully, with all of the achievements. Up next is the Last Agent DLC, starring Special Agent Bradley Park. The Last Agent has nine unique achievements. Most of these are story-related and unmissable, but The Last Agent, like most of the DLCs, has its own slew of unique collectible-based trophies. You should be able to get all of them in just over two hours while completing this DLC one single time. Of course, we have rescued all of the survivors already, so we only need the other eight achievements this time around. Time to fire up the fourth DLC, The Last Agent starring Brad Park. Start from a new file this time by restarting the story. As usual, you can watch the cutscenes if you wish. You'll start in the safe house in South Elmuda once again. As soon as you gain control, run around and get some inventory. Grab the nearby rations and slag shots and then head for the window. You can combine two slag shots into a ZAR. This is a strong starting point. Exit the safe house now and blast your way through zombies to head towards the fire station. Clearing a few soldier zombies will yield some guns and a nearby mailbox can be turned into a split shot. Inside the fire station, make an elemental staff. You will need to burn collectibles as Brad, just like you did as Angel, but this is just a solid starting point for inventory. Once you have your elemental staff, look around the area for two fire axes. You should combine these together into a chopper if you have the generic axe combo upgrade. At this point, you should. Now you should drop down to ground level once again. You should be able to make another chopper here by using another two fire axes. Now head outside the fire station and start cleaving zombies in half using the chopper's strong attack. You need to get 200 chopper kills for a PP trial, so get to work. You should do your best to clear all the zombies in the immediate area using the chopper. Your level 50 upgrades to melee as well as books will give you a massive amount of durability. If you want, you can head up the stairs to the landing to make an ultimate shout. You can do so at your discretion. Once you've cleared the area, work your way westbound to head to the yellow objective marker. At the gate, you'll have to find another way in, so head into the office on your right. Head to your right again and use the console to open up the gate. 
There are lots of firearms as well as blunt objects around here, so make some czars or split shots. Now you should head into the parking lot. There's a lot of zombies in here, and you should continue to farm kills with the chopper. Clear the majority of the zombies in here, and you should be able to finish, or at the very least get within 50 kills of completing the chopper PP trial. Personally, I was able to finish. Once you're done, ditch your remaining choppers and then get into the Collins chemical van. You'll need to carefully drive this to Central City's hospital without breaking it. Turn around and then get through the Los Perdidos power plant. You'll get a notification for Jack, but we've already rescued the survivors, so we simply don't care this time around. Head to your left and then get onto the south bridge. Serpentine your way around the trucks because Capcom Vancouver hates us and made everything as annoying as possible. You really start to feel it in like the fourth playthrough. About halfway up the bridge, you'll encounter some soldiers and a barricade. Dodge this by going to the right side. Afterwards, it should be fairly smooth sailing across the bridge. Then you'll just have to serpentine around the buses to get to Central City. As per usual, the only way through Central City is the South Street. Turn to your right and then turn to your left to drive towards the hospital. Dodge the exploding barrels and then drive the chemical truck into the hospital. Park in front of the barricade and you'll get delivery credit. You'll need to hop over the barricade and talk to Korra now. Restock on healing items while the dialogue runs. There's a lot of healing items around. There's also materials for a defiler nearby if you're desperate for a weapon, but you should be pretty well stocked. You'll get notified about the pacifier, and that's your current objective. Brad's side quests are all tied to main story progression, so we're going to have to push through as far as we can, then do a single lap around all the districts for collectibles. Pretty par for the course at this point in the game. Your goal is to head north now. You should stop by the Rancho Rama on your right to pick up a vehicle. You can make some ZARs or split shots near Sam since there's tons of soldier zombies. I'm going with an armadillo once again, but feel free to choose a party slapper or shock dozer if you're not finished kills yet. This is a simple trip towards Sunset Hills. Drive towards the north side of Central City and then head left down the highway. This time, head all the way to the end to find it completely blocked off. This is going to be fairly standard in Brad's DLC. They gate everything off. Yikes. You want to head to the end of the central part of the highway to find the pacifiers. Bulldoze your way through, blasting as many zombies as possible until you reach the military truck at the end. There will be soldiers, both alive and zombified, so just keep blasting everything. Once the area is clear, you should collect a pacifier from the back of the truck. The pacifier isn't actually needed for anything, you can just ditch it. Now return to your vehicle of choice and proceed to drive it over the edge. This is actually way faster regardless of whether or not you crash. The current goal is in Sunset Hill, so you should head there now. Use whatever vehicle is available and don't feel bad about having to switch. Cross the highway and then head up into Sunset Hills. The goal is now to kill kings and collect Zombrex chips. This is a lap around Sunset Hills. Immediately on your right you can save Eva if you want, but otherwise head up and turn right to head eastbound. You should find a gang of kings almost immediately. Drop them with your split shots, they should die in one burst. Blessings of level 50. Make sure to run up and collect the set of three Zombrex chips that they dropped. Time to continue eastbound. Work your way up the street, you're headed towards Speedy Espresso. Keep blasting with split shots all the way there. PP is less important now, but you still need another, oh I don't know, about 400,000 zombie kills? So anything you can do to work it down is good. The next two kings are just outside of Speedy Espresso. Burst them down and collect the next two Zombrex chips. Continue inside into Speedy Espresso. You'll want to make another elemental staff in here. You can ditch any depleted combo weapons. Opportunities for healing items in here as well. When you're done, you can exit Speedy Espresso and head northbound. You can use the nearby van if you wish to speed this up or just hoof it. The next kings are in the parking lot of the hardware store. Head up and blast the next three kings and make sure to collect the chips. Follow the road once again. The next set of kings are at the tennis court south of our boy Joey's house. We haven't met Joey yet, so just don't worry about that, but you know. Continue blasting zombies as you head to the landslide. Save opportunity on your right at the porta potty, otherwise get over the landslide and work your way up to the tennis courts. There will be a few zombies in here and another three kings. Same business as usual. Burst them down with a split shot and collect your three Zombrex chips. Now you want to jump the wall to get back to the street side. This is yet another follow the road. Pass by the construction site and head westbound down the street with the fire trucks. Make a left and hop over the barricade just before the highway. Blast the next three kings here and grab the three Zombrex chips. Getting close to done now. Head southbound down the street. You can feel free to rescue Jasmine if you want or just skip her. You should set a marker to the musician's house. This is basically in the dead center of Sunset Hills. Head around to the left and proceed down the alleyway to get back to a main street. 
Now head eastbound and then you can turn into the garage. Follow the path to the house and work your way to the end to find another Frank statue. That's 61 of 70, only 9 more to go. Exit the musician's house on your left. This balcony has the materials for an ultimate shout if you're so inclined to make one. Afterwards, you should hop the railing and fall a great distance back down to ground level. Get back onto the streets and head down the nearby alley. You'll find the next set of kings in here. Blast all the zombies and then pick up the next two Zombrex chips. Only one set of kings left. These guys are in the other tennis court in Sunset Hills. Double back to the northern street and hang a right to head eastbound. Enter the tennis court and just start blasting. There's three more Zombrex chips to collect, so make sure you pick them up. That's all, and you'll be tasked with heading back to Korra at Central City's Hospital. Head south and jump down to get to the lower streets. Hoof it until you can find a vehicle. This is likely going to be a motorcycle by the staircase. Get on and drive it a short distance to a sedan. You can combine the sedan and the motorcycle into a junk bike. This is a slightly better option, but actually not required for any PP trials. Drive the junk bike south out of Sunset Hills. Turn to your right, and then bank left to head back to Central City. This is a standard wraparound of Central City to get back to the hospital. Shoot everything you can as you make your way back to Korra now. Get off your junk bike, and then talk to Korra. Now that you've returned the chips, you'll have a sub-quest for collecting more Zombrex chips, which includes another lap of Sunset Hills. Hold off for now, instead focus on the main story, which is to investigate the stage. Get back on the junk bike or any nearby vehicle and drive it to the southern street. It's a good idea to save your game now as well. Drive south and turn to your right. There's a group of survivors being attacked by bikers at the stage. Head in and just start blasting to clear them all out. Keep running around and shooting with your combo weapons until all of the bikers are dead. When you're in the clear, jump onto the stage and start talking to the survivors. You can grab some stuff around the stage to add it to the locker now as well, if, if you want, I guess. Past West does some weird stuff. Anyways, make for the yellow main objective markers. The first one is on the pedestrian shopping street, so you should head there now. Run westbound down the street, and then head north when you can turn up an alley. Jump the staircase here, and then turn right to blast the first set of kings. Make sure to collect both sets of chips. I should mention at this point that this side quest is actually failable. You want to make sure to save after successful collection of each set of Zombrex chips. Back on topic, make your way westbound back to the street. Then head north and take a turn into the pedestrian shopping district. There's another set of bikers here, but this should be one super easy task for the split shot. Just run in and shoot everything, and the plan should go down without a hitch. Once all three bikers are done for, head north and pass through Z and E, and exit out to the alleyway. Cross the alleyway and enter the security services building via the loading bay. Now you just need to cross through and head left into the parking lot. The next set of bikers is here. These guys should go down without any resistance at all. Just light them up with the split shot. That's all six bikers down, and you'll get another call from the hospital. Pass through Albert's Apparel and find another set of kings. Blast these and collect the Zombrex chips. There's only three sets to go in Central City. The next set of kings is directly south of your location, so turn right out of Albert's Apparel and head there now. Mow down all the zombies in your way as you head for the kings. Turn right at the pedestrian barrier just before the porta potty. Now head up and blast the kings in the outdoor dining area. Collect the next two Zombrex chips. Now you can double back and save at that same porta potty. The next set of kings are at the Burgess Dawson Hotel on the south side, and it's on the way to the hospital. I'm sure Cora will be fine for a little bit. Continue southbound down the street, mowing down whatever gets in your way. Turn left as soon as you get to the south street, and then make your way to the Burgess Dawson Hotel. The kings are just hobbling around the front entrance next to some flares. Blast them and pick up the next two Zombrex chips. There's only two left. The hospital is directly east of your current location, so turn and head there now. There will be three bikers here. They should go down in about two seconds of sustained split shot fire. Easy peasy. They're dead, and your main objective was to kill them, so go ahead and jump the barricade to talk to Korra for your next task. You'll get the achievement out with the bad for defeating all of the bikers. Korra will give you the next task of tracking down some bootleg Zombrex since the chemical van with the Zombrex got burned down. Why didn't you empty it, Korra? The bootleg Zombrex is in Ingleton. Time for a vehicle. Head north from the hospital to the Rancho-Rama. Thankfully, the last set of Central City Kings is also here. Enter the Rancho-Rama and light up the Kings. You can pick up the final two Zombrex chips and make sure to save your game now. Now you can head to the vehicle lot and pick a vehicle. I'll be using the Armadillo once again, but the Party Slapper and Shock Dozer are valid options. I'm just finished those PP trials. The only ways to Ingleton are from South Elmuda via the South Bridge from Central or the North Bridge from Sunset Hills. 
Make your way to South Elmuda now. Head south and wrap around the southern streets and central city to wrap around to get to the South Bridge access point. Snake around the buses once again, and then drive along the south bridge to get to South Elmuda. This is a pretty lengthy drive, and there will be resistance from soldiers as you make your way across the bridge. But, you'll be able to make it to South Elmuda, eventually. Since we do need to do laps around all the areas again for all of the collectibles, the kings in South Elmuda can wait. Well, most of them can wait. For right now, the goal is just to get to Ingleton. Take the left at the first intersection to head down to the construction site. Then drive forward towards the military barricade. You can exit your vehicle when you see yourself close to King's in the seafood restaurant. Head inside and get credit for entering, and blast the two Kings inside. Collect the two Zombrex chips, now head outside and get back into the armadillo. Drive forward and turn to your right. One more time through Rocket's Red Glare. Woohoo! Continue north of the street, now pass through the industry tunnel, doing your best to avoid the various blockades in here. Once you enter Ingleton, you just need to drive a straight shot forward to find the bootleg Zombrex. Get out of the armadillo and start blasting every soldier that you see. Try and prioritize the soldiers with rocket launchers because getting knocked down is just really annoying. Once the area is clear, you can head inside the Happy Good Mart and take out the remaining soldiers inside. Then you can simply collect the bootleg Zombrex from the back counter. It's time to head all the way back to Korra. You won't get the next set of collectibles until you return, so just double back now. Get in the armadillo and head back through the industry tunnel to get back to South Elmuda. Then just retrace your steps to drive all the way back to the South Bridge. Through the fireworks factory, past the construction site, and snaking around the buses. Cross the bridge and then snake around even more buses. Finally, loop around the south side of Central City to reach the hospital. Gotta love open world games, am I right, fellow gamers? Cora will accept your bootleg Zombrex and then send you off to find the hacker, Nelson. Bootleg Zombrex will be marked on your map now, and of course, it's in every single district. First things first, let's go get Nelson. He's in Sunset Hills by the dance studio. Exit the hospital and head north to the Rancho Rama once again. Saving is a good choice at the nearby porta potty. Pick whichever vehicle you prefer, but I'm going with Old Faithful, the Armadillo. You've done a lot of driving at this point into the guide, and you should be used to the locations after working through three DLCs, so I'm going to just start flash forwarding to where you need to go. Get from the Rancho Rama in Central City to Sunset Hills. Inside Sunset Hills, head to your left and then up the street. You'll need to ditch your vehicle at the first barricade. You should enter Ironside Motorcycles just before the barricade and head to the back of the shop for a bootleg Zombrex. This is one of 20. Now you can exit and head to the nearby Porta Potty to save your game. To get to the dance studio, you need to head north past the barricade and then turn right after you pass the toy store. Now you can climb onto the white box truck and then run and boost onto the roof. There's a big flaming arrow leading you towards the dance studio. I guess Capcom Vancouver has no faith in your abilities to find, well, anything. Follow the arrow and jump into the dance studio just like we did earlier. You can now use whatever combo weapons you see fit to clear the dance studio of zombies. I blasted them with the ultimate shout, but really anything will work. Once the area is clear, you can talk to Nelson and give him some of that sweet, sweet bootleg Zombrex. Who knows what's in this stuff anyways. For finding Nelson, you'll get the Hacking the Hacker achievement. Nelson will then task you with heading to the crashed helicopter in Ingleton. Restock on items in the dance studio and then exit back out to ground level. Nelson will be fine on his own, he'll follow along without much issue. As soon as you leave the dance studio, you will be attacked by special forces, so start blasting and take as many out as you can. Then, you can work your way northbound all the way to the highway. At the barricade, you should turn left and make sure you enter the sushi restaurant. You may have done this earlier, just make sure you get credit for entering now. A PP trial demands it. Restock on healing items if you need them, now you can exit out to the highway. You can make another party slapper here and sure, why not? Nelson could hop in the back if he's being quick. Snake around the buses to get to the highway, and then make your way to Ingleton via the North Bridge. This is another flash forward to Ingleton since there's nothing new to collect here. In Ingleton, just drive straight ahead to the crashed helicopter. There are several special forces around so you can clear them out, or just get into the helicopter and safely ignore them. Nelson will collect the Spectrum Analyzer. You're free to restock on weapons now. You can make a couple of ZARs if you're short on weapons. There's lots of guns here. Your next goal is You Break, We Fix It, which is very close to the Rancho Rama, directly south of your location. On the way there, you can stop by Aduna Boxing Gym to make a set of tenderizers here since we need to finish out a PP trial. You're also free to stop by Shanks on the way to make an Ultimate Reaper, but I skipped it this time around, opting for more time with my tenderizers outside. Head to your south and pass the prison bus, then continue south, punching your way towards the repair shop. 
Tenderizers kill pretty slow, so collect as many kills as you can. Nelson will make this fairly annoying with his turbine, but just keep pushing forward. You can make a slight detour to save Callianne if you want, it has some decent zombie density. I managed to clear out the 100 kills required with the tenderizers here, so it was definitely worthwhile to do that. Now it's just a simple double back to you break we fix it. It will be unlocked since Nelson just unlocked it. Drop your tenderizers or break them and grab the new blueprint for the glaciator. Combine the fire extinguisher with the turbine to make this. The glaciator looks cool but it's very underwhelming so you can drop it. Then head to the back of the store and grab the computer parts. Nelson's next location of choice is the Triple X shop in South Almuda. Thankfully it's fairly close this time around. Head south and work your way to the industry tunnel. Try and find a working car, but if you can't, you should just head to South Elmuda on foot, collecting as many kills as you can with your banked combo weapons. I didn't manage to find a working car, so I went the whole way on foot. Just tragic. Then I shot the one working car. Woe is me. Keep working your way southbound all the way to Rocket's Red Glare. When you arrive, you should turn left and then hop the barricade. Annie's old-fashioned triple X shop is on your left. Clear the zombies around Maya, if you care, and then enter the shop. The back door is unlocked now, so enter and then head upstairs. Head to the top floor and enter the control room. You'll find Frank 62 of 70 in here, so you should make sure to collect him. Wait for Nelson to arrive and then talk to him. You'll get a waiting around period and your final collectible will become available. The notorious biohazard piles. There are slag shots here you can stockpile as well as wine for healing items. All of Brad's collectibles are now available, which means a lap around each of the four districts. Fun times ahead. Make sure to save your game. It's very important to save your game and reload if anything messes up. I'll go into more details a little bit later. We're currently in South Almuda, so that's first up. Exit Annie's old-fashioned triple X shop and turn right and pass through the tire shop. You should recognize this area. The first burn pile is conveniently right next to the materials to make an elemental staff. Make a new elemental staff now. It's fundamental to have access to a fire weapon while doing these laps. Once you're done making the elemental staff, torch the first biohazard pile. 40 piles divided by 4 districts means there's 10 per area. 9 more in South Almuda. The next collectible is Southwest. Jump over the fence and head left and down the alleyway to jump back to the South Street. Cross the street and then turn right as you pass the fence. Wrap around to find a stash of bootleg Zombrex. This is 2 of 20. Now you can head back around. The next goal is Big Buck's construction site in the center of South Almuda. You can save at the nearby porta potty before making your way eastbound down the street, blasting whatever gets in your way. Cross the street now to get to the construction site. The biohazard pile is actually above you. Pass the break area and conveniently a set of kings is right here. Head forward and blast them and pick up your third and fourth Zombrex chips. Now turn around and work your way to the ramp on your left. The biohazard pile will be on the corner of the building. Torch number two of 40. The lap around South Almuda will continue. You'll want to head east to the warehouse now. Get back to ground level and follow the south street eastbound into the warehouse. Feel free to stop at the dumpster for an ultimate shout if you're short on weapons. Inside the warehouse, head straight up the ramp and towards the shipping containers. In between the two shipping containers, exactly where one of Angel's collectibles was, burn the next biohazard pile. That's 3 of 40. Turn northbound now and you'll find the next set of kings. Blast them and collect Zombrex chips 5 and 6. There's one more collectible in the warehouse. Head towards the northwest corner. Pass the fireworks van and you'll find a bootleg Zombrex. That's 3 of 20. Warehouse status complete. Head for the northern exit now. Now make for the upper pedestrian walkway. This is to your right and then another right just before the highway. Climb the stairs and make a left to make for the northern side. On the other side, quickly turn to your left and you'll find another biohazard pile at the bottom of the staircase. Burn it for 4 of 40. There's also another two kings on this landing, so turn around and deal with them. Now you should collect Zombrex chips 7 and 8. When you're done, continue northbound. Your next collectibles are near the safe house on your right. You can make an ultimate shout here if you need to, but otherwise make your way to the safe house but stay on the right side. Behind the train cars is another biohazard pile. Burn this for 5 of 40. I got a call about going back to Nelson here. Not important at the moment. We'll get to it when we get to it. The next collectible is in the fire station. Head there now, it's just northwest of your current location. This one's upstairs near the fire pole. You should absolutely make an electro fire staff if the materials are here. Sometimes they're just not. After grabbing the fourth bootleg Zombrex, slide down the pole and then exit the fire station. Next stop is the Los Perdidos power plant. Head westbound, clearing zombies in your way. 
Once you hit the barricade, turn left and enter the power plant. There is a biohazard pile on the west side about halfway down. Head there now and torch it. That's 6 of 40. Next up is south of the power plant. Reorient yourself and head south out of the power plant to get to the street. Then turn right and head forward towards the next intersection. Biohazard pile 7 of 40 is next to the store on the southwestern corner. Burn it. Next stop, the bus depot. Head north from your current location and hop the barricade. Save the survivor here if you want, and then turn left. Work your way down the street, and once you're at the bus depot, you'll want to head inside. Head to the back and grab the bootleg Zombrex. This is the same location as other collectibles in the bus depot. Cool beans, 5 of 20. If you need some more combo weapons, there's a few guns and chairs here that you can use to make split shots. Worthwhile if you have the inventory space. On your way out of the bus depot, burn the body outside the entrance. That's 8 of 40, only 2 more in South Almuda. Now you should cross the street to get to Almuda Farms. This is a simple pass through as usual. The ninth biohazard pile is directly in front of the good old white box truck. Torch it. The final set of South Almuda Kings is directly in front of you, but on top of Almuda Farms is another elemental staff. If you need one, or have the inventory space, it's worth getting onto the roof now and crafting one. Otherwise, you can just head to the Kings now and take them out. Grab the last two Zombrex chips and you're done with the chips in the district. There's a couple more collectibles here. Head to the street on the west side now. You want to make your way to the recycling depot. You should break in through a window if you're an animal, or use the door like an adult. Regardless, on the middle of the floor in the recycling depot you can find the 6th bootleg Zombrex. The last collectible is directly north of your current location. Exit the recycling depot and head towards the industry tunnel. On the left side under the traffic light you should torch the 10th biohazard pile. That's South Almuda fully complete, you should absolutely save your game. Now it's a good idea to return to Nelson at Annie's old fashioned triple X shop. This is directly south of your location. As soon as you hit Rocket's Red Glare, turn left and then hop the barricade. Then the sex shop is on the right. Head inside and then up the stairs to find Nelson. Talk to him and get the next set of main story objectives. You are free to restock on healing items here. Your main objective is in Sunset Hills, but there are still several tasks left to do. Exit Annie's old fashioned triple X shop. Outside there should be a junk truck. You should get in this now. Drive it over the ramp and then turn right to head north and drive through the industry tunnel to get into Ingleton. Pass by the Chinese Opera House, there's no collectibles this time. Instead, drive straight into the shops and get out. Pass through the pedestrian only barrier. On the planter behind the table you'll find a bootleg Zombrex, this is 7 of 20. Now head immediately to your left and you'll find another biohazard pile past the next table. Burn this for 11 of 40. You're done in here so pass through Sunny Luck Fortune, blasting the area of zombies and exit to the street. Turn right and jump the barricade before heading left to the alleyway. At the end you'll find the next biohazard pile. Torch it, that's 12 of 40. Continue following the alley into the garage. You can make a detour here inside the garage to make a Hail Mary. This is a football and a grenade in case you forgot. Now head north to the main street now and dump the Hail Mary into crowds of zombies to work down the kills for the PP trial. Afterwards, you should head southwest and enter Big Buck Hardware. You should head behind the desk to find another bootleg Zombrex. This one's 8 of 20. You can exit Big Buck Hardware now. Continue northwest up the street until you pass the entrance to the car dealership. You'll want to turn right to get inside and then blast the two king zombies in the parking lot. Collect the first two Zombrex chips in Ingleton from their corpses. Time to continue northbound. This time head a little east and get to the alley behind the car dealership. Now head northbound and clear the zombies around the next biohazard pile. Torch this for 13 of 40, only 7 left in Ingleton. You should now turn to your left and head westbound to get back to the street. Turn northbound and then turn right to get into Big Bull's quality meats. Head to the back room and collect the next bootleg Zombrex from the counter. 9 of 20, almost halfway there. Exit Big Bull's quality meats the way you came in. Head directly across the street to Shavy's garage. The next biohazard pile is in front of it. Torch it and that's 14 of 40. The next two kings are also directly beside you now. Turn northbound and kill these two kings and any other zombies nearby and then you can collect Zombrex chips 3 and 4. There's one more collectible on this street and it's in the northwest corner. Sprint north and pass the survivor. Save him if you wish. The Hail Mary isn't a bad option if you have some left, but your main goal is to get behind the house to torch the next biohazard pile. This is 15 of 40, halfway done Ingleton. Next stop is eastbound. Get to the front of the house and get in the nearby muscle car. You'll want to drive this eastbound all the way to the motel. 
Once you're there, bail out and then head towards the highway. The next biohazard pile is in the courtyard and you can see it through the broken fence. Torch it and that's 16 of 40. The next set of kings are at the front of the motel, so drop down and work your way to the front. Blast the two kings and grab Zombrex chips 5 and 6. Your next goal is directly south of your current location. Sprint down the alleyway and head into the parking lot. Biohazard pile 17 of 40 burned. Now you'll want to head right into the movie theater. This is a simple pass through to the street, so head left downstairs and then exit to the street. The next bootleg Zombrex is in Roy's Mart. Bet that's a throwback to Dead Rising 2. Turn right and head into Roy's Mart. At the back behind the desk is bootleg Zombrex number 10. That's halfway done now. You can exit Roy's Mart. You can use your remaining Hail Marys if you have them to collect some kills. Preferably on dense zombie packs. Work your way southbound now. When you hit the barricade, instead of heading down, head to your left and turn down the alleyway towards the park. Enter the fenced off area here and blast the two kings inside. Make absolutely sure to collect Zombrex chips 7 and 8. Now you'll want to make your way directly east. You should be able to see the next biohazard pile. Run over to the cemetery, pass the hearse, and torch biohazard pile 18 of 40. Getting close to finishing Ingleton, and the remaining collectibles are basically on this street. It's just a quick trip northbound. Get back on the street and use the hearse if you'd like, but your target is the gas station. Blow up the gas station, and then torch the 19th biohazard pile before continuing northbound. Sprint north up the street and clear your way through any zombies. The next collectible is at the end of the street. Turn right at the intersection and blast the last two Ingleton Kings. Collect Zombrex chips 9 and 10 and you're done. There's only two more collectibles left. Continue eastbound and enter the cemetery. Take an immediate right and grab the next bootleg Zombrex from the ground by the corner of the crypt. That's 11 of 20. Now double back to get to the north street. You're going to head westbound now. The final Ingleton collectible is the biohazard pile on your left by the porta potty. Burn it and you're at 20 of 40, halfway done. Very good opportunity to save your game now that we're finished the Ingleton collectibles. Unfortunately, the north bridge to Sunset Hills is blocked off, so you're going to have to take the South Almuda route through Central City to get to Sunset Hills. That's alright, you should know the way by now. I'll go ahead and flash forward here to the entrance of Central City from South Almuda. We have to do another lap around Central City for collectibles. At least, the Zombrex chips are done for this district. The first collectible is outside the courthouse, immediately on your right. Burn the 21st biohazard pile as you pass by. Now continue southbound and then turn eastbound. But, quickly stop at the liquor store. You can pick up bootleg Zombrex 12 of 20 just out in the open here. Back on the street, you want to continue eastbound, but stay on the right side. This is quite a lengthy sprint, so make your way there. Once again, lots of opportunities to make split shots as you pass the police station. When you see the taxi on your right, head down the walking path to find the next biohazard pile. Burn it, and that's 22 of 40. Now head back to the nearby taxi. May as well drive straight ahead and get the last collectible on the south side. Drive like an absolute madman through the tennis courts, and then crash into the wall. You'll find the next biohazard pile here. Burn it, and that's 23 of 40. The next set of collectibles is by the Burgess Dawson Hotel. Head northwest and get to the hotel. You likely lost the taxi, but use it if you can. I burned a Hail Mary here at the tennis courts because I could. At the Burgess Dawson Hotel, take a quick left to enter Colombian Roast Masters. In the kitchen area, you can find the 13th bootleg Zombrex. It's sitting on the stove. Now you should leave Colombian Roast Masters and turn left to get into the nearby alleyway. Head up the ramp and find the next biohazard pile by the dumpster. Torch this, that's 24 of 40. Continue northwest. You'll need to climb up and then jump down to ground level. You can burn a final Hail Mary here if you have one. I'm halfway done the PP trial. The next bootleg Zombrex is on top of the white truck. Standard stuff. Climb onto the hood and then boost onto the roof. On top, pick up the 14th bootleg Zombrex. Directly west of your location is another biohazard pile. Drop down and head towards the police station. Burn biohazard pile 25 of 40 now. Halfway done Central City. The rest of this loop is a little messy and a bit annoying. Start by heading westbound. There's a lot of guns along the way so restock as necessary. When you see the semi-trailer, head to the hood. Standard practice here. Climb onto the wheel wells and then jump onto the hood. Now boost onto the roof and then to the roof of the trailer. There's a super combo blueprint up here, the tactical UAV. Make this now using the toy helicopter and the machete, followed by the assault rifle and then the grenade. This is a junk combo weapon so after you build it, forget it exists. 
Now head northbound and jump down to ground level. Head north and turn right to enter the pedestrian only shopping area. Clear any zombies in your way. You should head left into Z and E and work your way to the back rooms and then out to the alleyway. In the loading bay is Bootleg Zombrex 15 of 20. You should save your game here at the Porta Potty. Now turn right and continue eastbound. The next biohazard pile will be on your left. Burn biohazard pile 26 of 40, getting close to finishing Central City. Continue eastbound through the alley to reach the main street. You'll want to make a detour southbound and then turn east to the museum. The next biohazard pile is next to our friend, the T-Rex statue. Torch biohazard pile 27 of 40. It's a good idea to finish out the east side of Central City now. Run eastbound down the street until you can reach the Rancho Rama. You can save at the Porta Potty once again. Now turn northbound and work your way to the military checkpoint on the right side. The next biohazard pile is by the medical trailer. Burn it and there's only two more left in Central City. Run back out to the streets. Head northbound but take a quick right and enter Fair Moans. At the back of the store, head right and grab the next bootleg Zombrex. That's 16 of 20 and only four more to go. You should now head directly westbound. Follow the street all the way to the end, clearing zombies in your way. You will likely encounter soldiers here, but you can ignore them for now or take them out. I'm not your dad. Turn southbound once you can and burn the 29th biohazard pile in the green space. One more left in Central City. Head northbound now. You should clear zombies and hop the barricade. If you skipped the military earlier, it's time to deal with them now, so keep blasting with your split shots. On the right side, there will be a gated area. Head inside and burn the 30th biohazard pile in Central City. That's also the final collectible in Central City, so make sure to save your game. All that's left for collectibles are in Sunset Hills. We're gonna go ahead and just warp there. It's close, use a car, pick whatever you want. Immediately there will be a military blockade, and you should check your map to get your bearings on where the collectibles actually are. You'll want to start by heading westbound to the school. Get onto the main street and then rip over to the subway station. Clear all the zombies you can along the way and then torch the biohazard pile. I got credit when I was miles away, but make sure that you torch it. That's 31 of 40, 9 more to go. Time to work our way eastbound and finish the collectibles on the south side. We're going to be working it out, systematically. Head east, and once you see the set of stairs on your right, you'll want to head past them. There's another biohazard pile in the alcove. Torch it, and it's 32 down, 8 more to go. Take a quick pit stop into Rojo Diablo Mexican Restaurant for credit if you missed it earlier, and then double back to the staircase. There's a set of kings in the toy store on the second level. Work your way there now. Blast them and collect the first and second Zombrex chips for Sunset Hills. I guess it's technically 11 and 12. Exit the toy store and continue eastbound. You'll naturally hit a staircase, so head down it into a parking lot. Continue running eastbound along the street, and you'll want to head into Speedy Espresso. There's a bootleg Zombrex on the shelf. That's 17 of 20, only 3 left. You should also make another elemental staff in here. Always good to stock up whenever you can. Exit Speedy Espresso now and work your way northeast. Your goal is the hardware store parking lot, who would have guessed? Head behind the van and torch the 33rd biohazard pile. I swear, we were burning stuff here a little earlier. Anyways, head westbound now and cross the street. Head up the stairs, jump the gate, and head up the spiral staircase into the treehouse. Collect the 18th bootleg Zombrex. Man, I'm feeling some serious deja vu here. Drop out of the treehouse and then make your way back to the street. There are collectibles in the mansion, but it's best to head to the main objective marker now. Head northwest up the street. You should definitely take a save at the porta potty just before the landslide. You can fail this part. Now work your way up the landslide and then run up the stairs on your right. There will be soldiers here, so blast them with whatever you have stockpiled. You can opt to ignore them and run up the staircase to the garage area. You'll need to take out the spec ops taking out the server, which is just outside for some reason. Very carefully run up to him and blast him, making sure to avoid hitting the server yourself. Then head back south and clean up the remaining spec ops. It shouldn't be that difficult. You'll get the sourced achievement for finding the source of the signal. Main story, can't be missed, etc. When the area is clear, examine the server for more details and your next main objective. You're in the clear now. You'll want to save your game and then resume the collectible hunt. There's lots of guns here, so you're free to stock up. Now you should climb up the planters to the right of the server to work your way up to the mayor's mansion. Then hop the hole in the fence and head right to get to the front of the mansion. You can craft some split shots with stockpile guns at the dining area. There's lots of chairs here to turn into multi-barreled rifles. The next biohazard pile is in the abandoned pool. Head across the bridge and torch it. 34 of 40, only 6 more to go. It's time to finish our lap around Sunset Hills for collectibles. 
We're going to finish the north side and then kind of spiral into the center. Jump the fence and then head back down to street level. You can take shortcuts or use the stairs, it really does not matter. Once you're back on the streets, head northwest. You can save again at the porta potty if you wish. Now continue over to the landslide and head up the right side again. This time, turn to your left. There's a bootleg Zombrex here. That's 19 of 20, only one more. Now it's off to Joey's house. Climb up the wall in front of you and move forwards. You should turn to your right and burn the next biohazard pile. That's 35 of 40. Head to the front of Joey's house now and blast the two kings. They have Zombrex chips 3 and 4, so pick them up. You'll likely be bombarded with rockets, but continue westbound and head into the construction site. Same deal as usual. Kill the kings and collect the next two Zombrex chips. That's 5 and 6. Exit out of the construction site. The lap around Sunset Hills continues westbound. Work your way towards the highway, blasting everything in your way. Once you hit the barricade, you'll find another biohazard pile by the sushi restaurant. Torch this for 36 of 40, only 4 left. Now double back and hop the barricade. Quickly turn eastbound to get into the alleyway and then head northbound to get back to the street. I know, it's a little awkward. Turn right to head back towards Joey's house, but this time turn right again and follow the street. When you see the broken fence, turn right into the driveway. The next biohazard pile is here in front of the garage door. Torch it and that's 37 of 40, only 3 more to go. Get back onto the street and head eastbound once again. Head into the house on the right side of the street. Hop onto the truck and get onto the staircase and then climb up to the second level. Or just take the stairs from ground level. At the top, you'll want to blast your way into the house. There's two more kings inside, so sweep the room and clear it out. Then pick up the 7th and 8th Zombrex chips. Only one more set of kings. Set your marker for the musician's house now. You'll want to head west and jump the balcony to get to ground level. The bootleg Zombrex isn't actually in the musician's house, but it's actually in the planters at the side. Head down the stairs on the left and then drop onto the second terrace of planters. The last bootleg Zombrex will be sitting here just ripe for the taking. You'll get the bootleg operator achievement now. Continue southbound to get back to the street. You want to head westbound and head to the porta potty once again. Classic. This time there's a biohazard pile here. Burn this for 38 of 40. If it said 37 again, well that's a very unfortunate problem for you. I'll explain the solution at the end of Brad's DLC segment, so stay tuned. Save your game now regardless. Just a few more collectibles to pick up and then it's time to finish Brad's DLC. Head back down the street eastbound now. Turn south down the alley and then turn left again down the next alley. This is the final set of kings. Take them out and collect Zombrex chips 9 and 10. Or if your game glitched, curse yourself and reload your save. I got flustered so I didn't. Trust me, the second one should be here. After collecting the 40 Zombrex chips, you'll get the Bag of Chips achievement. I should have gotten it here, but you know, just dead rising three things. There's a couple of biohazard piles left, so head to the markers now. Start by heading westbound down the alley and then turn left once you hit the intersection. Head northbound and jump the barricade and torch the 39th biohazard pile. The final pile is in the tennis courts on your left. Enter the tennis courts and head to the southeast side. Torch everything in your path and then burn the last biohazard pile. You'll get the ashes to ashes achievement now. If you got the glitch and got stuck at 36 or 37, well there's nothing you can do about it right now, just continue the main game. Otherwise, that's all of the collectibles in The Last Agent finished, so it's time to continue with the main story. You can head eastbound to save at the porta potty now. This final segment of Brad's DLC is a bit of a final runaround. I'll be giving you the fast forward version once again. The secret lab is in South Elmuda at the train station. This is close to the illegal safe house. You'll want to head south and exit out of Sunset Hills. Grab a vehicle of your choice to speed this up. There's not much new to say or see at this point, so just work your way through Central City and then cross the bridge to South Elmuda. Then just head through the power plant and get to the train station. When you're there, you should use the door on the right side. You'll get a series of cutscenes here and you're free to watch, and a typical DLC costume change. Once that's finished, you'll get a new task, and that's to head to the taxi company in Ingleton. Use whatever vehicle you can get to head through South Elmuda. Then head around the construction site and through the fireworks factory. Then just head north through the industry tunnel to get to Ingleton, and then loop around to get to the Rancho-Rama. I took a quick detour here to go inside the Rancho-Rama and grab a blueprint. This also counted as finally finishing all four combo garages. Neat. Pick up the blueprint for the Jack in the Box. You can make this using a toy robot and a box. This is a useless combo weapon, but you'll need to build 50 of them, so make sure that you make one now. Afterwards, get in your vehicle of choice and head out to the cab company. It's locked. So head across the street into Dave's Awesome Cars. You'll want to head to the back and climb the air conditioner so you can boost onto the roof here. 
Take a quick left and sprint and jump to the adjacent roof. Quickly head to the end and snatch up Frank 63 of 70. Now double back to the previous roof. Now head to the sign and plant your now removed ZDC chip. This is actually kind of hilarious, but this is a beat for beat redo of the main story. It would be a little funny if it wasn't kind of sad. Jump down and blast the spec ops and enter the cab company. Your goal is to head to the upper level. Head left to get into the garage and then use the stairs at the back to get up to the second level. Exit out to the roof and then sprint and jump to the next roof. Head inside for a cutscene that you're free to watch or skip. You'll get the achievement, Kane's last words. You can head back inside to grab a hatchet and a hubcap and turn this into a boomerang. Then jump back down to ground level. Exit the cab company, your goal is just to head to the hospital now. Clear zombies using the boomerang for PP trial progress as you work your way out of Ingleton. I made some serious progress on my zombie kills trial. I basically hoofed it killing everything I could as I ran out of Ingleton. Hot tips again. Get your boomerang read through melee kills and then throw it to refresh it. Once again, this is nothing new, so I'll be fast forwarding. You should be able to finish the 300 kills required for the Boomerax PP trial with this single weapon with all of the buffs you got from levels in the books. I managed to complete the 300 kills about halfway through the industry tunnel to South Elmuda. Once you're finished, save your game to lock in your prestige hound progress. Then get a vehicle of your choice and drive it through South Elmuda. Rip through the fireworks factory and then back around the construction site. Snake around the bridge and then get back to Central City. Then head through the South Street and then north to the hospital. This is the final task for the last Agent DLC. It's to escort the remaining survivors out of Los Perdidos. In typical Dead Rising 3 fashion, this is a driving segment. Oh joy. Talk to Korra and get into the ZDC battle bus. Your first task is to head to the communications tower in Sunset Hills to pick up the illegals. Just do your best to avoid crashing into anything as you head to Sunset Hills. The weapons on the ZDC control truck aren't great, but you can opt to try to use them if you wish. Collecting zombie kills is a good idea, but the priority is to keep this truck alive. If it explodes, well, you're starting over. Pass through the barricades in Sunset Hills here. Turn to your right and make your way to the comm tower to pick up Rhonda, Gary, and Jeremy. Once everyone's picked up, your goal is to head to South Elmuda now to pick up Nelson. It's the long way around again, baby! Head back through Sunset Hills the way you came in. Now you should wrap around the highway and head back to Central City. As usual, because of barricades, this is a full wraparound of Central City. Head to your left and dodge the rockets until you can turn south. Now just drive all the way south, avoiding everything as you pass the hospital. Take a right and avoid the explosive barrels. Getting out and shooting them is a very good idea. Make sure your passengers get back into the battle bus and then work your way to the end of the street. Now turn to your right and take the next left to get back onto the south bridge. Follow this westbound all the way to South Elmuda, dodging all of the special forces and barricades that you can. Excellent level design, Capcom Vancouver. Once you're in South Elmuda, you're going to want to go the same way you've always driven. Head west and then turn south to get to the construction site. Turn westbound when you can again and drive all the way to the end. Next, turn northbound and pass through the fireworks factory one last time. Nelson will be standing on a custom barricade just after Rocket's red glare, so wait for him to get down into the ZDC control truck. Your goal is now the Dilly Diner. This is full circle if we were playing this in order. Your goal is now to head through Ingleton. Start by going through the industry tunnel, avoiding all of the spec ops and rockets that you can. Then you just need to head through Ingleton. Take the first right, dodging all of the spec ops once again. Then turn to your left and head northbound and follow the street all the way to the end. Dodge any explosive barrels in your way or get out and blast them. At the end of the street, you can turn left and drive all the way to the motel. Then you just have to take a right and head for the highway. This time, take a left and you'll be on the home stretch. Just stay on the left side of the highway and drive the ZDC control truck all the way to the Dilly Diner. Once you do, the DLC is over and you'll get the Agent of Justice achievement. Now if you got the glitch and did not get the Ashes to Ashes achievement, you should not do anything about it right now. It's a glitch that's tied to your save file. You should continue following this guide until you finish the remaining achievements. You'll need to come back to finish Ashes to Ashes. There is a supplemental video on the channel and you should use it when the time comes. But for right now, it's finally time to head into the main game and play as Nick through the main story of Dead Rising 3. Finally time to do the main story. You should fire it up, 
now. It's pretty hilarious being forced into a tutorial segment while we're bursting at the seams with PP, fully engorged at level 50. This is largely just A to B travel, so I'll go over the main stuff we'll be tackling in this playthrough. Obviously the main story and all unmissable achievements will be covered here. Next, we'll be doing our best to finish as many of the weapon kill PP trials as possible, since we'll be getting access to weapon lockers at the end of Chapter Zero. Then we have to complete the side quest for survivors and defeat all of the psychopaths. We'll also be finishing up all of the generic collectibles. This should mostly be the rest of the Frank statues and combo blueprints, but there are a few tragic endings left. Exclusive to playing as Nick is clothing. We'll need to collect a lot of outfits. Thankfully, by virtue of being in Apocalypse Edition, there will be quite a few outfits available already in the locker, which gives us some immediate progress. Nick also has some PP challenges called Survival Training, which we will need to complete through the main story. It won't require going too far out of the way for these, unlike in Dead Rising 2 off the record. We still need hundreds of thousands of zombie kills, so any kills you can accumulate in this playthrough are definitely positive. Back on topic, there's not much to say for the tutorial. I mean, you've been playing the game for like 10 hours at this point, so you should know what you're doing. Just pick up some random items you find to add them to the locker as you work your way to the Dilly Diner. At the Dilly Diner, you'll get a cutscene. You'll then be given the Sludge Saw Blueprint. You can make one inside the Dilly Diner using a sledgehammer and a cement saw. This is required for progress, so build one now. Afterwards, you'll get back full control of Nick. Take a quick detour to the kitchen now. You can grab a flashlight off the counter and then on one of the bench seats you can grab some gems. You'll want to combine the flashlight and gems into a laser sword. You should also stash a stack of plates. You can actually make two laser swords now if you have the generic electronic and generic throwing combined, which you should. Snatching up a knife or two is a good idea as well. Now you're free to continue out of the Dilly Diner. You're going to want to clear zombies here using your laser sword for the PP trial. Keep killing zombies with the laser sword as you work your way to the car. I quickly crafted a second laser sword right here. Run to the objective marker and then use the panel on the side of the highway to open up the barrier. Now pile into the car with Rhonda and Dick. Your goal is to drive this to the Rancho-Rama. Just head for the objective marker now, you should be very familiar with this place. On the way into Ingleton, you'll find a few stranded survivors. You should have finished the achievement for rescuing survivors as Brad in a 2 for 1, but you can go ahead and save survivors in this playthrough. There's usually some decent zombie density around them. Get out of your car and then collect some kills here with the laser sword. You're going to need a total of 200. Once you've rescued the survivor well, you may as well continue to the Rancho Rama on foot. Head southwest towards the next survivor, Jody. Use the laser sword to collect kills along the northern street in Ingleton. The laser sword is pretty lame as a weapon, but it does have a fairly wide sweeping attack that's decent. Continue to Jody and kill the zombies around her to rescue her. Continue westbound and then take a turn southwest. Continue using the laser sword and heading towards the Rancho Rama. Past West wanted to pick up lots of items and add them to the locker. That's fine, it's your choice if you wish to do this. It is kind of required for an achievement, but combo weapons do count, so you should get this finished regardless of what you do. Keep killing and eventually you'll get to the Rancho Rama, hopefully making lots of progress on your laser sword kills. When you get to the Rancho Rama, you should head inside and you'll get a series of cutscenes. Rhonda will then give you some time to explore. Sure, we can do that. Also, we're introduced to the most annoying character in the game, followed by an advertisement for Smart Glass. I bet you that's really gonna catch on. When you regain control, you can do a quick lap around the Rancho Rama to grab some items and clothing. Notable is the worker boots right beside Rhonda, as well as the welding mask that's right beside the worker boots. That's two more items for the locker. Since you're here, you're also going to want to make a jack-in-the-box using the cardboard box and toy robot. One more down out of 50 required. Big yikes. There's plenty of combo materials here. If you're desperate for weapons, make a couple of heavy metals here using the crowbars. You can also head up into the office and pick up some healing items and a pair of scissors. You can use these scissors to make a flaming sword with the motor oil down at the bottom, assuming you have generic sharp combine. Keep a weapon and then empty your inventory now. Then proceed to fill it with the motor oil here. We're going to make some PP building progress. Don't worry, this is on the way to the side quest, which you should get a call for now as you leave the Rancho-Rama. This side quest is directly north of you at the motel, another familiar location. You'll want to make your way up there now. Use your remaining laser sword to clear zombies while you head up the center street. There's a survivor in the Aduna boxing gym, so you can head inside and rescue Bob to collect more laser sword kills. 
You'll also want to pick up the water bottle and the water cooler to add them to the weapons locker. Yes, these are different, just like in Dead Rising 2. In one of the lockers is a knife. You should combine this now with a stockpiled motor oil for a flaming sword. You can dump this and then pick up the dumbbell and barbell before leaving a Duna boxing gym. Turn to your right and jump over the fence to find a sword. Pick this up and then head inside Shanks. Once you're inside, combine the sword with a motor oil to make a flaming sword. Your goal now is just to make as many flaming swords as you can inside of Shanks. There's more than enough blades to make a full inventory of swords. Just keep combining until your inventory is filled with flaming swords. When you're done, you should leave Shanks and head northbound to the side quest marker. This is marked with blue. You can dump most of your flaming swords now. We don't need kills, we only need to build them. Continue northbound and pass through the crashed helicopter. You can pick up several guns, knives, and grenades in here. Usually a good call. Now head north and turn to your right and pass through the hole in the wall to get to the motel. Now climb up the stairs at the back and wrap around up the staircase to find Anna. You can make a gun and grenade launcher from the helicopter to make a boom cannon while the dialogue with Anna runs. Next, combining a knife and a grenade to make a sticky bomb is also a good idea. You can hurl these at zombies as you talk to Anna. Not super efficient, but you know, it's better than nothing, and Anna talks for quite some time. Now you'll be tasked with running around and grabbing spray paint. This is deceptively important and well, we have nothing better to do. Start by returning to the street and then heading eastbound. You should take a quick detour into the barber shop. You'll want to grab the three clothing items here on the right. The afro followed by two mustaches. Major mustache and fireman mustache are on the right side. You can also make another flaming sword here using a blade and then a shampoo from the back of the barber shop. Assuming you have generic chemical combined, which you should. On the way out of the barber shop, grab the trucker mustache from the other side. Now you can exit the barber shop. You'll want to continue eastbound on the street now towards the porta potty. There's another chance for flaming sword combines here using the cooking oil and a generic blade. There should be two bowie knives and a katana nearby. Make some flaming swords and then save your game. Now turn south on the street and enter the first building on your right. Inside, clear the zombies and grab the first spray paint. Only two more to get. Exit out to the street after grabbing some nearby objects and then get in a nearby vehicle and head northbound before turning westbound. Drive this all the way to the end of the road and park beside the yellow muscle car. Get out and enter the house on the northwest corner. Head into the kitchen and kill the two police zombies in here. You can pick up the second spray paint. You can grab some more guns or make an ultimate mecha dragon in here, or just leave and continue south. The next spray paint is in Shavy's garage. This is very close by, so you can run there now. At Shavy's, you should clear zombies around Crystal to rescue her. That's mostly incidental at this point. The last spray paint is here on the workbench. Grab it. There's not really anything interesting in here now, so hop on the motorcycle and drive back towards the hotel. Drive eastbound and then bail out by the military truck. Now climb this in standard Capcom Vancouver fashion and then head back to Anna. Talk to her and she'll tag the illegal safe house. She will also eventually open the door and become a follower. This is a good chance to dump your inventory. Head into the safe house now. Start by grabbing the pole weapon blueprint. Make a pole weapon now using a nearby spear and hat rack. Once again, this is a shadow of its former self. What a shame. You should head to the survivor board now and remove Anna. Survivors can be strong, but it's really not worth the trouble at the moment. We'll need to bring a full posse for an achievement, but that'll be later. Work your way to the bedside table and collect the Lone Blade book. This increases the durability of melee weapons. This is a decent book, and with maxed out smarts category, it just gets added to your collection of active books. No reason not to pick it up. Finally, and most importantly, is the weapons locker. We will be getting a ton of use out of this as Nick. This has both materials for combo weapons as well as finished combo weapons themselves. There is a psychopath coming up in chapter 0, so I would recommend taking at least two ZARs or split shots. Either works fine. Next is going to be conditional on what PP trials you need to finish. Enter the menu and take a look at your PP trial progress. Defiler and Laser Swords were the first one to pop up as unfinished, and that's good enough for me. One of each of these from the locker, please? This is now free time, at least for a little bit. There's nothing to do until Rhonda finishes fixing the TV, and or we get a call about the Garden of Peace. Pick your weapons of choice and start cleaving through zombie hordes. There is a lot of zombie density near the helicopter, so get to work killing zombies. As soon as I started with the laser sword, I got a call for Garden of Peace. This is the first psychopath battle. It can wait for a minute though. I finished my laser sword kills almost immediately. 
That's done, and I'm never going to use one of those again. Next up is the Defiler. Spin to win once again. The Defiler kills did take quite a bit longer, but it actually goes by relatively quickly. It's nice that these zombies just stand there and take it. Unfortunately, the Defiler broke before I finished, but you know what? That's just life. Garden of Peace is a priority, but I opted to head westbound and then save at the nearby porta potty. Nearby is a PP challenge for killing zombies with your fists. I was getting a little ahead of myself here, considering we don't have the melee damage book yet. I managed to get a bronze as I worked my way southbound on the street. It's worth noting here, but you need to actually get a lot of kills using special moves. These are basically Y plus B plus a direction on the directional stick. We'll go over these in detail later, but it is important and you can get started now. I only managed to get silver without the book. Unfortunately, this is just like Dead Rising 2 off the record again. It's gold or bust. I managed to get to the south side of Ingleton though, which is nice. You'll want to work your way to the alley near the Rancho Rama. Climb up the van and grab materials around here. There are two guns, some healing items, a lawn chair, and the materials for an ultimate reaper. If you're so inclined, you can make all of them. Picking up at least a split shot is a good idea. Now it's time to head to the illegal safe house. It's required to find all of these as Nick once again, even though we've been to most of them already. Head south into the parking lot and climb the transformer to boost onto the roof. Open the door to the safe house and start blasting with your combo weapons because you need to clear the safe house of zombies. I started by using the handgun, but then I combined it with a bat in the safe house to make another split shot. You should also go ahead and grab the Stunt Devil book. This increases your bare fist damage. Definitely worthwhile for those PP challenges. Finally, you can head outside and grab a tragic ending on the roof. It's called a safe zone for a reason. Nice. Only a few more of these ones to go. Head back into the safe house and finish clearing out the zombies and the safe zone will now be available. This makes lockers available inside. You can head to the locker now for a potential restock, but it does take a little bit of time. I was able to get another defiler here. Next up, we're turning our attention to a psychopath battle, so make sure you have a few ZARs or split shots. You should be reasonably well stocked if you're following along. You will want at least one split shot right now. Now you're going to want to head back down into the parking lot. There's another PP challenge here. Head to the green marker and start the Kill Frenzy Survival Training. This requires you to get 75 kills in 60 seconds. Ha! <laughs> Sounds like a job for the split shot. Immediately clear the parking lot of zombies as soon as time starts. Then boost up to the transformer and climb onto the roof again. Simply cross the roof for now and drop back to the streets below. Head southbound towards Dana. Burst the zombies around her to rescue her and make some serious progress. You should be able to get a gold medal on this challenge easily with just one split shot. I absolutely crushed it. Just run into packs of zombies, burst fire and sprint again to the next pack. Once you have the 75 kills, you're done. Head towards the marker for Garden of Peace and then wait for time to run out. I opted to head into Happy Gold Mart to grab some healing items. I got my gold inside and then it's off to the Psychopath battle. Approach the door when you're ready. Watch the cutscenes if you want, or don't, I'm not your father. All Psychopath battles will go the same way in Dead Rising 3. Be level 50 and shoot them with guns. You can use the ZAR or Split Shot. G will teleport around, but he'll go down without much resistance. If you're opting for using split shots, just run up to his face and shoot him at point blank range. If you're using the Tsar, just shoot him from a distance. Welcome to our strategy for all fights, well, except for exactly one. Just heal if you get too damaged. When his health bar is done, you'll get a cutscene. Watch if you want to see what Capcom Vancouver's comedy entails. For me, this is in particularly bad taste. But back on topic, for defeating Xi, you'll get the Wrathful Achievement. Most importantly about Xi is that he'll drop the Happy Good Mart key. You'll also want to pick up the Guan Dao to add it to the weapons locker. Now you should turn around and head for the door. You can use the Happy Good Mart key to get into the back room. Inside you'll find a Frank statue, this is 64 of 70. You'll also find the materials to make an ultimate Mecha Dragon, so build one if you're so inclined. There isn't anything left for Chapter 0 in the prologue, so it's time to head back to Rounda. I took a couple of shots at Dana to save her because I missed her earlier, and then worked my way back to the Rancho Rama after looking through a few stores, mostly for fun. Oh yeah, you should head into Sunny Luck Fortune. Make yourself a dragon punch using the boxing gloves and the motorcycle engine. There's also some clothing here like the Kung Fu shoes, Kung Fu shirt, and Kung Fu pants. Why not, since we're rocking a bit of a Fu Manchu. Now head north up the street and enter La Fonda's Fine Threads on your right. There's some more clothing to put on here, including the Summer Dress, and the Daisy Dukes Top, and Daisy Dukes themselves. 
The woman's work shoes are also behind the register. That's all that there is in here, so head back to Rhonda now. Enter the Rancho Rama and talk to her to complete Chapter Zero. Chapter 1 is by far the shortest chapter. It's a short driving segment followed by a boss fight. You'll get a new blueprint here, the tactical handgun. We'll have to build one of these at, at some point. You should write that down. Write that down. You'll get the achievement starter for completing chapter 0 now as well. Watch the cutscenes, but once you gain control of Nick, you'll be given another combo vehicle blueprint. This is the turret rig. You'll be forced to make one now, so do so. Turn the nearby road roller and car into a turret rig. Hop inside now. The turret rig has another kill requirement PP trial, so get started. Not much to do in here, so it's time to get through chapter 1, so you'll want to head to the quarantine zone. Drive the turret rig to your left and make for the highway. Use the gun to collect as many kills as possible. The alternative attack has swinging blades that can kill zombies beside you, so make use of that as well. Once you get to the top side of the highway, you'll want to bank left. There's a green survival training marker. Park your turret rig right next to it. Get out, activate the challenge, and then immediately get back in your turret rig. You'll need 150 kills with vehicles for the gold. Keep driving forward and keep blasting zombies with the turret rig's turret. You should be able to easily finish this one as you make your way to the quarantine zone. About halfway up the bridge, there are three stranded survivors. You can stop and clear the zombies here for a rescue. This is decent density for kills as well. A rescue is a strong idea just in case you haven't finished the achievement yet. Regardless, keep heading to the quarantine zone. I opted to try and finish my turret rig kills here, or at least get as far as possible. I got to about 850-ish kills before I had to bail out due to the barricade. Don't worry, there's plenty of time to finish. You should absolutely take the save at the porta potty on your right, but it's not really an issue if you don't. Head eastbound to the quarantine zone now. By the explosive barrels is a flare gun and a lead pipe. Combine this into a split shot. There's also a machete and shotgun nearby for a saber shot. Both of these are worth building for this psychopath battle. Now follow Rhonda and enter the quarantine zone for a boss fight. Watch the cutscenes if you wish, and then you'll be attacked by lots of bikers. This first bit is just defeating 10 of the bikers. You should be able to take them out in a single burst with your split shot. Take out the first set in front of you and then turn around. More bikers will spawn in and just charge you. This is castle doctrine. Stand your ground and blast them all as they come at you in a self-defense situation. They should all die extremely quickly and then you'll get a cutscene. And don't worry, no one's gonna press charges. Time for SRG, super racist guy. We had a brief play session as him, if you recall. Strategy has not, and you know what? It's not going to change. Your goal is to shoot SRG with the ZAR or a split shot. Saber shot works in a pinch as well. You should actually make use of the tactical dodge roll here. The game will tell you how to do it. This actually works pretty well. SRG is weak to fire, and the ZAR does have some initial flame shots in the first half of the magazine. This will stun Hunter, and you can continue to unload into him for more damage. Just try and dodge the charging attacks and unload shots into him when he spins around. This is another fairly free fight at level 50, like most of the psychopaths in the game. And you know what? That's chapter 1 all wrapped up. You'll get some cutscenes and then the very valuable Roller Hog combo blueprint. Finally, you'll be off to chapter 2. You can save your game. You'll get the quarantined achievement for finishing chapter 1. Nick will also get bitten in a cutscene, uh oh. Hey, remember Zombrex? Let's go find some, just like in Dead Rising 2 K0, Dead Rising 2, and Dead Rising 2 off the record. You'll want to start this chapter by making a roller hog right in front of you. This is required, and it's a strong combo vehicle. Combine the road roller and motorcycle together into a roller hog. Then obviously, get on. Now you're truly the hog hunter. 
I got the driven achievement here for getting 20 vehicles into the vehicle lot. Nice. The main objective is in Ingleton, but we have some side quests to complete. Drive your roller hog to the right to get into Sunset Hills. You'll get a call for a Craven Consultant. You should clear the zombies around Allison as you enter Sunset Hills. This is an easy clear with the roller hog. Now, Craven Consultant is going to require a chainsaw, and the closest one is in Big Bucks Hardware. This is on the east side of Sunset Hills. I had some bad luck here and I lost my roller hog. So I had to hoof it on foot, and then I got a fresh roller hog at the Rancho Rama. You'll want to drive this backwards a ways to get to the parking lot. This parking lot has a survival training. This requires 150 kills with combo vehicles. This is best done on the way back to Ingleton, but you can make an attempt at it now, but it will probably end in failure. Hop onto your roller hog and make your way towards Big Buck Hardware. I got another call for In the Cards here, as well as Darker Gods. We'll do both when we get to Ingleton for the main story. Regardless of where you ended up, double back to Big Buck Hardware and head inside. You'll want to make sure that you pick up a chainsaw from the back. This has to be exactly a chainsaw. Once you have one, exit Big Buck Hardware and make your way to the South Street. There's some clothing items you can collect here. Climb onto the crashed SUV and boost onto the awning. And then jump onto the balcony. You can grab the bullhead and shark head here. Two more clothing for the locker. You should head into the Rancho Rama and build another roller hog now. Drive this westbound and park it near the survival training in the parking lot. We'll come back for this after we're done the side quest. Your goal now is to get to the Bite the Bull restaurant. Head towards the blue side objective marker westbound. You'll want to turn right when you see the staircase and jump over the wall to get to the other side. Now you can climb the stairs and enter the store on your left. Ravi is in the walk-in cooler, but ignore it for now and instead head upstairs. You'll need a meat cleaver. There's one right by the microwave on your left. You should also finish the PP trial for entering every restaurant now. That's one less task to worry about. Head back downstairs now and enter the walk-in cooler by the door. Talk to Ravi and he'll ask for a chainsaw and a machete to make a new combo weapon. Give them both to him and he'll make a pair of mini chainsaws. He'll immediately give them to you because he's worried about hurting himself. Sounds like a skill issue to me. You'll get the blueprint for mini chainsaws now, but you'll have to make the combo weapon yourself at some point. Keep it in mind. Ravi will become a follower now. It's time to head back to your roller hog. Head back outside and then jump over the wall. You should ignore Ravi. If you get far enough away, he'll go back to the safe house. Work your way back to the parking lot and start the survival training. Then quickly get back onto your roller hog. Your goal now is just to get into Ingleton. You should try and collect as many kills as possible. This may look a little dicey, but you should be able to finish the kills as soon as you get onto the highway. One more gold on the challenge is down, and well, if you didn't finish, well, just keep it in mind and come back to it later. Now it's just a matter of driving back into Ingleton. Drive on the highway and then take the down ramp to get back. I made a quick detour here to the illegal safe house. This was mostly to change my clothes, drop off Ravi, and then collect some combo weapons. You can head there now if you wish. The southern safe house is a lot easier and faster to get to. Once inside, I also grabbed an elemental staff from the locker. You'll want one too. Next was a double check of PP trials to see what weapons we needed, and to drop off Ravi. I needed a defiler, so you can pick up one if you're not done with your kills for it either. Now get out of the illegal safe house and make your way southeast to the Chinese Opera House. Make sure to swap your elemental staff to fire, and do not kill anything on the way there. You can grab a vehicle if you want and park it outside to make this a little safer. Inside the Chinese Opera House is the survival training Burn Baby Burn. Activate it and head northbound to find zombies. You need to get 40 kills with a fire weapon, and the Electro Fire Staff is the easy choice. Work your way up the east side, blasting zombies with flames. You should finish very easily. I got to almost 300 kills. That's one more survival training down. The next side quest is above the gun store, so continue northbound now. Turn left past the gas station, and then head into the gun store. There's lots of clothing as well as guns in here so you can make some combo weapons. Start by putting on the tactical vest on the rack. Next, head to the left side and put on the tactical boots. Now jump behind the counter to find the tactical helmet. You can put this on as well. You can collect a few guns for the road and then exit the gun store. You'll want to turn right twice and head forward to find the back alley. Take the right alley and turn inside. Enter the alley on your right and get inside. Now jump onto the dumpster and use it to boost yourself onto the roof of the gun store. You should then move forward and talk to Simon for your next side quest. Simon's lost his tarot cards, so you'll need to do a lap around Ingleton to find them. 
Seems like we're always just doing laps around the various areas, doesn't it? I'm going to start by going northbound. You'll want at least one split shot for this. You can grab a gun near the AC unit on the roof, and there's a crowbar on the way north, so craft a split shot there if you don't have one. Next, work your way north through this alley. Climb up the ramshackle scaffolding and get onto the roof. There's another survival training up here. This is 100 zombie kills using firearms. Alright, sounds like a job for the split shot. Activate the training and drop down to ground level. I was cheeky and entered the barber shop to get the death card first. It's at the back by the corpse in the chair. Now quickly double back outside and head westbound towards the crashed helicopter. If you see any zombies, shoot them. The zombie density by the helicopter is so high that when you get close, a few bursts will get you a gold medal. Once you have your gold medal locked down, turn left and head southbound. You should enter Aduna Boxing Gym on the right, and then jump into the ring to find the next tarot card. This is the strength card. We're doing well with survival training, so why not press our luck? Exit Aduna Boxing Gym out the back way. Pass through the back alley and take the staircase up and around to get to the picnic area outside Shavy's garage. You should activate the survival training here. This is for bare fist kills, so unequip your weapons and start punching everything. You'll want to move to zombie density via sprints and continue collecting kills. You should then attempt the wild swing special moves in crowds of zombies. This is a good way to win these barehanded challenges moving forward. I managed a gold medal, but these barehanded challenges specifically are actually the hardest ones in the game. You can always try again if you fail or take note of it and come back later. One more gold for old Wesley. The next tarot card is on this street. Head southbound towards the car dealership Dave's Awesome Cars. On the way, I stopped outside and smacked some zombies around to finish the Defiler Kills PP trial. That's one last task to worry about. I also got the almost famous achievement here for 25 PP trials complete. This is a simple stepping stone to Prestige Hound, nothing more. This one doesn't actually matter that much. The Chariot card is sitting in front of the muscle car in the car dealership. Head inside, snatch it up, and then double back out to the street. The next tarot card is at the travel agency southeast of the Rancho Rama. Work your way there now, trying to collect kills with combo weapons or grab a car if you prefer. You can head down the street and make yourself a roller hog. This is a good option. Drive this past the Rancho Rama and jump over the ramp. Then stop by the fire truck, hop off, and grab the world card from the table. Now get back on the roller hog and drive back along the street. The final tarot card is at the playground. Head eastbound and wrap around the street northbound. Head down the alleyway, disembark your roller hog, and then head into the playground. Climb the jungle gym to find the tower card. That's the fifth and final card and it's time to return to Simon. Drop down and then jump over the fence. Head up the alley on your left and get back to the gun store. Head into the alley on the left and then loop around and boost up to the roof to find Simon. Talk to him and he'll eventually join up with you as a follower. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and drop off Simon before doing the next part. Make a break for the safe house in Ingleton on the north side at the motel. Head northbound now. You can climb up the roof for another shot at survival training if you want, but you should be done with it already. Now jump down and turn westbound to get to the motel. Climb up the military truck or use the stairs at the back and then head into the illegal safe house. Head to the follower board and ditch Simon. Now you should head to the weapons locker. You want to pick up some weapons you need to progress with. I opted to grab two Hail Marys, a zombie raker, and a new split shot. I noticed a stranded survivor on the map, so I headed northbound quickly towards the highway. I chucked a couple of Hail Marys at Sheldon, and then headed back south. I did my best to get Hail Mary kills here, but I thought this was likely to be an ongoing project. Thankfully, the density was high enough that I managed to finish my 300 kills here. If you don't, once again, just keep note of it. I dumped my other Hail Marys and then headed eastbound towards the main objective marker. On the way, I used the zombie raker since that's next up. Don't bother fighting the firemen zombies, you should just run past them, they're way too hard to kill. Then head into the alley we passed through with Simon, and head into the Los Perdidos utility doors to enter the sewer. This is your first time in here, and you'll find a Frank immediately on your right as you enter. Snatch him up. Feeling really close here with five left to go. Alright, time to head into the sewers now. This is a linear path, so just head through and you'll eventually find some zombies. Work your way past the horde on the ground and head up the ramp. Use the zombie raker liberally to clear zombies in your way to work down kills. I managed about 100 here. Now head top side. There are two blueprints in the mausoleum. First is the Metal Mary. This is made with a bowie knife and a football. This is required to get kills with, so make one and keep it in your inventory. Next is the Electric Crusher. 
This is made with a sledgehammer and car battery. Make one now, but it's not required for anything, so ditch it. Now you can exit the mausoleum and head into the cemetery by demolishing the door with a dragon kick. Kia! Your final chapter one side quest is right in front of you. Climb up the crypt and talk to Christine. She'll give you a task to kill zombies on some evil sigils or something. Doesn't really matter. Once she's finished gabbing, drop to ground level. Immediately on your left, wait for a zombie to walk onto the sigil and then kill it. One down. Work your way up the left side of the cemetery now. You should throw your metal marys here to try and collect kills for the PP trial. I know I'm really sounding like a broken record, but you know what? I didn't design these achievements. <laughs> <laughs> Continue sprinting south until you find the next sigil. Wait for a zombie to walk on it and then, of course, kill it. Now head westbound a short distance for the third sigil. Same deal here. Kill a zombie when it gets on the sigil and then turn northbound. Sigil 4 and wait for a zombie to get on it and then, you know what, take him out. The final sigil is directly north, so make your way there and repeat this for one final time. Now you should head back to Christine. This can go one of two ways, so as soon as Christine starts talking, just whack her a few times with whatever you have in your hands, and she'll come to her senses and join you as a follower. If you don't smack her during this part, she'll die. Christine's a follower now, and I got the Help Wanted achievement for having five survivors available at the bulletin board. Hang on, let's count a second. Anna, Ravi, Simon, and Christine is four. But you know those Vancouver boys can't do math. We'll be getting all the survivors this playthrough regardless, so this is a moot point, but I'll take achievements when I can get them. Now set your marker for the survival training and activate it. This is freestyle, just kill as many zombies as you can. Sounds like a split shot task to me, boys. Jump down and start blasting everything in sight. 75 kills is a paltry task for the mighty split shot. You should do a quick wraparound blasting everything. You'll also need to destroy gravestones for a PP trial, so getting extra kills is a solid choice. I spent a little extra time blasting everything around here, and then headed south to the gate for the main story. Oh yeah, of course we got a gold medal. At the gate, you'll get some cutscenes with best boy Gary here. Watch if you wish. Queens will become available now, not that they're particularly useful in Dead Rising 3. Your main task here is to drive the blue van under the awning by the door. Now you should park, get out, and climb onto the van to boost onto the roof. Capcom Vancouver's favorite trick. Now just climb onto the roof one more time. You can grab a gun and then drop down into the office and combine the gun with a chair to make a split shot and it's a good choice. There's also some clothing items in here. Pick up the women's cashmere sweater to add it to the locker. Now head to your right and open the door for Gary. Gary will take a minute so make sure to grab the fedora on the couch. My lady. Gary will open the door and oh look it's Otis's funeral. Remember Otis? From critically acclaimed game Dead Rising? Blast the zombies and head downstairs. Feel free to grab some items, but head for the main objective marker for a cutscene. You'll be tasked with inspecting the corpse lockers now. Fun fact, if you inspect the right one, Gary will make a quip about his mother-in-law being in one, which is Rhonda's mom. Kind of morbid. You'll find Nicole White's corpse eventually. This will trigger you heading into the back room to find a key. There is always a jump scare zombie here, so try and kill it if you want, and then go retrieve the key from the sink. Back into the main room, you should grab the Iron Edge blueprint. This needs a meat cleaver and a machete. You should make one now, and you know what? Dump it. It's not used for anything. Now head back to the lockers and open it to find... nothing. Now leave and make your way to the yellow objective marker. Gary will have to kick the door in. Then you can head inside and turn right to find the IED blueprint. The combo is gasoline canister and propane tank. Craft one now, and then head over to Gary. This will not be the last IED we craft. Oh boy. You'll get another series of tasteless cutscenes and some amazing reveals about Nick. Wow. Afterwards, you'll be in the hearse. You should have picked up the collectibles in the garage during the DLC, so you're free to just drive to the strip club now. If you miss them, well, go in and grab them, you silly goose. Otherwise, drive northbound and crash through the flaming barrels. Then turn westbound and work your way to the end of the street. If your car happens to blow up, you'll just have to carry a casket by hand. At the end of the street, turn left and then head into the strip club. You'll get a cutscene and then chapter 2 will be over. You'll get the Morgified achievement. You'll also get the Junk Car Blueprint, and you should save your game. You'll start inside the strip club and this is a new location. Time to grab some collectibles. Turn around and jump over the counter to grab the junk truck blueprint. We need to craft one of every combo vehicle. I feel like I haven't mentioned that yet. 
Now you should head back into the main, uh, entertainment zone. You'll want to pick up the blueprint for the fire arrows. Make fire arrows now using the nearby crossbow and motor oil. You may have to make room in your inventory like I did. On the stage, you can find the dark aviator glasses. You should grab these to add them to the locker. Continue up the stage and by the curtain and the neon lady, you can grab the go-go boots. Grab these for the locker too. Head into the back room now. You'll get a call about a side quest. It'll be done shortly. Put on the female business outfit skirt and the police outfit shirt to add them to the locker now. That should be everything new in the strip club, so exit out to the street. The first side quest is on the north side of Ingleton. We're close by, so you know what? No time like the present. You'll need to dump most of your weapons here. We need to load up on guns as well as food. Combo weapon guns do count, so you can hang on to those if you want. Head around to the back alley and get in the blue van. You'll want to head southbound. We're going to the south side of Ingleton for food and guns. On the way, you'll encounter stranded survivor Mila. Feel free to stop and rescue her. This is a minor detour with the split shot. Mila's holed up in the hardware store and you can do some combines in here. You can grab a leaf rake and combine it with a saw blade or other edged weapon to make a zombie raker. I'm not currently done zombie rakers yet, so I made a couple and used them to collect kills on the way to the gun store. Exit back out to the street and you'll likely get a call about Kenny in South Almuda. That's on the way, we'll hit it up later. Clear zombies using your newfound zombie raker as you head eastbound towards the hamburger fiefdom in Ingleton. This took a bit of time, but I managed to get really close to finishing my zombie raker kills. Head inside hamburger fiefdom and stockpile on a full inventory of food. You need at least five food items before heading out. Fill up on everything in here and dump any extraneous weapons to make that happen. I opted to hang on to one of the two zombie rakers I had to try to finish on the way. When your inventory is filled with food, it's time to head to the side objective. Exit Hamburger Fiefdom and get some kills with the Zombie Raker on the way to the houses at the north side of Ingleton. I managed to finish my kills here, so afterwards it's just a matter of ignoring zombies and heading to the side quest marker. You'll want to start the side quest by talking to Matt. The dialogue will keep running, but once you're done you'll have to talk to Matt's neighbor, Elka. Eventually you'll decipher that Elka wants guns and Matt wants food after a series of lengthy back and forth conversations. You came prepared with food, so head to Matt's side first. Dump five food items in Matt's crate next to the couch and you'll be done half the side quest. The next half is going to require heading to the gun store or the weapons locker nearby. Since it's closer than the gun store, make a beeline for the weapons locker. You should have a full stockpile of weapons, so grab five guns of your choice. Five miniguns for an old lady sounds extremely appropriate. If you're out of weapon locker supply, you'll have to head to the gun store in Ingleton. You've been there before, it's right next to the movie theater. Otherwise, grab your guns and head back to Elka. Dump the five guns into her wooden crate, and you'll finish the side quest. After some extremely lengthy and insufferable dialogue. No rewards for this side mission other than PP and side mission progress. Oh well. Head back to the illegal safe house now. You can pick up a new set of weapons here. I needed progress with Metal Marys, so I opted to pull some out of the locker. I also opted to change back to default Nick before leaving and jumping back to ground level. The next objective is to head to the plane and do time for a hero along the way. Head to the helicopter in the middle of the street and start whipping Metal Marys into the crowd. You can get multiple kills with one Metal Mary, but this will likely take a few more restocks from the locker, unfortunately. Once you're out of stockpiled Metal Marys, head southbound and pass through the alleyway. You can then take a detour through the movie theater. As you enter, you should head into the coat check and grab some clothing. You can grab the red cardigan, followed by the leather jacket to add them to the locker. Now you should exit and head out to the streets, leaving the theater. You should now head to the Rancho Rama. This is just a short distance away. Head to the corner and make a jack-in-the-box. This is toy robot and cardboard box. One more down. Now head to the vehicle lot and pick up a combo vehicle you need to get kill progress on. I opted for the turret rig. Head left and work your way to the highway. This has better zombie density compared to the industry tunnel. I managed to finish my zombie kills on the on-ramp, but keep collecting kills no matter what. The more you get now, the less time you're going to spend grinding kills at the end of the guide. Take the off-ramp down into South Almuda now. You can drive to the buses and then ditch the turret rig. You should head up to the roof with the ultimate shout now. There's survival training here requiring kills with combo weapons. Make an ultimate shout now. Just a reminder, this is a pylon and speaker followed by radio and car battery. Once you're equipped, you can start the survival training. Immediately start blasting everything in the vicinity with the ultimate shout. You should work your way towards the power plant as you do this. 
Whenever you kill zombies and clear an area, swap to something else and sprint. You can't sprint with the ultimate shout equipped, for some reason. I managed to finish fairly easily as I got into the power plant. If you didn't get a gold, well, just come back and make sure that you finish this later. With a gold medal, you'll want to double back towards the safe house. You should enter 2 for 20 to find more clothing items. Put on the large women's sunglasses and the sporty glasses on the right side. You can grab a couple of weapons in here if you wish to add them to the locker, but that's all that we're gonna do. Exit 2 for 20 and get back to the street. Now head left to get into the fire station. Climb to the second level and make an elemental staff in here. There's also some clothing items to grab. Grab the fireman's helmet to add it to the locker. When that's done, use the pole to get back to ground level. Check the nearby lockers to find the firefighter jacket, and next to them is the firefighter boots. The pants are on your right on the workbench, and you should absolutely make sure to grab them as well. Don't pass by them like I did. Anyways, with all of the firefighter gear added to the locker, exit the fire station now. You should head left towards the illegal safe house. You actually haven't cleared this yet, so hop in and get to work. The ultimate shout should make short work of anything in here. One more active safe house. You can use the clothing locker to change back to default Nick or whatever outfit you prefer. Otherwise, leave and head outside. Your goal is the construction yard now and there's some stuff to do along the way. Enter big man's clothing on the left side of the street. On the left side of the store, you can pick up the polo shirt to add it to the locker. The back room has some worker boots, but these are a duplicate. Better safe than sorry though. Do a lap of the store and put on all the clothes in here. There is another pair of pants that I passed over. Don't be like me, be better than me. When you're done, exit big man's clothing. Now head to your left and run westbound down the street. There won't be a lot to do or see, so just keep moving westbound and then jump the barricade. Afterwards, you should enter fiefdom meat suppliers on your right. You absolutely want to put on the fiefdom knight costume. This is a full outfit, lucky for us. I used materials in here to make a beer helmet. This was a toy robot mask and a planter. The wonders of generic combines. You can do a quick lap of the area if you wish, but there's nothing else to see here. Exit back out to the street. You should clear zombies as you work your way to the construction site, but stop off at the strip club. Do a quick lap around the lower level before heading to the second floor. Make a beeline for that snazzy fur coat by the private booth. Put it on and add it to the locker. By the stairs you can make another beer helmet and it's a good idea to do so for a multi-use healing item. That's all there is to do in here for now, so double back to ground level and exit back out to the street. Head back north and then turn westbound. Make your way along the street and you'll get a notification for Brian needing a rescue. Make your way to the barricade and blast the zombies with the ultimate shout to rescue him. Easy peasy. The current objective is to get the next safe house unlocked. We've been here several times, so go ahead and double back all the way to Elmuda Farms. Now it's just a matter of passing through to get to the alleyway. In the alleyway, climb the white box truck and then get onto the roof. If you need a weapon, make a new elemental staff on the roof, then you can follow the balcony to the illegal safe house. This is the same as before. Clear the safe house using whatever combo weapons you may have. The ultimate shout works great, but an elemental staff will work fine too. Once the area is clear, you'll want to pick up the Eater's World book. This wasn't available when we were here as Angel. That's the final book for the library. This increases the healing from food. Definitely worthwhile, but you know what? Kind of stopped needing healing items a while ago. You can head to the weapons locker now and grab some combo weapons or change your outfit. Grabbing a split shot will save you a trip, so go ahead and get one now. I'm just gonna head north to the Lost Perdidos bus depot for more survival training. Don't kill anything along the way. Rats. This is unarmed kills. Oh well, here we go. Start the challenge and then start throwing hands as you work your way towards the western street. Avoid the stronger firefighter zombies and focus on the easier zombies. If you ever lose zombie density, start sprinting to an area with more. There's loads of zombies on the western street. This was a little dicier than I'd like, but that's an easy-ish gold medal. One more survival training down. Hot tips, use the giant swing. It's finally time to tackle Kenny's side quest. Make your way south on the street now to Rocket's Red Glare. Make sure you have an elemental staff here, and make sure that it's set to fire. You can save if you wish. The survival training in Rocket's Red Glare is for kills with fire weapons. Head southbound and blast zombies as you move towards your side objective of the construction site. If you have an elemental staff, this challenge is free as you pass by the military blockade. Continue working your way to the construction site. Gold should have come and gone by the time you pass the Rancho Rama. Now head to the construction site and climb onto the portable office to find Kenny. Kenny's a big whiner, but keep talking to him and eventually he'll tell you to get some unarmed kills. Not a problem. Jump back down to ground level and start punching. You can spam Y plus B to do the basic skill move, but a single giant swing should be sufficient. Check out how to do it in the menu if you're not sure on your platform of choice. Once you've got your 5 kills, head back to Kenny. 
Talk to him and he'll want you to build a combo weapon in front of him. Grab the nearby lead pipe and 2x4 to make a heavy metal near Kenny. That will finish this side quest. We'll meet up with Kenny again later on. Once Time for a Hero is complete, you should head for the next survival training in the construction yard to see what it is. Uh, combo vehicles, alright, maybe later. Make your way northbound now to the next survival training. This one is near the bash train on the roof. You'll want to drive a car and park it next to the garbage truck. Then jump on top and boost onto the garbage truck. Now jump across to the train, and then run and jump to the next train car. Finally, use the second train car to get onto the roof. We've been here before, and you can make an ultimate shout here. This survival training is firearms, and well, I don't have any. Whoops, well you know what? The illegal safe house isn't that far. I told you to grab a split shot, didn't I? Anyways, I'm gonna head northbound and get back to the illegal safe house now. Standard pass through Almuda Farms, climb the truck, and loop around to get into the safe house. This time, grab a couple of split shots. Now it's time to double back to the roof. Thankfully, you can just jump off the roof and land right next to the strip club. Then it's just a matter of climbing up and jumping out the window. Then a simple crossing of a board will get you back here. Start the survival training and jump down to ground level. Start blasting as you head south. Gold achieved in under 15 seconds. Easy peasy. Now it's time to head to the plane hangar. Keep blasting as you work your way southwest. Pass the Rancho Rama and work your way to the Port of Los Perdidos. Make sure you wait for the survival training timer to finish before heading in. It's been a minute since you've saved, so take a save at the porta potty and then head into the plane hangar. You'll get several cutscenes in here. There are several collectibles in this hangar since this is actually our first time inside. Head to the west side of the hangar and climb onto some boxes. You should find a tragic ending now. You need to think outside the box to survive. Classic. Work your way to the exit of the hangar now. There's materials for an elemental staff on your left, and you can make one if you wish. Next, you should head for the blueprint on the workbench. This is dynamite, requiring a hunk of meat and dynamite. Make one now. You need dynamite kills, so hang on to this. Right beside the dynamite blueprint is the whole tennis ensemble. Definitely worth putting this on to add it to the locker. Next, grab the 66th Frank statue from the other workbench. Four more of those to go. Last but not least are these skater shoes. These are right next to Frank. Put them on to add them to the locker. On the way out, you should pick up the black-rimmed glasses from the bookshelf by the door. One more clothing item. The leather jacket is a duplicate, but hey, it's pretty stylish. As you exit the hangar, you'll get a call about a stranded RV. It's kind of on the way. Head northwest out of the port, and start plugging groups of zombies with dynamites. Density is important, so be conservative with your usage. Plug a group and wait for it to blow up. You need to get sets of 5 kills here, which shouldn't be a problem. Now, you should head eastbound towards the Rancho Rama. Keep sprinting and plugging any groups of at least 5 zombies you see with dynamites. Continue doing this until you're out of dynamites. You should make some reasonable progress on the PP trial. Now head inside the Rancho Rama and grab a combo vehicle of your choice. Anything will work here, but the turret rig and roller hog are your best options. We need to finish that one survival training we passed earlier. I was done my turret rig kills, so I opted for the roller hog. Drive this eastbound and turn north and then stop. Try not to flip it like I did, otherwise you'll be driving back and grabbing a second roller hog, or making a junk truck using a van and a sedan, then doubling back. In fact, you should make a junk truck now, it's required. You'll likely get a call about Joey during this time. It's about time we finally met Joey. Park your combo vehicle of choice and run over to the survival training marker. Clear some zombies and then activate Chop Shop and return to your combo vehicle. Drive this north, and then turn eastbound to head to the highway to Central City. There's a stranded survivor on the way. Try and save her, if not, well, sucks for her. Continue driving along the south bridge, and you should be able to fairly painlessly make the required kills as you enter Central City. This is a lot easier with a turret rig, so keep that in mind. If you failed, well, you'll have to come back to do this later. Drive straight into Central City, and then just crash your car into the barricade. Get out of your vehicle, and then head right to the police station. There's another survival training here, surprising. This is firearm kills. Climb onto the pillar and activate it and then start blasting. Clear the immediate area and then head left and hop over the truck. Head southbound and blast the immediate area of zombies and you should get your gold medal. Now you should double back to the street and continue eastbound. Clear zombies around here if you want, but be careful not to break any of the cars. You'll want to grab the orange sports car and crash it into the pole under the awnings on the north side. Then you'll want to grab the yellow sports car nearby, drive it to the orange sports car, and combine them together into a junk car. 
You'll want to drive the junk car to the entrance of Felicia, and then in the classic Capcom Vancouver fashion, climb onto the roof to boost yourself onto the awning. Now you just have to jump across the awnings westbound to get to a small balcony area. Inside a windowsill, you'll find Frank 67, final stretch for Franks. Don't jump off yet, instead continue westbound and find another super combo blueprint. This is the huge bomb. You'll need to make a big bomb with the propane tank and rocket launcher. Then add the grenade to make a bigger bomb, followed by a gasoline canister to make a huge bomb. Kind of a pain since you likely drop the propane tank to ground level by picking up the blueprint. Oh well. Craft this now and then dump it. You don't need the microwave just yet. If you don't build this now, don't worry, we'll be doing it in the final section of the guide. Set it down, and it's time to get to the illegal safe houses in Central City since we're here. The first is directly south of your current location, so head around to the police station and find that Bikini Babe once again. Climb the stairs and then head into the safe house on your left. This is a simple blast with a split shot. If you missed the knife gloves earlier like I did, there's some boxing gloves and a knife nearby. <laughs> Never punished. You can pick up some new combo weapons from the locker here. I opted for some metal marys and a fresh split shot of course. You need to make absolutely sure you have an elemental staff at this point though. We'll be hitting up another survival training on the way. A basic electric staff is just fine. Feel free to reset your clothing as well. Now leave the safe house and jump down to ground level on the south side. Avoid zombies for now and make your way to the survival training. Buzz kill is 75 kills in 60 seconds using only electric weapons. Easy peasy, electric staff is a go. Start the training and head north to get to the street. Start unloading all over groups of zombies. In the middle of my PP trial it turned to 7pm. Halfway through chapter 3. Time literally crawls in this game. This of course reset my survival training so I had to go back and start over. Dude, nice. Starting again and head north to get to the street. Start unloading all over groups of zombies. Work your way eastbound towards the tennis courts. You should be able to finish as soon as you get inside the tennis courts. The zombie density in here is insane. I just kept blasting until my staff broke. This was on the way to the hospital, which conveniently has another survival training. As soon as I got there, the trial ended. Go ahead and make a shock dozer now and drive it out to the street side of the hospital. I would recommend you instead head north to the Rancherama and get yourself a turret rig or roller hog before attempting this, but you know what? You do you. Try not to kill too many zombies on the way. Now head back and check the survival training. Chop shop once again. Kills with combo vehicles. Start and get into the shock dozer. Drive this northbound. You need a lot of kills, so this isn't likely to succeed, but you know what? Give her the old college try anyways. When you reach the north side, turn left and make a break for the highway. You'll be running out of time before you can get to the highway, so try and take out as many zombies as possible as you can by the barricade. This was very close for me, so don't feel bad if you don't finish. We'll be back here many times later, and you'll get to try again. But I got a gold. <laughs> Now you'll want to double back towards the hospital. There's another set of survival training here outside of the plaza. Head to the survival training marker and start it. This is just generic zombie kills, so split shot it is. Clear the immediate area of zombies and you should finish in about 10 seconds of sustained fire. Always a pleasure, split shot. Continue to rack up kills as you work your way to the illegal safe house now. You should climb the planter and then get into the safe house. You can clear the safe house with your survival training still active to double dip on kills. Once the safe house is clear, you should wait for the survival training to end, and of course, you got a gold medal. Now you can use the lockers to restock on combo weapons. You'll want to grab another split shot at the very least. Leave the safe house and jump back to ground level. Your current goal is Sport Trance to collect some clothing. Work your way through Sport Trance systematically. On the left are football pants and a baseball cap. Next up are the baseball jersey and baseball pants. The baseball pants are very annoying to put on. Just a little fun note. Next, continue right and grab the football jersey followed by the football helmet. The cleats are beside them in a suitcase, so grab those as well. Now hop over the railing for the basketball shoes. The basketball shorts are on a suitcase on the display cabinet. Finally, the basketball jersey is on the rack behind you. That's three sets of sports uniforms added to the locker. Blessed by Spore Trance. Make sure you've got everything and that you're fully equipped with anything you might have dropped, and then you can double back to the illegal safe house. I just like to play as default neck, alright? Also make sure you have some combo weapons before leaving back to ground level. The next survival training is southwest. Head towards it now, it's south of the newsstand yesterday, today and tomorrow. Avoid killing zombies on the way since this is a bare fist challenge. When you get to the area, start the challenge and then proceed into the pedestrian walking area. If you've avoided killing anything here, there should be tons of zombies for you to murder during the challenge. Keep killing, and then use your kills to activate the giant swing special move. 
This will clear zombies around you and should make for very easy challenge completion. You do need to get giant swing kills for a PP trial, so you know what, you may as well double dip. Once the gold medal is achieved, I started throwing some metal marys. These kills only count from thrown metal marys, so just unload into the crowds for progress. I did manage to actually finish metal mary kills here, but once again, you'll have to keep track yourself. That's all for Central City. For now, it's time to move on. There's more survival training ahead of us. Head north all the way to the Broken Bridge. You'll find Terra here. Quickly blast all the zombies around her and then drop down through the Broken Bridge to the lower level. You should land next to the DIY Sokka survival training. This is just kills with combo weapons. Well, split shot it is. Start the training and immediately sprint westbound. Clear as many zombies as you can and continue to sprint to new groups. Done in less than 20 seconds. These challenges really let themselves go. The main goal now is to do the side mission. Head towards Sunset Hills on-ramp and run past the first car to get into the SUV. Drive the SUV to the sedan now and combine them into a junk car. Get inside and then head towards the blue objective marker. Kill as many zombies as you can here. The survival training ticked down and finished as I approached Hank. One more gold. Stop by the RV and immediately head to your right into the alcove. Grab the acetylene tank here, then run back to Hank and drop it. Next, head west along the bridge to find the gasoline canister. Do not use combo weapons here as you do this, you might accidentally blow it up. Grab the gas can and then head back southeast. In the next alcove, you'll find a barbecue and a propane tank. Grab the propane tank. Now we can head back to Hank with our propane and propane accessories. Talk to Hank and he'll request an acetylene tank, propane tank, and a gasoline canister. How convenient it was all nearby. Give him the acetylene tank followed by the propane tank when you can. Finally, give him the gasoline canister. You'll never expect what happens next. Your new goal is to run away. Get in your junk truck and drive off somewhere. Hank will die and you'll finish the side mission. Alright, cool, I guess. The RV was blocking this part of the highway, so you may as well take a gander. Head inside and get into the sports car. Drive this all the way to the end. There's a porta potty to save if you wish, as well as several guns and grenade stockpiles. Well, it's technically dynamite. You can combine a handgun and a dynamite to make a boom cannon here. Make one and then throw it somewhere out of the way. You'll want to repeat this process of making boom cannons until you've depleted the stash, or more than likely, until you get bored. Now you can jump back down to ground level. Get yourself into any available vehicle nearby and it's time to finally head for our main objective marker. You can make your way into Sunset Hills now, drive directly to the communications tower. Alec will be in Rojo Diablo Mexican restaurant and needs a rescue. You can bail out and rescue him if you wish. Now continue eastbound to the communications tower clearing zombies in your way. If you'd like, you can stop by Speedy Espresso and make yourself another elemental staff. Generally a good plan. Now make for the communications tower. Inside, start by talking to Lauren. You can grab the boxing shorts and the fireman boots nearby if you missed them earlier. The boxing shorts should be new. Continue talking to Lauren until she finally gives you the main quest. Talk about burying the lead. Two objectives. The first is northbound, which coincides with the side objective at Joey's house. So head northwest and work your way up Sunset Hills to the landslide. As usual, save at the porta potty if you wish. Then you can work your way up the landslide on the right to find a survival training. This is zombie kills with combo weapons, aka a freebie. Start the training, equip a split shot, and run your sweet buns down the street. You'll encounter Mel who needs a rescue along the way, so make sure to clear the zombies around her. This one took a little longer than expected, but it's a simple task to finish. Especially after rescuing Mel and then returning to the houses for more kills. Joey can wait a little bit longer. It's time to head to the fancy house, as there's a bit of survival training here as well. Climb onto the truck and jump onto the staircase. There's another gun here you should grab. Now head upstairs. You can use the nearby guitar or any chair to turn this into a split shot. Now you should head for the survival training. What's this? Generic kill as many zombies as possible? Well that's no problem. Start the training and drop down to the street and start unloading into zombies. This should be very fast completion of the survival training. We're also close to yet another one, so you should head into the musician's house again. The training is out by the balcony, so head there now. You'll have to wait for the current gold medal to unlock, but you're free to spend your time out here making an ultimate shout. That's just efficiency. Once you have an ultimate shout and the training is completed with a gold medal, you'll want to start the next training. This is electric weapons once again. Equip a stockpiled electric staff and then drop down to ground level, head for the tennis courts and start zapping everything in sight. Clear the tennis courts and it should be a free gold medal. Now it's finally time to work your way back northbound. 
As you head up the street, take a quick detour, hop the fence and climb the stairs on your left. Climb up the next setup and turn to your left again. Follow this path up a ways and then turn right. Continue forward and then carefully hop the fence and catch the roof ledges below. Run across the roof and you'll find a super combo blueprint for the Provoked Bear. This is another needlessly complicated build. Make Freedom Bear with an LMG and Robot Bear. Then combine it with a Stereo followed by Dynamite. That's a Provoked Bear down. Pick up anything you dropped to build this. Now your goal is to head back to the north side of Sunset Hills. Drop back down to ground level and head north up the street. This should take you directly to the porta potty, so save if you wish, and then finally make for Joey's house. After all this time, we're finally meeting him. Climb over the landslide and pass by the survival training. Now climb up and pass through the lawn to get to Joey's house. Make a junk car on the way if you wish, then head inside to find Joey. Joey has some interesting business proposals. This side quest basically just involves baiting zombies into the soundproof room. This is very simplistic. Just get close to the zombies as they fall from the roof. Just stay relatively close to the zombies and walk slowly into Joey's house. They will follow you, so just keep walking into the back room. Eventually, they'll pass a threshold and just head inside themselves. All you need is three zombies. This is a super fast and easy side mission, so count your blessings. Chapter 3 is long enough as it is. When all the zombies are inside, talk to Joey. Let's not talk about the implications of this. You can do a quick lap around Joey's house looking for stuff, but it's time to head out. Return to your crafted junk car and save your game. We need to clear the illegal safe house and that's where Lauren wants us to go anyways, so drive forward and crash the party. There will be several bikers outside, so blast them all with your split shot or whatever combo weapon you have available. Afterwards, just head into the safe house and clear the remaining bikers inside. Once that's done, the safe house will be cleared and you can head to the table to grab Lauren's ring box. Lockers will be available now. Adjust your clothing if you want, and then grab some new combo weapons if you feel the need to. When you're done, exit the safe house and get back out to the street. There isn't much left to do in Sunset Hills, so you're going to want to head southwest now. You can make for the highway if you'd like to do a quick detour. Make a roller hog using the nearby road roller and motorcycle and drive it to the highway. Park the roller hog by the survival training and then start. Quickly get back on the roller hog and drive forward. Snake around the buses and start farming kills along the north bridge. This should be a pretty quick task. Just don't get stuck and keep driving until you're successful or time ends. I also managed to finish my 1000 roller hog kills here, but you know what, that's all small potatoes. When you're finished, double back to Sunset Hills. Gold medal achieved, easy peasy. On foot, head over the barricade and then continue southbound towards the school. Continue farming kills and make the long trek southbound. Hop over the various barriers and eventually you'll make it to the school grounds. Keep blasting zombies and then jump the fence to get into the school. Climb the bus and then jump into the school. This is a repeat of what you already did as Angel. Worth noting here is you need to kill football zombies with the shoulder tackle. I'll go into more details later, but freezing them and doing a shoulder tackle is the easiest way. May as well try to collect some kills now if you can. Inside the classroom, you should pick up the servebot mask on the desk. There's also a sombrero on the bookshelf to pick up. Two more clothing for the locker. In the hallway, check the lockers for clothing. The schoolgirl socks and shoes are hidden in one of the lockers. You can also make another flaming sword using a broadsword and motor oil nearby. There's a pair of go-go boots nearby, but these are a duplicate. When you're done, you should head downstairs. You'll need to clear this area of zombies. Freeze and shoulder tackle the football zombies on the left, or just blast them with whatever combo weapons you have. Whatever works. Collect Lauren's tattoo kit when you're finished in this room. This is a safe house, so make sure to clear the area of zombies to make it available. You'll likely eat a couple of tackles doing this, but there's not that many zombies in here. When you're done, start by opening the door on the north side to unlock it, and then head to the south side and exit. Head over the fence and pick up some nearby blunt weapons if you need a split shot, and combine them with a gun nearby. Otherwise, you can use the locker, and then head to survival training. Firearms. Perfect. Start the challenge and blast the zombies in the tennis court. This should be an easy victory in a few short bursts. You're done in the school now and it's time to head back to Lauren at the communications tower. Head north and get back up onto the streets. You can use the nearby sedan to speed up this process. Drive eastbound and exit by the communications tower. Now head inside and talk to Lauren. She'll let you in after some dialogue. You've been here before so just make your way to the upper levels. Head for the door and you'll get a cutscene. Feel free to save at the porta potty first. You'll be back in the room with guns and grenades. 
No time like the present to make some boom cannons. You can also make IEDs now by using two grenades. Feel free to build whichever you prefer. You'll need to make 50 of each eventually. Double grenade or gun plus grenade. Dump your stock combo weapons in a corner so that they don't get in your way. Keep doing this until you've exhausted the stockpile. Grabbing a couple of guns to make czars will be useful since we do need to do some laps around the districts destroying MacGuffins and killing Spec Ops. Doing laps around the city is a bit bland, but at least Capcom Vancouver's design philosophy is fairly consistent. Make as much as you can here, and then drop back down to ground level and save at the porta potty. Time to head back out to the streets. Exit the communications tower and out to the street. The first set of tasks are cameras. Head northbound now and blast your way to the first camera. Shoot this with whatever you have available. There are some cop zombies nearby and you can take their guns in a pinch. After blasting the first camera, the next is southwest. Turn left and hop over the barricade. Head to the tennis courts and blast the next set of cameras. The final camera in Sunset Hills is westbound. Clear the zombies along the street and then you can work your way back to the northern street. This is a bit of a jog. Hop the fence and get back to the street. Now climb onto the white truck and you can safely snipe the final camera in Sunset Hills. Now you need to get back to ground level by whatever means you see fit. We're done in Sunset Hills for now, so make your way to Central City. Head to the south end of Sunset Hills. You can combine the nearby van and car into a junk truck. You'll want to do this to collect more kills and make some PP trial progress. Next, inside this alley you can find a ham and drink cart. You actually want to combine these together to make a buffet cart. This is a bit awkward, but you need to make one for the trophy. You can make one now. We will be coming back to this later. Now return to your junk truck. This is a simple pass through to Central City, so head there now and collect some kills along the way. Inside Central City are several survivors. This is a family who got separated if you care about the narrative. On the left, immediately rescue the first survivor. Get out, clear the zombies, and get back in your car. Now continue forward and then turn southbound. Stop at the military checkpoint and start taking out the Spec Ops here. Spec Ops, as usual, have firearms, so after you take one out, feel free to pilfer some of their guns. Head to the relay at the back of the checkpoint once you've cleared the area. Disable it, and there's one left in Central City. Restock on combo weapons. Zars are a good choice here. Now turn left and head towards the Rancho Rama because somehow your junk truck got blowed up. Whoops. Inside the Rancho Rama, go ahead and make whatever you need for combo vehicle PP trials. This was another junk truck for me. Drive out of the Rancho Rama and turn left. Stop and blast the zombies at the medical trailer to rescue the child. Now turn back around and head westbound on the central street. At the end, turn to your right and then turn left to go down the alleyway. Exit and save the mom here by unloading with combo weapons. Conveniently, this is also the location of the final relay. Sprint westbound and take out all resistance at the military checkpoint. Once it's cleared out, you can disable the relay. With the relays disabled, you should double back to the taxi in the alleyway. It's time for South Almuda. Turn south and head towards the South Bridge. The final family member is here. Use whatever stockpiled combo weapons are nearby to save them. That's all of them. Now you can head to the South Bridge guilt-free. I made a shock dozer here and got inside. Use this to travel the South Bridge all of the way to South Elmuda. Snake around the trucks and then start by heading into the warehouse. The supplies, like every other collectible in the warehouse, is at the South End. It's just on those containers. Drive whatever vehicle you're in to the containers and then use it to boost up. On top, just blast the military supplies, that's one of two. Now jump back down. You should head to the Porta Potty to save. The next location is at Elmuda Farms and it's a boss fight. Get in the car and exit out to the streets. Drive northbound and ditch the car once you hit the barricade. Clear the zombies in front of you and then turn left past the strip club. Head into Almuda Farms. Inside, use the panel to get a cutscene and start the boss fight. This is a set piece boss fight and it's the only one in the game that's any different. Unfortunately, guns and other combo weapons are out this time around. The way that you defeat Albert is by finding organ coolers around the arena and then smashing them. You have to suss out who is the real Albert. You'll get flashes of who's real and who's fake occasionally. This fight really sucks, but it's just a matter of walking around, throwing down coolers whenever you see someone new-ish. Once you find Albert and he sees a smashed cooler, he'll become angry and grabbable. Then you can deal some damage. Afterwards, you'll pass out and have to start over again. There isn't much to this fight, it's just long and annoying. Eventually, after several cycles, you'll emerge victorious. It's pretty much inevitable. Did I mention this fight is cool exactly one time? 
Guess how many times I've done it in my life. You can watch the cutscenes now if you wish. For beating Albert, you'll get the greedy achievement. Oh yeah, the psychopath designs are all based around the seven deadly sins. Except when they're not. You'll also get yourself a new follower, Alejandra. Start by grabbing the blueprints for the Acid Jar. Another combo weapon with PP trials. Make an Acid Jar now using the two chemicals. The inventory that was stripped from you is nearby. You can go ahead and make adjustments now. I got the Collector achievement for getting 250 weapons in the locker. We still have quite a few combo weapons left to make, but I'll always take an achievement whenever I can get it. You can combine a chemical and a blade into a flaming sword, so go ahead and do that now. Then grab your inventory and take out the final military cache. If you have nothing, there's a flare gun and a sledgehammer nearby, and you know that that's a split shot. With the last cache destroyed, you'll want to head topside now. This is just upstairs from your current location. Don't get confused, just head out the door. Back outside, you'll need to return to the communications tower. I opted to head back to the illegal safe house now. This is just outside Almuda Farms, and then climbing the truck in the alleyway to get back to the safe house. You should have five survivors now. This means you should get the help wanted achievement for adding five survivors to the bulletin board. Now you should get all of them to join your posse. For having five survivors escorting you, you'll get the gang banger achievement. Really killing it with these names. From now on, you can use survivors at your discretion. I'm going to avoid them at all costs. This is mostly because it can cause problems and certain conflicts with side quests. Better to not have a posse anyways. Nick is the lone survivor. Inside the safe house is a chance to use the locker for some weapons. Acid jar is new and it's a PP trial, so grab a few and get to work. Exit the safe house now and it's time to head for the Rancho Rama. Exiting to the north side is fine, just head westbound and then turn southbound past the barricade. Lots of zombie density here, so start chucking acid jars all over the place. You need 200 kills, and you should be able to work it down pretty quickly. Clear the zombies as you head past Rocket's Red Glare. Then pass through southbound and continue clearing the streets with acid jars. The military blockade has a lot of zombies, so keep chucking those jars. I managed to finish just outside the blockade with a whole stack of acid jars left to spare. As usual, just keep track of your own PP trials. At the Rancho Rama, grab a combo vehicle of your choice. Preferably something maneuverable and good at kills. I opted for the turret rig here. We're going to get that south bridge survival training done this time. Drive the turret rig northeast and get back onto the south bridge. Stop beside the survival training. You may have to move your shock dozer like I did. Whoops. Oh well, and by move it I guess I meant blow it up. Get in position now and then exit the vehicle. Start the survival training and immediately get inside the turret rig. 150 kills in one minute. Drive forward along the south bridge and blast whatever you can with a turret rig. This should be fairly free. Continue driving all the way through to Central City. This turret rig is another opportunity to finish the survival training near the hospital as well. That is, if you didn't finish it the first time. You can do it right now in this turret rig. Regardless, I opted to hop out on the south street and head to the surf shop. There's lots of clothing in here. Skater shoes and summer dress are duplicates, but flip-flops on the left are new. Continuing up the left side, women's summer hat and snorkel are also new. Next, the wetsuit and of course, the infamous banana hammock. Put on the Hawaiian shirt if you missed it, and then make sure to put on the swimming shorts from the central rack. Check the back for extra glasses, but otherwise exit and head into Big Bull's quality meats. Inside, you'll want to head up to the mascot. Put on the mascot outfit. The head will be a duplicate, but hey, there's the rest of the outfit. Now exit and head back to your vehicle. Continue driving eastbound, but turn north and up the street. The first store on your right, Le Vavanu, has several pieces of women's lingerie and a grenade launcher, for some reason. Find the lingerie bra and the lingerie bottoms before exiting and getting back in the turret rig. Continue north, then stop and enter the pedestrian's only shopping area. Enter Felicia on your right. Check for clothing in here, but these should all be duplicates on the upper level. Head downstairs instead, and head to the back to find the helmet bomb blueprint. This is an afro wig and a dynamite. This is a one and dunner. Craft it and move on with your life. The only other piece of clothing here is the cocktail dress. Put it on. You can then plop the helmet bomb on a zombie if you wish, but otherwise head back out to the street. You can wrap around and save at the porta potty if you wish. That's pretty much it for Central City at the moment. You can investigate a few shops as you work your way up the left side, but your main goal is just to get back to the communications tower. Albert's apparel is worth noting. You can get the cardigan and the turtleneck sweater in here. I'll just pull a couple of items. 
exit when you've put them on, and then head northbound out of Central City. Once again, I'll just flash forward here. The comm tower is your objective. Get in a car and drive there now. You can grab an elemental staff at Speedy Espresso if you wish, otherwise head up to the top of the communications tower and save. Then start the next leg of chapter 3. Yeah, we're not even done yet. The grenade stockpile should have refreshed, so once again get to work making IEDs and boom cannons. This is gun plus grenade and grenade plus grenade. Make sure you have some weapons for yourself. A ZAR is worth building here, that's two guns. Otherwise, continue to build IEDs using the grenade stockpile until it's depleted. You'll likely get a call about blood barter while you do this. Don't worry, it's on the docket. Once you've used up all of the grenades, pick up whatever you dumped and jump back to the porta potty and save your game. I took a detour to the safe house to grab a bunch of dynamites. Hey, gotta make progress. And if the energy in the locker's full, well, you know what? It's not regenerating. Thought we were done with Central City? Well, guess what? Not even close. Head back to the streets now. You'll want to do your best to make some progress with dynamites as you work your way back to Central City. You can make a junk car or a junk bike your preference here. Now drive a short distance and when you find some zombie density, get out and plug zombies with dynamites. For me, this was on the right side by the car dealership. Plug a few zombies and then move on. You're looking at finding minimum groups of 5 zombies and you need to do this 50 times. Yikes. Plug a group, move forward and plug another group of zombies. I got just over halfway done before I exited Sunset Hills. I kept getting out of vehicles and plugging small groups of zombies with dynamites. This is definitely slow going for sure, but progress is progress, and dynamites are just a slow one to get finished. Eventually I got to Central City and guess what the plan is? Continue to plug groups of zombies with dynamites to try and get minimum 5 zombies per explosion. Nice. If this was just get generic kills with a dynamite like every other PP trial we'd be done easily. Unfortunately it's 50 separate connections. Oh well, make your way towards the police station by going over the pedestrian only barricade. Continue southbound plugging zombies with dynamites. Eventually you'll get to the police station and or run out of dynamites. I actually by some miracle managed to finish here with dynamites to spare. Continue using dynamites if you need to but head all the way to the southern streets once again. When you get there you should head westbound to make for the rear of the police station. This is a psychopath battle coming up so be prepared. Grab guns off the cop zombies and make ZARs or split shots using the nearby blunt objects as per usual. Save at the porta potty as well. If you want to take a detour to the illegal safe house you can change your clothes or pick up whatever combo weapons that you want. The locker should have regenerated at least a little bit. I had 100 clothing items in the locker at this point which should be the fashion plate achievement. I don't know why it didn't unlock. There's still loads of clothing left to get, but don't feel obligated to unless you're desperate for a perfect save file, and that's a big yikes from me for Dead Rising 3. When you're ready, get into the police station via the back door. You will get a series of cutscenes in here showing you just how awful this woman is. I sure hope she doesn't try and step on me. Ha 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 ha. When you get control of Nick, you'll need to clear the parking lot. Every weapon is viable here. Split shots, czars, and elemental staffs, as well as just generic firearms are all fine. Clear the immediate area of special forces and then head into the locker room. You'll want to put on the army jacket, pants, and army boots in here. There's also additional tactical gear you've already picked up, but the police hat is inside the adjacent room, right where you found the Frank statue. Do a quick lap for supplies including healing items and weapons and then chase down Hilde. Follow Hilde down towards the armory. As you turn the corner, a rocket will get fired at you, so try and dodge out of the way. Otherwise, you can just tank it with your huge body. Continue following Hildy up the stairs and blasting and also getting blasted by rockets. <laughs> we'll stop with Swedish guy now. This is a repeat of our first run with SRG. Just clear your way to the third floor by whatever means necessary. At the top, the boss fight will start after a cutscene, of course. Hildy isn't any different than any other psycho. Just continually shoot her with a ZAR. She'll try and outgun you, but it's simply not possible. After dealing 50% of her health and damage, she'll cut the game to black and spawn ads. Very cool. Dodge the incoming rocket and continue shooting her. Hilde will likely jump away, but eventually she'll come back and succumb to the bullets, like every psychopath does. Afterwards, you'll find yourself outside the police station in a uh, nice position. Head eastbound and clear the zombies around Trevor. You can then head north and save at the porta potty. Your goal is to head to the hotel to meet Red and Annie, so go ahead and do that now. This is just eastbound and then turn south into the hotel. Head up the stairs on the left side and then open the door at the top for another cutscene. 
Angel will be deceased, but we already knew that from her DLC. Rest in peace, noble sacrifice. Watch the cutscenes if you wish. When you regain control of Nick, you'll need to wait around for a few hours for Red, so it's time to do some final side quests in Chapter 3. There's also a blueprint here to collect. Head to your left and grab the bomb toy blueprint. This is gasoline and a robot bear. This is required for a PP trial, so make sure you hang on to this. What else is new? With your bomb toy, head back down to ground level now. Just head through the door and drop back down the stairs. You should get a call for a question of law. Easy, we can do that right now. Look for a large cluster of zombies and throw a bomb toy at it. Now you'll want to find a nearby car. You'll want to drive this northbound towards the illegal safe house. You can do the same tactics we did with the dynamites here and throw bomb toys into clusters of zombies along the way. Clear your inventory of bomb toys, making as much progress as possible. Now head to the objective marker. You'll have to collect a suitcase of a woman obsessed with another woman's fat ankles. But really, who isn't obsessed with a woman's fat ankles? After the dialogue is over, you'll likely get a call about another side quest. This is all you can eat for another psychopath battle. The grossest one by far. Regardless, we should go get Carrie's briefcase first. This is just south of your current location. Drive a car of your choice back down to the hospital. Clear the zombies around here and then pick up the suitcase. This must be delivered back to Carrie. Make sure you put it in your inventory and then swap to something different. Now it's time to double back. You will get another call for another side quest for Lesser Evil now. Don't worry, most of these side quests are in a convenient line. It's just chapter 3 has been really long, okay? It's the longest chapter by like a mile. You can make a shock dozer at the hospital and drive it back northbound to carry. Deliver the suitcase and she will eventually join up as a follower after some dialogue. There's lots of guns nearby so restock on weapons if you can. We don't really want any active followers and since the illegal safe house is nearby, you should head up there and drop off Carrie at the bulletin board. Inside, you should pick up more bomb bears from the locker. Having at least one czar and split shot is also a good idea. Now you can exit out to the streets. A quick detour before we do the side quest though. Head westbound and work your way to the highway. There will be a few survivors to rescue in the gated area. After meeting with Red, this place opens up so make sure to head downstairs. We did get most of the stuff in here as Angel, but we did miss a blueprint. Of course, we can't actually get it yet, but it is technically open now. Head back to the streets and start throwing bomb toys all over the place to collect kills. 200 required kills and you should be able to finish here. Finding a high vantage point is generally a good idea. Once you're finished, that's one more PP trial down and a lot left to go. The next side quest requires a combo vehicle, so it's time to head to the Rental Rama. Head back eastbound and then turn south to get to the Rental Rama. Inside, you can build the combo vehicle of your choice. It really makes no difference. All of them have at least one seat available for a passenger. I opted to grab a junk car here. Head back southbound now. If you did not complete the survival training by the hospital, now is another opportunity to try and get it done. Otherwise, just make your way back to the south bridge and head out of Central City. About halfway across the bridge, you'll find Big D. Dude, nice. He won't join you until you have a combo vehicle. That's fine, we came prepared. Hop in and Big D will get in as well. The side quest marker is at Laos, Cream Dream. Head westbound and snake around the trucks to get into South Almuda. Then turn north through the power plant and drive to the street. Oh wait, there's a barricade here, so we have to actually get out of the vehicle. Get out, hop the barricade, and run to Laos, Cream Dream on your right side. Wait for Big D. Big D will unlock the door with his foot, and there will be a weird situation going on here. But first things first, grab the Frank statue, that's 68 of 70, only two left. Next you can grab the top and skirt for the schoolgirl outfit. Fashion plate finally unlocked for me here, thankfully. Every other piece of clothing is gravy at this point. You don't actually have to collect any more once you get fashion plate. Big D likes to talk, so I opted to make a super massager here while the dialogue ran. Oh look, it's time to kill Big D. Let's take a look at how the super massager does. Oh, just terrible. Well, it stunlocks him at least, and it's kind of funny. Big D will die and he'll drop his gun. This is unique, so pick it up to add it to the locker. Next, rescue Candy. She's a big lady and a follower. One more side quest complete. Exit out of Lao's Scream Dream with Candy. The back doors should be unlocked now. More side quests await. Next stop is the bus depot. Make your way there, it's just a quick trip westbound. Head inside and you'll find Troy in the same location as every single bus depot collectible. Troy is having an issue with a certain man in a certain strip club close by. After the dialogue runs out, exit the bus depot with Candy. 
The strip club is southeast of your location, so just sprint there now. You'll have to wrap around some crashed vans. When you get there, just head inside and immediately head upstairs. Talk to Kent and he will choose violence. Unload your Big D's gun directly into his face. He'll be making a special guest appearance on Destroyed in Seconds. Jesse will immediately give up and beg for his life. Very fitting in this scenario. Talk to Jesse and he'll join up with you as a follower. Make absolutely sure that you pick up Troy's locket. It's the reason we came here. Now it's just a matter of heading back to Troy at the bus depot. Head downstairs and exit to the street. Then just head westbound and head back into the bus depot. Talk to Troy and give him the locket. He will also join as a follower. That's one more side quest down, and it's a good chance to save your game. The last side quest on the list at the moment is all you can eat. It's time to head to Ingleton. Head westbound and find a car. Then try and ditch your followers as you head north through the industry tunnel. Once you get to Ingleton, Vicky will be stranded on your left. Rescue her if you want, and then drive the car of your choice northbound. Get yourself to the end of the street, and then work your way westbound. You can make a roller hog here. You can take a quick pit stop at the illegal safe house. This is a good idea to drop off your survivors if you wish. Picking up weapons for yourself is also a good idea. When you are ready, head to the buffet and save your game. Then, open the door. Darlene is disgusting, and these cutscenes are also disgusting. And Capcom Vancouver are disgusting for putting them in the game. Thankfully, the strategy we have at our disposal minimizes our time here. Split shot directly to the face and hold down the trigger. If she ever gets away from you, swap to a ZAR if you have one and continue blasting. There just isn't a lot of strategy. The fight's basically free at level 50 with good combo weapons. Afterwards, you'll get another series of disgusting cutscenes and the gluttonous achievement for defeating Darlene. This side quest also opens up the buffet, so collect the key from the back now. Unfortunately, there's nothing new or valuable in the buffet, so you know, whatever. Of course, the next side quest requires meat, so you can go ahead and pocket some hams or something from the back room. This will save you a trip. There's nothing left to do in this chapter, so we're finally heading back to the communications tower. The fastest way back is in a combo vehicle via the north bridge from Ingleton to Sunset Hills. If you crash, you can make another roller hog on the Ingleton side. We're going to make a quick detour for those of you who want the best outfit in the game. On the west strip of Sunset Hills, you can head into the toy store, Planet Toddler. Inside, you can grab various outfits, but most important is the Cool Frog Jacket. Very cool, and definitely worth going out of your way to grab this. Afterwards, it's just a matter of heading back to the communications tower. On the way on the south street, you can rescue Madeline in the laundromat, but you should be long done the requirements for rescuing survivors at this point. Stop at Speedy Espresso if you want a new elemental staff. Now you just need to get back to the communications tower and head to the top. You should save your game, adjust your clothing at the locker, and then grab a few combo weapons. Split shots, as usual, are a fine choice. Now exit back out and talk to Annie and you'll finally finish Chapter 3, nearly three hours later. Yikes. You'll get the achievement Family Man for beating Chapter 3 as well as a new blueprint, the Napalm Bomb. Onwards to Chapter 4. Wow, the military busted in and abducted everyone but their target. Capcom Vancouver, please just think about the plot holes for two seconds. When you regain control, you need to make your way back to Ingleton and head to the car dealership. Head back down to ground level in your sweet new duds, and then head north up the street. You can grab a nearby SUV and drive this westbound. Jump the landfill and you'll find Callianne. Wait a second, didn't we already rescue him as Brad? Yeah. Yeah, we did. You'll get a call for investigating the pool. If you brought some meat from the buffet, head there now and complete it. I'll be doubling back for it. Keep heading westbound and you'll eventually get to the highway. If you can combine your SUV with another car to get a junk car or junk truck, it's just better. Drive this back across the bridge to return to Ingleton. We just did this trip, so it should be fairly familiar to you. Inside Ingleton, you can save Ryan if you wish, and then also save Maya near the buffet. Target is still the cab company. Keep driving there. You'll get another call about a psychopath in playtime. Again, we'll get to it soon. Head to the back of the car dealership and climb onto the roof just like you did as Brad. This time, head up and talk to Red. 
You have some options here, laughably, including stealth, but stealth is optional for this mission, so guns blazing usually works well, and that's the plan. Head into the taxi company and just kill everything with split shots. Keep unloading and head to the door at the back. You will get a cutscene. Once you regain control of Nick, again, just keep blasting, nothing's changed. You'll need to head to the back and blast the Jennies after you've dealt with the soldier. Head to the back room and blow it up, then exit and destroy the next generator. One more call about side quests, this time it's for Speed Freak, again we'll finish it later. Head to the gate and rescue the illegals, one more cutscene. Afterwards, well, just keep blasting. Blow up the barrels and take out all of the Spec Ops soldiers around the area. As you try to exit, the doors will close and then you'll need to take a gander at the panel nearby. Remember? Remember Commander Kane? Kane will die just as easily as a standard soldier. Grab the keycard and open the gate. This will trigger another cutscene, unsurprisingly. Finally, the fuel we were promised is available. Make sure that you head back into the cab company first. You want to make sure handgun, grenade, riot shield, and shotgun are in the locker. They should already be there, but you know, you should make sure. They'll also be close to the Rancho Rama. You should make your way there now. As usual, make a jack-in-the-box using a toy robot and a cardboard box. This is also a great opportunity to save your game. Let's go ahead and mosey on over to the barber shop for a side quest since we're in Ingleton. You'll want to make your way to the north side of Ingleton now. You can stop at the gun store on the way there if you need some more weapons. You'll want weapons capable of running and gunning for this side quest, so a few split shots is a great idea. Next, head up the alleyway nearby towards the barber shop, only to find that Derek is behind the barber shop by the shanty with the ultimate mecha dragon. This side quest is a very lengthy race, and I do mean lengthy. You'll have to run up and down pretty much all of Ingleton. It's just brutal. Follow Derek to the starting line. When the race starts, just start sprinting. You'll be told where to go, so just follow the giant neon green signs. Use tactical bursts of your split shot to clear zombies and then sprint to maintain your lead over Derek. This is pretty self-explanatory, so you can just follow the path given. You'll be looping around and heading through pretty much all of Ingleton. Just keep moving forward and you'll keep getting signs telling you to keep moving forward. I got a call for Dog On, but we're busy doing this race, so keep going. Eventually, you'll finally be at the finish line, just past the garage behind the alley. Keep sprinting all the way to the end. Derek will spawn behind you because of programming magic. Anyways, he'll open the door and you'll have access to a different array of guns in a slightly different position. Absolutely nothing is new in here. This is all stuff that you've previously seen and picked up. Nice side quest. One more down. Restock on anything you may need, but it's time to head to South Almuda. Exit the alley and head southbound to work through the industry tunnel to get to South Almuda. We're gonna go ahead and do playtime first since we can't bring followers to this battle. I'm warping ahead to Annie's old fashioned triple X shop. This is to the left of Rocket's Red Glare. Just hop the barricade. Inside Annie's old fashioned triple X are a lot of outfits. Feel free to do a lap around the area to add them to the locker. I already got my 100, so I'm good and will no longer be tracking. This is all achievements, not 100%, says so in the title. When you're ready, head to the door at the back and you'll get a cutscene and start the psychopath battle with Dylan. He'll be dead before I finish explaining it even without speed up. Just blast him point blank with the split shot and he'll be history. You'll get knocked down, but get up again and just keep blasting and he's toast. My co-op partner Sticky Rick stated that he was a little disappointed that I never mentioned how you can yell YOU'RE CRAZY during every boss fight, but you know what? They die too fast, I'm sorry, there's no need. But if you're on Xbox, you can yell at them for a stun opportunity. After the battle, you'll get a cutscene. Make sure to grab Dylan's Lust Cannon for the locker. Then you'll get the Lusty Achievement for beating Dylan. You should now rescue Julia and Eric and they will become followers. That's all there is to do in here. We got everything else as Brad. Exit Annie's old fashioned triple X shop now. Now set your marker for Dog Gone. This is northwest of your current location. Head back to the street and head into the parking lot to find Jorge. Jorge is a master chef who lost his hot dog cart. There is absolutely nothing more tragic. Talk to Jorge until he gives you the deets. This side quest is a simple escort. Get in the nearby van and have all of your followers pile in. Then drive Jorge southbound to the seafood restaurant. Escort him by driving of course. Turn left at the military blockade and then quickly get out. Now head into the seafood restaurant and let Jorge work his magic. 
This takes some time, so either watch or mess around in the seafood restaurant. Once Jorge is finished, he'll have created the ultimate culinary experience, the Master Dog. Absolutely delicious. Side quest complete and you'll gain Jorge as a new follower. Now get back into the van and have your posse pile in or leave them behind, it makes no difference. The next side quest is in Central City. This is a pretty standard pass through South Elmuda to get back to Central City, you'd done it before. However, on the way, you should combine your van with another van to make a mobile locker. This is required for an achievement since you need to build every combo vehicle. There's one van just before the south bridge. Now you can drive the mobile locker forward and cross the bridge. This isn't a great vehicle, but it is capable of giving you any kind of weapon so it's worth using here. Drive this down into the Los Perdidos police station parking garage. Now you can get out and open the garage door. Outside is a riot shield and you'll need one so make sure you have this. You'll also need a grenade, a handgun, and a shotgun. You can get all of these from the mobile locker to complete this very easily. Spawn the items and then make sure they're in your inventory. Now head inside the parking garage. You'll want to turn left and head into the armory. You'll find Dwayne locked out. Dwayne will give you a laundry list of weapons that he needs and usually this is annoying to go find them all. Thankfully you're following a guide so you know what? It's all in your inventory. As Dwayne asks for items, hand them to him. Grenade, handgun, riot shield. Afterwards, he'll ask for a final shotgun, so give it to him. Now Dwayne will actually join up with you as a follower. We'll have to go back into the armory one last time, but for now, it's time to go. Grab some guns on the way out if you wish. As per usual, it's a good idea to dump off your survivors. You should exit the police station and get back out to the streets. Head around and get back to the southern street now. On the way back, you can stop at some of the clothes stores along the southern street if you want more clothes for the locker, but otherwise you should continue back to the illegal safe house and drop off your survivors. You absolutely should stop by Big Bull's Quality Meats on the way. Make sure that you get some meat, it's time to do a side quest. Drive through Central City northbound to get back to Sunset Hills. If you'd like, you can stop at the Rancho Rama. I opted for a junk truck here since I still need some kills with it. 500 to be exact. Now drive to Sunset Hills collecting kills. When you get inside, head eastbound and then wrap up to the north side. You'll want to stop when you get to the landslide. Now head up the landslide on foot. This is a good chance to save your game. Climb up the staircase and you'll find yourself by the pool. Talk to Jason now. He's trapped his zombified family in the pool. Jason will request some food. Give Jason that juicy roast chicken. This will please him greatly. That's one more side quest done, I guess. Don't come here with survivors in tow. He'll make you sacrifice them, or at least try to. Then, unfortunately, you gotta ice Jason. Back on track, it's time to finish Chapter 4. Your aim is to get to Central Storage. This is under the highway. Instead of going south into Central City, stop and then head eastbound. Of course, there's another stranded survivor, so you can make a detour westbound to save Katarina if you want. Otherwise, make your way to Central Storage, clearing as many zombies as you can. There's a porta potty outside, you should save at it. Now head for the gate and open her up. Head into the office first and grab the key. You should start by opening the storage locker in the corner. This has the blueprints for the super crossbow. Oddly enough, made by using a motorcycle engine and a crossbow. This is the one we missed as Angel. Not required for any PP trials, so make it and then head for the real locker. Open it up and you'll get a cutscene. King zombies will now be roaming the wild. Not a huge deal, except they're actually pretty annoying since they explode when killed. Anyways, your goal is to drive the fuel car back to the hangar in South Elmuda. There's not much to say here besides drive carefully and try to avoid hitting, well, anything. The way should be pretty obvious at this point. You could drive up the highway and head through Ingleton and then down through the industry tunnel, but that requires going through the fireworks factory. Not a great plan. Instead, head through Central City, work your way through the north side, and wrap around to the south side. You should stop and get out of the fuel car and shoot the exploding barrels here. These barrels are getting pretty obnoxious, by the way. Afterwards, it's just a simple cruise through South Central and then wrap up to get to the southern bridge. Drive carefully across the bridge to get to South Elmuda. Snake around and then turn when you can to get through the construction site. At this point, it's just heading to the end and turning left to get to the plane hangar. Hang a right and park outside the garage door. You'll get a cutscene and chapter 4 will be finished. This was definitely a lot shorter than chapter 3, thankfully. And no, the infinite vehicle durability upgrade does not apply to the fuel car, thank you for asking. Chapter 4 completion equals the happy camper achievement. 
You'll also finally get the Forkwork Combo Vehicle Blueprint at the chapter end screen. Make sure to save your game. Once the cutscenes are finished, you'll be tasked with rescuing Diego to get the key back. This is at the museum, which has some collectibles, so it's not retreading the same ground, fortunately. Chapter 5 is pretty short, but it has some lengthy side quests, unfortunately. There's another chance for an elemental staff on your left, otherwise head forward. There's a new blueprint as you try to leave. This is the Pummel Blast, made using a grenade and a sledgehammer. Supposedly this grenade hammer is actually based off of a real thing. Look it up. When you're ready, leave the hangar. You can save if you wish. There is actually a fork work nearby. No time like the present to make one since we just got the blueprint. Combine the nearby forklift and the van to make the fork work. This should unlock the master mechanic achievement for making one of every combo vehicle. One more achievement down. The fork work isn't great as a combo vehicle, but you do need 1000 kills with it. Your goal is to head to the museum, so head there now. You'll get a call about a girl in Ingleton. Again, we'll get to it at some point. You'll also get a chance to rescue Steven at the liquor store. Do it if you want. These rescues usually have decent zombie density. Otherwise, just make for the museum by heading up the south bridge. There is now a military blockade on the bridge, which, you know what? It just sucks, but you'll have to deal with it for the rest of the game. For now, this military blockade is pretty light, so just pass through and get to Central City. Nora will need a rescue as you enter, so save her if you want to. Otherwise, you know the way around. Head south and wrap around the north side. If you need combo weapons, stop at the illegal safe house and make some. ZIR is your weapon of choice coming up. Otherwise, just make your way to the hospital. You'll get another call for a psychopath here. Main story is a priority, however. Get to the Rancho Rama and get out of your fork work. Now you should save at the porta potty. The museum is westbound. This is just a simple dash through. There's guns at the foot of the stairs, so you can fabricate a ZIR on the fly if you want. You'll get another call about a side quest now as well for Don't Look Now. Now you should head into the museum. Make for the door and it'll blow up. There's a blueprint to grab here, but we can get it on the way out. Keep moving forward and you will eventually reach a control console. Investigate it and you'll get a cutscene. Fun fact, but this is the exact point where Dead Rising 3 lost me in my first playthrough. Diego just flying around in a spacesuit. Hum Rocket Man in your head if you want, but at the end of the day, your goal is just to constantly shoot Diego with a ZAR. If you're fast and accurate enough, you can take him out before he drops the giant space mobile down. There is no strategy. <laughs> just shoot him. It's way more effective to blast him than attempting to use the grab. Drop him with a ZAR and then unload split shots point blank into his face. Repeat until done. After he goes down, you'll get another cutscene. This one involves lore that Capcom Vancouver clearly doesn't care about, so fun times. Anyways, when you regain control, head to the Frank cutout and snatch up the 69th Frank statue. Dude, nice. Only one more of these. Where could he be? There's a couple of more collectibles to grab in the museum. Start by heading to the kitchen area. There's some clothing items to grab in the gift shop first if you like, like the Blanca mask. Once you're in the kitchen, grab the blueprint for the chest beam. This is a motorcycle engine and a microwave. You should make one now. You'll want to return to the main area of the museum, but you can open the doors to the north side if you wish. Inside the exhibits, you should find the blueprint for the Chuck Axe. This requires a crossbow and a fire axe. Make one now. Work your way out of the museum and exit to the south side and save your game. You may as well do the first side quest in Central City since we're already here. Use the Chuck Axe to collect kills as you work your way northwest to the objective marker. When you get really heavy zombie density, you'll have to swap to something stronger. Head into the Security Services Inc. building and head to the back room to find Kyla. Talk to her to get her quest started. You can make a split shot in this room using a handgun and a chair. Classic. Kyla wants you to do a lap around Central City. Story of our lives. Set your marker to the westernmost garbage pile and head outside. Get into the nearby taxi and drive this around the car dealership to find the garbage. Torch all of the bags. Pick up the suspicious documents if they're here. This is kind of random from my experience. Get in a fresh car here and then drive along the southern streets to the next set of garbage. If you lose your car, you should just hoof it on foot to the Burgess Dawson Hotel. Now you can turn left and head up the alleyway. At the top, turn right to torch the garbage under the stairs. Nothing here for me. 
Next stop is the Rancho Rama, so double back to ground level. Clear your way through Central City and turn northbound at the hospital. Keep on clearing zombies. I passed 50,000 killed, which unfortunately is not even close. Save at the porta potty if you wish, and then torch the trash outside of the Rancho Rama. Collect any suspicious documents that you find. Inside, you may as well grab a combo vehicle. Working down systematically, I'm going to use the junk truck here. Fork works are in high supply in South Elmuda. Drive northbound and then turn towards the highway. Junk truck kills finally completed. At the gated off area, torch the garbage and grab a suspicious document. That's two of three for me. Now head southbound. Gonna pick up the last document as we return to Kyla. Head south and pass through Albert's Apparel to get to the loading bay. Torch the trash and grab the last document. Now it's just a quick mosey southwest into Security Services Inc. Talk to Kyla and after some dialogue you'll be done. Listen, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. One more side quest down and we get no reward again for our hard work. Nice. Time to continue along northbound. May as well just hit up everything as we pass it. Set your marker for the yoga studio in Sunset Hills. This is a psychopath battle with Jerry with an eye. Get back on your vehicle and drive it north across the highway to get to Sunset Hills. On the way you will find stranded survivor Jordan. Feel free to rescue him if you wish. In Chapter 5, Sunset Hills is also now barricaded for the rest of the game. Dude, nice. As if this game didn't have enough barricades. The yoga studio is on the upper level, so get out and climb up the stairs. Work your way around to where you found a Frank statue, and then equip a split shot and enter the yoga studio. You'll get a cutscene now. Really, really knee slap and stuff. Jerry's no different than any other psychopath. Split shot directly to the face and inject bullets. Sure, you'll get tossed around a little bit, but Jerry isn't much of a threat. If you get some distance, swap to a ZAR. You should really be able to kite Jerry around the room and you really shouldn't have to worry about anything. She'll go down. Psychopaths always go down. Defeating Jerry will net you another achievement. This is prideful. Remember our Seven Deadly Sins theme? Kick your way out of the yoga studio now. The main story calls. Head northbound. There's no zombies, so just head to the tennis courts now to find the bikers. Bikers are annoying, but they're really just fodder for any of your weapons of choice. You can give them the chuck axe if you like. This should be a fairly quick fight. You'll get a rescue out of it as well. Make sure to grab the plane key and your new task will be to bring Diego to the plane. Head to the Rancho Rama and grab yourself a combo vehicle, but first things first, you should save your game. Taking Diego back sounds good, but we may as well do the side quests first. Drive your combo vehicle of choice northbound to the landslide. In this case, it was a fork work. I'm done the rest of the vehicles at this point, or at least I'm really close. Now you should head up the landslide and jump over it. I'm actually just going to fast forward to Ingleton now. We've done this many times before. Inside Ingleton, we've got to get onto the rooftops. The easiest way to the rooftops is by using the stairs at the movie theater. Get into Ingleton and head southbound. Gotta love the barricades they just keep adding. Take a quick detour to the illegal safe house. Double check what items you need to finish. I needed to make a napalm bomb for starters and you will too. Grab a propane tank and motor oil from the locker. Now combine these into a napalm bomb. Napalm bombs will now be available directly from the locker since you just made one. Restock on split shots and change your clothes if you wish. When you're done, it's time to head to the movie theater. This is directly south of your location, so just jump down to ground level and head through the nearby alleyway. Take a quick right to head into the back of the movie theater. Turn left to go down and then head up the next set of staircases. Now wrap around and head up to the rooftop. Drop down to the building on your right. Now climb onto the air conditioner and boost yourself onto the next roof. You'll find Kelsey here. Talk to her and get the dialogue running. While the dialogue runs, you should take the chance to whip some napalm bombs at zombies nearby to get some kill progress. Keep talking and keep chucking napalm and Kelsey will join up with you. She wants to get to her house in Sunset Hills. Head northbound across the rooftops now. You can cross the roof here and collect some more napalm bomb kills. Now jump back down to the street. We're going back across the north bridge exactly the same way we came in. Get in the vehicle and drive yourself, Kelsey, and Diego back to Sunset Hills. I'll just flash forward here. Back in Sunset Hills, Kelsey's house is the one with the tree house near the hardware store. Make your way there now, but you'll want to enter from the front side this time. Drive along the road to get to her house. I had to do a car swap here. It was a little dicey, but otherwise get out of the car and head to Kelsey's house. You'll have to leave the car to actually get to the door. Kelsey will automatically run for the door, but you should head for the garage instead. 
Inside is a blueprint for the car bomb. Make one now using a grenade and an RC car. Dump this and then get into the SUV. Drive forward and position this so you can get onto the garage. But first, go out and talk to Kelsey. She'll thank you and open up the house. But something's wrong. She'll open up the dining room and it's just filled with zombies. Torch them all and talk to Kelsey. Listen, your task is literally end the family suffering alright? Look in the bottom left corner. When you're done, talk to Kelsey and she'll join up as a follower. Immediately after I completed Kelsey's side quest, I got a call for Willer away. This is actually very close by. Head outside and climb onto the SUV. You can use this to boost yourself onto the garage. You may have to get onto the wall first. On the garage roof, jump to the roof of the house to find the Grizzly Bear Combo Blueprint. This is the final Freedom Bear variant. There's no wheelchair nearby, so you can skip building this one for now. We'll add it to the list. I got the Master Builder achievement here for having 100 blueprints. Blueprints from the DLCs count for this, but we still need to grab the last few though. The final total is 105. The next side quest is Westbound. Get back to the North Street and then head over the landslide again. Clear out zombies in the area and make your way to the house. Head down the driveway and talk to Phil. Eventually you'll get the door open and you can head inside. This is a simple search and rescue. This is two right turns followed by a left at the door. Clear any zombies in your way and enter the bedroom. Open the closet to find Warren. Turns out Phil's a little bit of a liar. Talk to Warren and then you just need to double back outside. Find Phil outside and Warren will confront him. Now you just need to take out Phil. This guy thinks he can win versus four people? That's brave. Phil's donezo and the side quest is over. Warren will join you as a follower now. Now it's time to head back to the plane. Clear the zombies as you work your way back southbound to the rancho Rama and grab a vehicle. I'll fast forward this, but just haul those sweet buns all the way back through Central City and then South Elmuda in a fork work. Or, you know, whatever your vehicle of choice happens to be. Head into the plane hangar once you get there and you'll get a cutscene, unsurprisingly. Chapter 5 isn't quite over yet, we have a period of waiting around. Thankfully, after this segment of the chapter, a new slew of side missions becomes available. Exit the plane hangar and you should head to the porta potty to save your game. Do a double check what combo weapons you need to get kills with, but you should make your way back to Central City. Most of our side quests are actually in Central. You should get a call for Contraband Conditions, Eat the Rich, and Remotely Helpful, which is a psychopath battle in massive quotes coming up. As I left South Elmuda, I managed to finish my fork work kills. You'll want to drive the long way around now. Head back to Central City and then head northbound to get back to the highway. Contraband Conditions is your current side quest of choice. You should head there now. This is on the west side of the highway, basically at the entrance to Ingleton. We did a survival training here in Chapter 1 if you recall. Make your way there now, I'm going to flash forward to avoid the massive amounts of driving. Along the way there's a group of three survivors, rescue them or don't, it really does not matter. When you finally get to Marcus, you should have all of the side missions available. He'll want you to blow up some vans, so it's time for another lap around the city. Yeah, you know what? Sure, why not? You can make a new vehicle here using Marcus's bike and a nearby car to make a junk bike. The first van is fairly close by. This is southeast of your current location right before the South Elmuda off-ramp. Just shoot it with your junk bike's guns as you drive by and then head down into South Elmuda. The next van is in the big McHuge Large Industrial Co. warehouse. Head through the power plant and then cross the street to get to the warehouse. Blast the van, and then double back outside. This is time to head into Central City once again. Feels like we've been coming here a lot lately. Pass through the South Bridge, and then at the entrance to Central City, snipe the next van. I lost my junk bike here, so I had to head into Central City on foot. Thankfully, there's some cars close by. Take the nearby taxi and drive southbound. We're going to make a quick pit stop to finish Eat the Rich. Drive yourself to the Southern Illegal Safe House. You'll want to loop around the back of the police station and then head up the stairs. You can grab a hunk of meat on the landing, this will save you a little bit of locker energy. Now dump your inventory outside of the safe house and then head inside. You should use the locker to fill up on hunk of meats. You'll need 5 total, so 4 from the locker plus the one you found on the staircase. Otherwise grab 5. Head outside and talk to Jose. Jose will eventually request to eat several hunks of meat. Gross, but alright guy. Shovel five hunks of meat directly into Jose's mouth and he'll join you as a follower after absolutely gorging himself. That's another disgusting side quest down and Jose will join you as a follower. You should head back into the safe house now and immediately drop Jose off. Guy's clearly got a couple of screws loose. Make sure to pick up your inventory once again. 
Back at the locker, you can collect a few napalm bombs. We still need to make some progress on those. Head back outside and whip some napalm bombs at the zombies below. Take advantage of that density from Eat the Rich. When you're restocked, you should jump back down to ground level. It's time to get back to contraband conditions. The next van is at the Rancho Rama. That's pretty convenient since we need to pick up a ride ourselves. Keep whipping napalm bombs at zombies as you work your way eastbound to the hospital. I opted to take a quick peek into Dude Where's My Board and I put on the shark mascot costume. For no reason, of course. When you pass the tennis courts, it has some serious zombie density and that's where I finished my 200 napalm bomb kills. Man, whoever designed these PP trials. Ugh. One more down, plenty more to go. Now it's just a straight shot northbound to the Rancho Rama. Clear any zombies in your way with your split shots. When you get to the Rancho Rama, save at the porta potty and then head inside. Grab a vehicle of your choice. I opted for the junk bike here because, well, it's just pretty quick. The van's inside the Zip gas station, so just shoot it a couple of times and then you can zip yourself out of there. One more van and it's inside the storage units. I just went ahead and drove my junk bike off the bridge like an absolute animal. <laughs> Didn't even crash. Now you should head into the storage unit and blast the last contraband van. Now it's time to head all the way back to Marcus. This is a straight shot westbound along the highway. Collect some kills if you can, but just focus on getting to Marcus without destroying your vehicle. Now you can talk to Marcus and he will join up as a follower, and that's one more side quest down as well. Now you should set your marker to the mayor's mansion in Sunset Hills. Just double back straight eastbound along the highway. If you lose Marcus, it's not a big deal, honestly. Head for Sunset Hills once again. This is a very important side quest. This is where we get the components for the final tragic ending. Finally. Get into Sunset Hills using whatever vehicle is available to you. We'll fast forward this one. Sunset Hills is barricaded, so you'll have to hoof it. Clear zombies around Tracy at Rojo Diablo Mexican Restaurant if you want. You want to continue working your way eastbound through Sunset Hills. Then at the end of the street, wrap your way northbound and head to the mayor's mansion. Rhonda managed to finish her research here so we can return to the hangar, but we have some side quests to finish. You've been to the mayor's mansion half a dozen times before, so work your way up to the top now. Collect some weapons for split shots along the way if you can. Zars are also pretty good. Work your way around and when you get to the front entrance, head inside. You'll get another cutscene here, then the psychopath battle with Teddy will start. And I use the term psychopath battle loosely here. Start by inspecting the door. This is required, so don't forget to look at the door. Next, you'll need to do a lap around the house. Start by heading west. Blast the panel at the end and then head south into the bathroom. You'll need to open the door and then shoot the next panel. Now you need to head upstairs. Use the right staircase and enter the first room on your right. Turn around and blast the next panel. Now it's time to head to the second level. Move forward across the second level and enter the bedroom. Grab Frank if you missed him in Kane's DLC. Then head to the second floor bathroom and shoot the panel in the closet by the bathtub. That's it. Jump back down to ground level and head to the door and down the staircase. Time for some more hilarious cutscenes. God, it's, it's in such bad taste. And the worst part is, it's not even funny. You'll get the armory key for beating Teddy, as well as the slothful achievement. Seven deadly sins, man. Capcom Vancouver were pretty lazy in their designs for this guy. <laughs> Got him. Exit the mansion now, and go ahead and jump through the hole in the wall to your left. You can make a provoked bear here using the materials nearby in the parking pad. Pocket this into your inventory now. We're gonna go to, that's right, Joey's house since it always has a wheelchair. Head west and jump the wall to get there now. Run past the cars and pick up the wheelchair. Combine this with the provoked bear into the grizzly bear. See, I didn't forget. Save your game, bucko. Your current goal is to get back to Central City to do a side quest and get into the armory. Once again, this is stuff we've all seen multiple times, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward to Central City here. In fact, I'm gonna fast forward all the way to the Southern Illegal Safe House. You should head into the police station now from the south side. This is a simple pass through. We're headed to the armory. Use the door on the left to get into the garage. Now just pass through the garage to get to the armory. Head into the armory and use the key to unlock it. Head to the back of the armory and collect the final tragic ending. Looks like he got disarmed. That's it for those and one more PP trial down. Collecting all the tragic endings wasn't even its own achievement. This is simply a stepping stone for Prestige Hound. Restock on weapons if you feel the need, but otherwise double back out of the police station and save your game at the porta potty. Time for the last side quest of Chapter 5. Set a marker for The Boutique. This is north of your current location. You can just cross the street to enter the lower entrance of Felicia. 
Now head up the staircase to find Lena. This is definitely not a horribly dated reference. Talk to Lena and you'll have to do a lap around Central City to get her some real clothing. Lena will mark the locations on your map, that's pretty nice of her. Start by heading north to the pedestrian shopping street. You'll want to turn left and head for Z and E. Get inside and Lena will take some time finding the perfect items. That's one of three shops down. The next shop is directly south of your location. Head right to get to the street and then head southbound. Clear zombies in your way and make for the illegal safe house once again. The shop is actually directly under it. Enter Captain Hats and Lena will grab something. Feel free to grab yourself some hats while you're here. The next store is eastbound towards the hospital. Exit and head east, clearing out zombies in your way. Turn northbound at the fire truck and enter La Vavenue again. A chance for clothing you've probably already got, but once Lena's satisfied, the goalpost will get moved once again. Your new task is to head to the Burgess Dawson Hotel. Exit and head northbound and then turn east when you can. The Burgess Dawson is on the right side past the bus. Once you're inside, all you need to do is head to the locked doors on your right and Lena will kick in the door. That's one more locked area available to us. There's some clothing in here you can grab to add to the locker if you want, but it's mostly just a waiting game for Lena. She'll unveil her new fantastic outfit, but between you and me, girl's looking pretty basic. She'll join up with you now as a follower and fashion victim will be complete. Chapter 5 side quests, all complete. The only thing left to do is head back to Rhonda at the plane hangar. Exit the Burgess Dawson and head to the Rental Rama on the east side of Central City. Alternatively, you can make a junk car with the two cars outside. Regardless, you're gonna head back to South Elmuda. You know the way at this point, just get yourself back to South Elmuda. Nothing new here, so just continue to the plane hangar and then talk to Rhonda. The chapter will end and you'll get the Day at the Museum achievement for completing chapter 5. You'll also get the Blambo blueprint, which we already have. Curious. You'll be tasked with heading to the collector's house. Thankfully, chapter 6 is pretty short overall. It's mostly just a quick lap around the map, what else is new? Restock on items in the plane hangar if you need to, then leave and head for the combo vehicle you park nearby. Otherwise, it's time to hoof it to the rental rama and pick something out. We should finish the final survival training since we're here. The main story goal is in Sunset Hills. The final survival training is in the aqueduct. We can hit it up along the way. You should head through South Elmuda and stop at the safe house for weapon restocks. The survival training is kills with combo weapons, which means split shots. If you're short on weapons, make sure to grab some now. Now head northbound and then turn into the train station and drive yourself through the aqueduct until you arrive at the cement mixer. The survival training is on one of these large concrete pillars. Head up the ramped wall on the right and jump on top. There's plenty of guns here and you can do some scavenging for blunt objects if you need some split shots. When you're ready, start the survival training at the top of the pillar. This is a very simple lap through. Just head to the subway station blasting everything in your way with split shots. Clear the way and make sure to sprint in between large gaps of zombies. Keep moving forward and shooting and you should be done within 30 seconds. There's a motorcycle nearby you can opt to pick up and drive it into the subway station. I got the Willamette population kill count here. 53,594 zombies which is an achievement. This is a stepping stone achievement. If you don't get it now, you'll get it at some point. You should also get 3 achievements for completing all of the survival trainings. One for completing all with bronze, one for completing all with silver, and one for completing all with gold. One quick little detour here, you can head up the stairs to the train station's locker room. You can find the components for the wrestler outfit here. The Mexican wrestler mask, Mexican wrestler outfit, and the Mexican wrestler boots are nearby and you can add them to the locker now. Afterwards, it's time to make your way for the main story objective marker. This is at the collector's house on the north side of Sunset Hills. Exit the train station and head to the northern streets of Sunset Hills. Continue to clear zombies in your way for kill efficiency. Save at the nearby porta potty if you wish and then head up past the barricade. You can hang a right and cross between the trucks, then pass through the broken wall to avoid some zombies and speed this up. As you approach the street again, you'll get a notification about Greta. Feel free to save her since she's on the way to the collector's house. You've been in the collector's house already as Angel. You've also got the majority of the collectibles in here. Just head inside and enter the door and you will get a cutscene. What you have to do now is work your way up to the second level via the stairs. Then pass through the amusing architecture to get to the master bedroom. If you missed any collectibles in here you should pick them up on the way. But once you're in the master bedroom an event will start. Your main objective is clear the room of zombies. Should be no problem with a split shot. 
Clear the zombies that are falling out of the sky. Afterwards, make sure to take the painting off the wall and deactivate the security. After the cutscene, you should jump back down to ground level. Clear some zombies and make sure to pick up the Pukes of Hazard blueprint. This is made with a lead pipe and chemicals. Make one now. In fact, make two, since the materials are here and we need to make 50 eventually. Clear the zombies around the area and one of them will drop the rudder arm. Make sure to pick this up. Next, head to the large propeller and blow up the barrel. You can pick up the altimeter afterwards. Now head to the left side of the house and wrap all the way around. You'll find a receipt on a crate. You need to pick this up. You'll have to go to Ingleton now. Kick open the gate and then work your way back to the garage and get in the SUV. Your location is right beside the Rancho Rama. You'll want a combo vehicle, so you can combine this SUV with a nearby car to make a junk car. You'll get a call about the Hunted and the South Almuda train station. For now, this is just a trip back to Ingleton, so I'm going to jump ahead. Use the North Bridge to get back. In Ingleton, you'll want to drive to the Rancho Rama. On the way, you can save Scott if you wish by heading westbound. Otherwise, wrap your way around to get to the south side of Ingleton. Brandon will need a rescue in the Big Buck Hardware Store. You can stop and rescue him if you want. Afterwards, enter the alley and head into the now open garage. If you still need Hail Mary kills, go ahead and make one now. Otherwise, smash the crate and collect the last piece of the plane. Your main goal is to return to the plane now. Thankfully, both the side quest and main objective are in South Almuda. Make your way to the Rancherama and make sure to stop and make a jack in the box. That's one more built. Now use the vehicle lot to grab a combo vehicle of your choice. Anything with a kills PP trial that you haven't finished is recommended. But I'm done all of them, so I picked up a turret rig. This is a simple drive back to South Almuda via the industry tunnel. I'm gonna skip ahead. When you get out of the tunnel, you should clear the zombies around Eva. Then you can jump out and hop over the barricade. You'll need to head all the way eastbound. Make your way to the ultimate shout location south of the illegal safe house. Now you should head up the staircase. You'll find spec ops here shooting at our boy Dougie. Take out the spec ops quickly with a split shot or equivalent weapon and then talk to Doug. Doug will join up now as a follower. You can drop him off at the nearby illegal safe house if you want, but I opted to just head towards the main objective marker. Blast your way to the south street. You can make a fork work nearby as you head westbound. Get inside and try and ditch Dougie. Turn left, loop around the construction site, and make your way for the plane hangar. It's a good idea to save your game now. When you enter the hangar, you'll get some cutscenes. Afterwards, you'll be in the secret underground lab. You're stripped of your items, and you'll have to do a very lengthy and annoying boss fight. There is a very specific inventory setup I'm going to suggest for you here, so pay close attention. Start by heading to the blueprint for the electric rake. Now grab two chemicals and use them to make acid jars. Grab a third chemical and healing items on this desk and then head to your right. Grab the materials for an electric rake by the door. This is a car battery and a leaf rake. Bank this and continue supply hunting. Head to the opposite end of the room to find two more chemicals. Make another set of acid jars. There will be another chemical by the explosive barrel. Grab it to make a third acid jar. Now you can grab the two explosives next to the door. This is just for a quick IED build for PP trial progress. Why not? We're here. You can use the remaining blunt objects and blades in this room to make iron edges or heavy metals. Neither are needed, but it's at your discretion. It's good to have some backup. Exit the door and head downstairs. You'll get another set of cutscenes at the bottom. This was my least favorite boss fight in the game, at least until I figured out this one simple trick. Your best chance for these loaders is to keep a medium distance and throw acid jars at them. This lets you avoid their annoying spinning attacks and does reasonably good damage. You should wait a little bit between throws to maximize your damage. When the first loader is down, you should head through the passageway it opens up. The next loader is exactly the same. You should be able to defeat it in about 3-4 to four acid jars to open up the next area. Pass through again. The third loader is exactly the same. Throw acid jars at it while staying a safe distance and avoiding the encroaching flames. Head through the fence that it destroys. Rinse and repeat for the fourth loader. Acid jars until it breaks. Then you'll want to head for the crates at the rear of the arena. Pass through and you'll get another cutscene. The chapter will end, it was nice that this one was a little shorter. You'll get the achievement The Doctor Is Out and also the Acid Rain Blueprint. The end of the main story is in sight now. You'll find yourself at the train station again, after a cutscene of course. 
Starting out, you probably have little to no inventory, so let's make sure to remedy that situation. Head forward and make an acid jar using the gun and the chemicals. Stockpile the second chemical for later. Use your remaining acid jars to make for the subway station. Once you're out of acid jars, make sure to swap to the acid rain to collect some kills. This aqueduct has a lot of blunt objects to collect, so make sure to stockpile some if you want and make some split shots. The dumpster with a tragic ending has quite a few blunt objects, so you can stockpile some there easily. Next, you should make a detour for the concrete pillar with the survival training once again. Lots of guns, explosives, and healing items here. Start by using a gun to make another acid rain. Make a few zars and some split shots if you brought some blunt objects with you. This is a final chance to finish the survival training as well since you're here, and if you haven't gotten a gold yet, make sure to do it. You'll get some calls about the hunted and the hotel, as well as Kenny, the final seven deadly sins psychopath. We'll be finishing them out along the way. If you want to make some PP trial progress, feel free to use the remaining shotguns and grenades here to make some boom cannons. No time like the present. Dump any leftovers you have over the edge so they don't get in your way. I did manage to finish building my boom cannons here, and that's one less thing to worry about. But we will have a dedicated section at the end of the guide, so don't worry if you didn't finish. When you're ready, make for the subway station. You can do the survival training for fun if you want. I know I did. Capcom Vancouver really wanted to make this last chapter as annoying as possible. Trust me. Head around the subway station and make your way to the top level. The newspaper boxes are considered blunt objects, so you can make some split shots here. Otherwise, at the top, try and open up the gate. You'll find that you're locked in here, for really no reason. Great. Head back to the main level of the subway now. Head back towards the aqueduct entrance and instead, head left into the doorway. Now climb up the stairs and interact with the console. Nothing. Drop down to ground level and head to the south side. Enter the open doorway and work your way around the maintenance area. Head to the console to find that the wire's been cut. Okay. Kick open the door and unlock it, and then double back all the way to the top side by the exit. This time, head behind the Colombian Roastmaster's counter to grab the wire. Head all the way back down to the main area and pass through the door to the maintenance area. This time, use the cable on the breaker box to fix it. Now you need to head back up to the control room. Head to the end, activate the console, and you'll finally have the gate open. Now, finally, head back to ground level and exit out to the streets of Sunset Hills. You'll be ambushed by bikers, but they shouldn't be a problem with a cacophony of strong combo weapons. Just blast them all in a few short bursts and you're free to go. The strip club slash karaoke bar is north, but we're going to finish out the side quests first. Head east and then turn yourself south to get out of Sunset Hills. Head to the nearby car and drive this to Central City. We're headed for the cruise ship for single white male. I took a quick detour to the Rancherama to grab a turret rig. This is the best general purpose combo vehicle in the game. Drive this south and work your way to the illegal safe house. When you get there, bail out and head up. You should use the locker here to grab a few split shots, a beer helmet, and an acid jar. Why not? When you're fully equipped, jump down to ground level and save at the nearby porta potty. Now make for the entrance to the yacht. Do your best to collect some kills with acid jars along the way. I managed to dump a full stack. Now enter the crystal of the sea and work your way to the door to activate the cutscene. Afterwards, you'll get into a battle with Kenny. Kenny is easily dispatched by shooting thousands of bullets directly into his face with a split shot. This is a very, very easy fight. You may get knocked around a little bit, but Kenny is pretty passive and dies easily to the split shot. When you win, you'll get a cutscene. You have a choice to save Kenny or not here. If you want to save Kenny, avoid using a split shot because he will mutiny if you hit him. Fun fact, but Kenny is like the only survivor in Dead Rising 3 capable of defecting. If he defects, you can just finish him off. You don't need to get all of the followers. If you want to rescue everyone, and you shot Kenny by accident, reload your save and try again. Rescue Regina when you're done. She'll join up with you as a follower as well. Regardless, you'll finish the side mission and get the Junk Ball Blueprint, Kenny's combo weapon of choice. Now that that's finished, it's time to head to the other side mission in Central City. Head eastbound to the Burgess Dawson Hotel after leaving the yacht. Head into the hotel now and climb the stairs to reach the top level. You'll find Merrill at the top. Prepare for the longest side quest in Dead Rising 3. Talk to Merrill for what feels like ages about her tragic backstory. She wants to stop off at each of the four districts, so I hope you're ready for Capcom Vancouver's favorite pastime, a complete lap of Los Perdidos. Exit back to ground level at the Burgess Dawson. You'll need to escort Merrill back to the hotel lobby. Head to the front desk and you'll get some dialogue here. While the dialogue runs, use the time to make some combo weapons nearby. Your next stop is the Charms of Desire Jewelry Store. Exit the Burgess Dawson on the north side and head northwest. Cross the street and save if you wish here. 
then head up the street before turning into an alley. Take another quick left and then make your way into the jewelry store. You'll get more dialogue from Merrill and then you're off to South Elmuda. This is basically at the illegal safe house on the east side. Head westbound out of the shopping street. You should then cross the street and look for a vehicle to speed this up. You don't care about Regina anymore, only Merrill. The AI seems to know that she has priority, thankfully. I made a junk car here. Get in loser, we're going to South Elmuda. Bye Regina. Head through the south bridge now. This is a straight shot to South Elmuda. You've done it quite a few times at this point. Unfortunately now there is quite a large military presence here on the bridge, so you'll need to get out and deal with them. Blast the military and then pass over the barricades. Sprint to the end of the bridge and look for a vehicle. There's an SUV nearby. It'll do. Drive Merrill into South Elmuda and then turn northbound and through the power plant. Then it's just another right turn and drive to the end of the street. Get out and you'll get some dialogue from Merrill. One more place down. The next stop is Ingleton. If you're desperate for some combo weapons, use the locker in the safe house. Otherwise, head westbound towards the industry tunnel. Time for a two for one. Crash into the barricade and then hop over it. You'll need to head into the industry tunnel on foot. Head westbound and past the bus station and then hop the barricade. The industry tunnel is on your right, so head north with Merrill to make for Ingleton. On the way, you'll encounter Lauren about to be executed in the hunted side quest. Blast the spec ops nearby and then untie Lauren for her to join you as a follower. Restock on weapons from the spec ops soldiers if you need some guns. Make a ZAR. You can equip Lauren if you want, but otherwise continue northbound. There's a van nearby and it's worth getting in. Make sure that at least Merrill is with you. This is a straight shot to the north side of Ingleton. Your goal is the cemetery. I opted to combine the van with the hearse into a junk truck. This is a two-seater, so bye Lauren. Drive your vehicle of choice into the cemetery. This is a good chance to get extra kills and make progress on gravestones if you're not done that, but you should be long done that one. Head to the mausoleum on the north side and kick it open. Meryl will tell you some more dialogue, this time it's about her son. You can make some combo weapons here. If you're not done the Metal Mary, there's materials, but you should be done basically everything at this point. Now it's time to head back out to the junk truck, it's time to head into Sunset Hills. Exit the cemetery onto the northern streets, then turn left and work your way to the motel. Pass it and you'll take another right onto the highway. Of course, avoid the plethora of cars and prison buses along the way. Now you should turn onto the highway and drive it all the way to the end. You've done this multiple times before, so you should know the way. You'll have to ditch your car when you get inside. Your goal is just to take Merrill home now. Thank god I got a call about Winnie on the North Bridge immediately after we already finished. We'll be heading back across it soon enough anyways. Head down the streets and pass by the trucks. Keep blasting zombies for kill progress and work your way to Merrill's house. This is close to the musician's house, it's just south of it. It's also by the tennis courts. There will also be lots of bikers around, so blast them if they're giving you any trouble. Now finally take Meryl to the front doors. She'll unlock the door to her house, revealing one of the final combo blueprints. You'll finish memory lane right here. Grab the combo blueprint for the electric chair. This is a car battery and a wheelchair, just like in Dead Rising 2. You should make your way to the karaoke bar now. This is your point of no return. You should double check everything is done that you need to have done at this point. You should have over 100 blueprints. You should have basically every collectible except one Frank statue. You should have all of the survival training finished with a gold medal. Basically, if you missed anything covered in the guide up to this point, you should go back and finish it right now. If you've kept up, you can continue. Head westbound down the street and Meryl will perish. She's like Tim Duggan, she always dies. Save if you want at the porta potty and head north into BB's box. Turn into the VIP area and you'll be met with a familiar face. Embrace the incoming cutscene. Gary will tell you to find Rhonda. Rhonda's back at the Rental Rama in Ingleton. Blast your way northbound now. Head all the way to the north side and make yourself a combo vehicle if you can. Otherwise, just grab anything and drive to the west side of the bridge. Winnie will be pinned down by Spec Ops. Once again, bail out and unload all over them to rescue Winnie. Now you should talk to her. That's yet another side quest complete and one more follower. You'll get a call about a stage in Central City. That's the last side quest, so blessed be. We'll handle it on the way to the final main story event. Make your way back to a combo vehicle and head into Ingleton. If Winnie manages to come with you, that's great. If not, doesn't matter. Inside Ingleton, you can stop and rescue Mike if you wish, but your target is to drive to the Rancho Rama. Head south and bail out of the car by the helicopter. 
Use combo weapons to clear your way southbound down the street. You can stop in Shanks for an ultimate reaper if you're really short on combo weapons, but otherwise just head to the prison bus and hop over. Ignore everything at this point and just make your way to Rhonda inside the Rancho Rama. You'll get a very mean-spirited cutscene. Afterwards, you'll have to head to Roy's Mart nearby for a medical kit. Exit the Rancho Rama and you'll be accosted by many Spec Ops soldiers. Blast your way to Roy's Mart. It's just across the street. Grab the first aid kit from the back room. Now just ignore the remaining Spec Ops and return to Rhonda. You do have insane amounts of time to get this completed, but just speedrun it. After you get back to Rhonda, you'll get another cutscene. You'll then have to collect some items from inside the Rancho Rama. These are all just close by, so grab them. The only odd one is the hinge, which is upstairs. Grab them all and then, oh, oh god. Combo Rhonda. You just can't make this stuff up. After the cutscene, you'll get the flamethrower blueprint. Now it's time to head back to Gary at BB's box. Head outside and start blasting the spec ops. Unfortunately, you can't make a combo vehicle right now, but there is a junk car in the car wreckage. Get inside and head eastbound. Then turn northbound to get to the north side of Ingleton. Rhonda will auto-follow you, but you can safely ditch Winnie here. As I pass the motel, turn right and head towards the highway. I lost my junk truck here, so just keep heading north to find a taxi. You can wait for Rhonda if you want, and then drive across the highway to get back to Sunset Hills. You can combine two cars together into a junk car if you want, or just stick with your taxi. Regardless, once you get inside Sunset Hills, you'll need to ditch your vehicle and head southbound. Eventually, you'll make it to BB's box on the right side. When you return to Gary with Rhonda, you'll get a cutscene, and Gary will open the door for you. Once you're inside, there's actually quite a lot to do before rescuing Katie, I, I mean Annie. There's a few outfits to grab, including the disco outfit. Next, you should start by clearing zombies in the main area. Now make sure to get the Jazz Hands Blueprint. This is MMA gloves and a handgun. These are, believe it or not, even stronger than split shots. As if it was possible. That was one of the final blueprints. Last up, head to the coat check at the back to find the final Frank statue. 70 of 70. One more PP trial complete on the way to Prestige Hound. Now that's all done, so head up and untie Annie. You'll get a cutscene here. You heard the man. Let's head to that plane. Exit BB's box and turn southbound on the streets. This is a straight shot out of Sunset Hills, so make for the southern exit. The only task left to do is the side quest in Central City. Stop by Ironside Motorcycles and make a mini bike here. Drive this to the exit. Back on the highway, get a car and combine it with another car to make a junk truck. You'll want to drive this all the way to the stage at the south side of Central City. Pass the hospital and turn right to find the stage. The final task is to help BB impersonator Adam as he awkwardly tries to hit on Nick. Oh, he's just my type! Hey, I'm not that kind of guy. Adam will need you to shoot the various speakers around the stage after some extremely lengthy dialogue. Just blast the speakers in a circle working your way left to right. These are all marked on your map, so just shoot them all and then talk to Adam again. Once you're finished, the last side quest, Loves a Drag, is complete, and that's all of them fully finished. Adam will join as a follower. Time to finish the main story. Head westbound and clear the streets of zombies. One final chance to stop at the illegal safe house to restock on weapons here. Getting a couple of pairs of jazz hands and some split shots is a very good idea. A single ZAR will also help immensely. Head to the bulletin board and check your perfect set of followers. Well, it would be if you recruited Kenny. Yes, there is always one blank space regardless of your progress. Drop off Adam here. If you didn't get the achievement earlier, quickly fill your posse with five members and then put them back in. Once you're restocked at the locker, you just need to head back to the hangar. There's nothing really new at this point, so I'll just fast forward there. You should know where the hangar is, you've been there many times before. Save at the porta potty outside just in case, and then head into the plane hangar for a series of cutscenes. This is the last boss fight in the main story. Immediately equip a ZAR and take two shots at the crane. Yeah, that, that encounter's over, alright. You'll get another cutscene now. This is followed by a very brief running sequence. Just head towards the crashed container and head up. Equip your jazz hands here. One more set of cutscenes followed by the final boss fight. Oh no, Red's betrayed us. Red is about as hard as any other psychopath so far. Your jazz hands are more powerful than split shots, so shoot him at point-blank range whenever you can. Red's gimmick is he will try and charge you, which causes you to drop your weapon. Try and do a tactical roll to dodge out of the way, but otherwise just keep blasting. It's a pretty fast fight maxed out at level 50. If Red does charge you, you'll drop your combo weapon, so just recover it. So long, Red. How ironic. Crushed to death by a shipping container. 
That's the end of Chapter 7. You'll get an achievement, them's the facts for completing, well, the facts. Of course, the game isn't over, just yet. General Hemlock's plan involves flying around snatching up those kings with drones. Your goal right now is to head to Ingleton and start the party. Head forward and get in Chuck's muscle car. Head for Ingleton now. Turn to your left and plow through the zombies, and then head north through the fireworks factory. <laughs> Never gets old, especially when you flip the car. Make a nearby fork work and hop on in. Chuck will get in the back. Drive the fork work northbound and head through the industry tunnel. Try and collect as many kills as you can here. When you get into Ingleton, head forward and then hang a quick right. Turn left at the end of the street and then pass by the basketball courts. Turn left after the gas station and bail out by the movie theater. Stop at the gun shop if you need weapons first, otherwise head to the top and enter the door for a cutscene. Once the cutscene's finished on the roof, you should grab some of the nearby guns. You can make split shots here. This is very important, but you do not want to kill the kings here. Your goal is to kill the drones. Hop down to ground level and start blasting at the drones as they leave the helicarrier. Try and destroy as many drones as you can on the initial drop-off. If some kings get hauled off by drones, you should make sure to blast the drones and not the kings. After that first initial volley, you'll need to head to the cemetery. Sprint there now. You can stop at the gun store to restock on some firearms along the way. Another set of drones will get dropped here. Do your best to clear out as many as you can. Some will get through, but you have a huge buffer of kings. As long as you're actively destroying most of the drones that come out, you will be fine. After that volley is finished, you're going to want to head to Central City. Get in the nearby hearse. Drive this a short distance and head into the funeral home garage. Lots of crowbars in here to stockpile or make split shots. Then drive the second hearse forward. Combine the two hearses into a junk car. Now it's time to head to Central City. Head south past the Chinese Opera House. Now you're going to want to hang a left to get onto the highway instead of going through the industry tunnel. Drive eastbound down the highway and make it to Central City. You are in a little bit of a rush, but overtime mode is actually a lot simpler and easier than you'd expect. If you've got a pulse, you can complete it fairly easily. In Central City, your goal is to get to the museum. Drive around the same way you always have and then loop around to the museum. Once again, keep the kings alive here. You're after the drones. If all of the kings are gone, the helicarrier will move to the next area. You should arrive at the museum with time to spare. Look around for gun restocks or healing items. There's plenty around this area. Make split shots and czars. I hung out at the T-Rex statue until the helicarrier arrived. Once again, do not kill the kings. Shoot the drones as they leave the carrier. With good positioning and a little bit of luck, you should be able to take out the vast majority of drones. The next stop is by the stage in Central City. Head south down the street. Clear the zombies in your way until you get there. At the road, turn left and wait nearby. Do not kill the kings once again. Restock on supplies and shoot the drones as they come out. I was a little bit late here so I had to shoot the drones as they were picking up kings. This isn't really a big deal. Just shoot as much as you can. The next stop is in Sunset Hills. Save and get into a nearby car. You'll want to head back to the east side of Central City and head northbound. If you want or your vehicle blew up, you can stop at the rental rama Grab a combo vehicle here. Anything's good, but the turret rig is my personal favorite, so I grabbed a junk truck instead. This is another drive around to Sunset Hills. I feel like this is the most driven route in the game for some reason. Regardless, you know the way at this point. Loop around Central City and then loop around on the highway. Sunset Hills is barricaded once again, so you'll have to bail out. Head up the stairs on the right side and make for the objective marker. Thankfully, the kings are close by. And again, don't kill the kings. <laughs> Wait for the helicarrier to arrive and then shoot the drones as they're unloaded. Then shoot any drones that snatched up some of the kings before moving on. This is just a quick trip eastbound to Speedy Espresso. Don't shoot the kings, shoot the drones. Keep blasting the drones as soon as they spawn and you should be able to finish here. You may not finish here though. If you didn't, just continue to shoot the drones and follow Hemlock wherever he's going. He'll hit up South Elmuda for sure after Sunset Hills and then continue to loop around the various areas. Keep following him and keep blasting the drones until you're finished. After you defeat enough drones, you'll get a cutscene which is then followed by the final battle with Hemlock. Top designers at Capcom Vancouver missed the memo here. This is supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one fist fight. 
Hemlock's brought the fist, but Nick here's packing some serious heat. If you're at a distance, Hemlock will pull a grenade launcher out. Not a problem. Get onto the stone circle. Hemlock will pull out his fists. A poor decision. Absolutely nothing is stopping you from shooting Hemlock directly in the face with jazz hands. I guess jazz hands are technically fist weapons. This should be a very quick fight. Just kite Hemlock around with jazz hands and he should go down in seconds. Extremely simple fight this time around and a great way to end the game. For beating overtime mode, you'll get an achievement complete package. You'll get the blueprint for Massive Bomb as well as the Mega Man X outfit now. One more set for the locker. You'll also get access to all of Chapter Select now and that's our next goal. We have a long way to go for Prestige Hound. Save your game and then return to the menu. Unfortunately, it's time for easily the worst part of all achievements for Dead Rising 3. This is completing the majority of the remaining PP trials before we get back to what I would actually consider meaningful content. This will be a little abstract, and you may have different completion rates for your builds. I'm going to go through what I need to build and finish building. If you'd like a more comprehensive guide, there will be a supplementary video on the channel dedicated to building combo weapon PP trials. Time to rip the band-aid off and get started. Start with Chapter Select and choose Chapter 1. Chapter 1 has everything we need for most of the building trials close by, thankfully. Unfortunately, we'll be here for about two hours. After the cutscene and you get control, you should check what you need to build. There will likely be a lot of progress on some, and virtually no progress on some of the other PP trials. You should start by building a turret rig. After the cutscene, head back inside the Rancho Rama. Start by making a jack-in-the-box. Once again, this is a cardboard box and toy robot. You can just dump this somewhere. May as well start with the most nearby combo weapon, Pukes of Hazard. This is made with a blunt object and a chemical. Use the large wrench stockpile and motor oil nearby to make Pukes of Hazards. You'll want to dump off completed Pukes of Hazards somewhere out of the way. This will give you more room for combines. Grab motor oil and large wrench and make Pukes of Hazards until you've depleted the stockpile. Rhonda will give you lots of encouragement as you do this. Continue to fill your inventory and dump the completed pukes of hazards somewhere out of the way. The center of the Rancho Rama works just fine. Now it's just a matter of repeating this until you've completely depleted the stash of large wrenches and motor oils. Once the stash is depleted, it's time to move on to other weapons to build. We'll have to do this loop several times to complete the 50 total combines. Turn to your left and head to the tire racks. Grab two tires and combine them into Kenny's weapon of choice, the Junk Ball. This is a miscellaneous plus miscellaneous combine. Continue to combine tires into junk balls until your inventory is full. Then once again, dump them off somewhere out of the way. Proceed to deplete the tire racks of all the tires and make junk balls out of everything. Repeat this process until all tires are depleted. There are still more combines available to do in Chapter 1. Head outside the Rental Rama now. You should head southbound and into You Break We Fix It. You came here as Brad. You'll want to head to the back of the store and grab a full inventory of nail guns from the bin. That's eight total nail guns. Now you should exit and head northbound. You're going to head into Aduna Boxing Gym now. There is a lap you can do around Aduna Boxing Gym for gloves. Grab a pair on your left and make a dragon punch by combining gloves with your machinery. This is a nail gun in this case. Now jump into the ring and grab the next two pairs of gloves in here and combine it into another two sets of dragon punches. Continue to the back exit, near where the tenderizer's blueprint was, and grab another pair of gloves and craft them into a dragon punch. Next, go into the locker rooms. There's lots of gloves in here, so work your way around crafting dragon punches along the way. You should be able to make 8 dragon punches total every trip into a Duna boxing gym. Now dump your inventory of dragon punches now, although you may want to save one for an emergency. Your goal now is to run back to the southern street. Turn left and head towards the gun store. On the way, you can punch the glass and make a beer hat using the servebot mask and the life preserver. This is helmet plus miscellaneous. You can pick up a miscellaneous briefcase on the ground and smash the glass for a blank mask on the other side of the theater. That's two beer hats every time you head to the gun store. Now dump your inventory and actually go into the gun store. You'll need to make boom cannons here. Use the gun rack to grab four guns and then the nearby grenade box to get four grenades. Combine a gun and grenade into a boom cannon. When your inventory is filled, dump them somewhere out of the way. 
As usual, you want to repeat this process until you've completely depleted the gun store's supply of guns and grenades. You should make some serious progress on boom cannons. If you finished early since we've made a lot of boom cannons through the main story, you should swap to building IEDs using two grenades. Keep making IEDs with two grenades until the supply runs dry. At this point, you should save your game and then restart chapter 1. That's lap 1 finished. This is going to be repeating these laps over and over and over again until you finish all 50 creations required for the PP trials. This will get old very quickly. I'll be abbreviating the steps moving forward. Inside chapter 1, make a turret rig and then return to the garage. Make as many pukes of hazard as you can using large wrench and motor oils. Dump them in the center of the wrench rama Deplete the stockpile. Make sure to make a jack-in-the-box using a cardboard box and toy robot nearby. After you've made the jack-in-the-box and pukes of hazard, move to the back of the wrench rama to make junk balls. Combine two tires into a junk ball. When you have full inventory, dump them somewhere out of the way, then return to make as many junk balls as possible. Once you've depleted all resources in the Rancho Rama, dump your inventory. You'll want to head south again into You Break, We Fix It. Inside, as usual, grab a full inventory of nail guns from the back of the store. Once again, head northbound and make your way to the Aduna Boxing Gym. Inside Aduna, combine the 8 nail guns with 8 gloves that you find as you do a lap around the gym. That's 8 more dragon punches down. When you're finished in the gym, dump your inventory, then it's off to the gun store once again. Head south and turn east when you hit the streets. You can make another two beer helmets on the way and you should absolutely do this. Just make sure to grab the briefcase by the Blanca mask to make the second beer hat. Afterwards, it's just straight into the gun store. Make boom cannons if you're not finished. If you are finished, that weapon, swap to making exclusively IEDs. This is two grenades. As usual, when your inventory is full, dump everything somewhere out of the way. Deplete the grenade stockpile in the gun store. When you're done, save your game and once again restart chapter 1. This is lap 3. You'll want to repeat this lap until you're finished the PP trials for most of the weapons. Basically keep doing this first basic loop and eventually finish what you need for the PP trial. Then you can start to make adjustments. I finished the Pukes of Hazard on my third run and that adjusts the route by quite a bit actually. Otherwise it is fairly similar. Make a jack in the box, continue to work down junk balls, and then head into We Break You Fix to grab 8 nail guns and run north to Aduna Boxing Gym. Make 8 dragon punches using the various gloves and the stockpiled nail guns here. Afterwards again you should head to the gun store making sure to make 2 beer helmets along the way. Then inside work down your boom cannons and or IEDs. Eventually you will finish Pukes of Hazard, Junk Ball, IED and Boom Cannons and that will adjust the route. I finished IEDs on my third pass. This time, it's time to make some acid rains. Grab 8 guns from the gun store and hang south back to You Break We Fix It. Head to the back of You Break We Fix It and combine a gun with a chemical. Repeat this 8 times for 8 acid rains. After that, save your game. Now restart chapter 1 once more. Fourth lap for me. This lap will start to make more adjustments. It starts exactly the same. Make as many junk balls as you can. I finished quickly here. Now make sure to grab two extra tires. Now quickly make a jack-in-the-box using the cardboard box and toy robot. Make sure that you have two tires in your inventory and then make the turret rig to get out of here. Exit the turret rig and head south into You Break It, We Fix It. Your two tires can be combined with the two toys in here, the toy robot and the toy bear to make two more jack-in-the-boxes. Make these now and dump them somewhere out of the way. Next, you'll want to restock on nail guns from the bins. Eight more nail guns. Now exit You Break, We Fix It. Head northbound and make your way to a Duna Boxing Gym. This is the same as before. Just make 8 dragon punches by doing a lap around a Duna Boxing Gym. When you're finished, dump them and exit. Now the route is going to change a little bit. We still need to make laser swords. The combine is blade and chemical. Head out to Shanks and grab 8 bladed weapons. Motor oil counts as chemicals, so exit and head back to the Rancherama. Use the box of motor oils nearby to turn your 8 bladed weapons into flaming swords. Make 8 and then dump them somewhere. There is still chemicals here and we need to make acid rains. Go ahead and restock on 8 motor oils. And now it's time to head to the gun store. This time drive the turret rig since it's here and it's a lot less annoying. And you can farm some zombie kills while you're doing this. Get to the gun store and exit. Combine 8 guns with 8 motor oils to make 8 acid rains. Now dump them. Once you've made 8 acid rains, grab 8 more guns or 6 if you're me. Head outside and make two beer helmets here using the display materials from outside of the theater. With your 6-8 to eight guns, head back to the Rancherama. Now combine your remaining guns with motor oils to make more acid rains. This should deplete the motor oils in the Rancherama. You can save now and restart the chapter. 
Pass 5 is pretty much identical to the last pass. Make a jack in the box and grab two tires. Make your way to you break, we fix it. Worth noting here is that using the knee drop now is a good idea. You need knee drop kills and you're basically unarmed. It's a win-win scenario. Inside, we break, you fix it. Create another two jack in the boxes using the tires and toys nearby. Now pick up eight nail guns. Head north into a Duna boxing gym and combine the eight gloves with eight nail guns to make eight dragon punches. Afterwards, it's into Shanks to pick up another eight bladed weapons. Head back down to the Rama and make eight flaming swords by combining blades with motor oils. Dump the flaming swords and grab yourself another eight motor oils. And now it's time to head back to the gun store once again. Combine your eight motor oils with eight guns to make another eight acid rains. Once those acid rains are made, ditch them and pick yourself up eight more guns for the road. Time to double back to the Rancho Rama. Making a beer hat or two along the way is optional. Also, feel free to blow zombies away with your guns as you make your way back to the Rancho Rama. Kills are kills. Back inside, combine the six to eight guns you have left with the motor oils inside the Rancho Rama to make more acid rains. When that's done, save your game and restart chapter one. Lap six, here we go. Two tires and a jack in the box before opening up the door. Enter you break, we fix it. Two more jack in the boxes in here, followed by eight nail guns to go. Back up to Aduna Boxing Gym, eight more dragon punches. Thankfully, this finished my dragon punches. Adjustments ahoy next lap. Dump your inventory and then grab eight blades from Shanks nearby. Double back to the Rancho Rama. Make yourself eight flaming swords, then dump them. Now restock on eight motor oils and drive yourself or hoof it to the gun store. Make another eight acid rains here and then dump them. Go ahead and restock on six to eight more guns. If you want to make some beer helmets on the way back to the Rancho Rama, be my guest. Back inside, make another six to eight acid rains using the guns and motor oils. One more lap down, save and restart chapter one. Lap seven, lucky number seven. Same deal, a jack in the box and two tires to go. Next, make the turret rig. Head south into you break, we fix it. Two more jack in the boxes. New to this pass is grabbing chemicals instead. Pick up eight household cleaners since we're done dragon punches. Head north now and enter Shanks. This is a little bit of an adjustment, but make eight more flaming swords using the chemicals and blades in here. Through diligence earlier in the main story, I managed to finish my flaming swords here. Dump everything else. Next, head back into a Duna boxing gym. We still need gloves. This time we're making jazz hands. Do a lap of a Duna boxing gym collecting eight pairs of gloves. Now head back into the gun store once again. Combine a pair of gloves with a gun to make jazz hands. Repeat this process until you have eight sets of jazz hands and then drop them all. Grab another six to eight guns and make your way back to the Rancho Rama. Two beer hats on the way are optional. Keeping a pair of jazz hands for some kills is also not a terrible idea. Make another set of acid rains now using the guns and motor oils. Afterwards, this is time for a little bit of weirdness. Head to the back and grab seven tires. Keep a pair of jazz hands on you. Head southbound, but this time head back into Sunny Luck Fortune. Pass through and head to the Dragon Mask. Combine the Dragon Mask with a tire for a beer helmet. Now exit to the street southbound. Clear your way towards the Chinese Opera House. Use the door to enter the shortcut. Grab another Dragon Mask and use it to make a beer helmet with a stockpiled tire. On the way out, grab the bucket and turn it into a beer helmet as well. Inside the Chinese Opera House now, head up the stairs and grab the Blanca Mask. You guessed it, combine this into another beer helmet. There's another dragon mask on your left, so make that into a beer helmet too. By the way, most of the planters count as miscellaneous, so you can use those if you ever run out of tires. On your right is another few dragon masks as well as buckets. Combine the nearby ones into beer hats. You can also head to the original flaming helmet location and make one now. It's motor oil plus mask. Save your game now and restart chapter 1. Lap 8. Getting bored? Two tires and a jack in the box. Make the turret rig. Head south into you break, we fix it, and make yourself two more jack in the boxes. That's halfway for me, oh boy. Fill your inventory with household chemicals now. Route adjustment this time. Make your way to the gun store. I managed to finish my last few acid rains here, thankfully. Grab eight guns and we're heading off to a Duna boxing gym now. Clear zombies with the guns along the way, but don't fully deplete any of them. In Aduna Boxing Gym, it's one more lap to make another eight pairs of jazz hands. Now go ahead and exit Aduna Boxing Gym. Going back to make some more beer helmets. Sprint back to the Rancho Rama now. Ditch your jazz hands and pick up a healthy amount of tires. Now leave and head back over the south ramp. Head through Sunny Luck Fortune and start the beer hat route. 
Grab a bucket on the way out of Sunny Luck Fortune, that's a beer hat. Dragon mask on the picnic table, beer hat. On the way to the Chinese Opera House, grab the two pylons, that's two beer hats, my dude. Now head into the shortcut. Dragon mask is in here, plus tire equals another beer hat. One more bucket at the top, and that's one more beer hat. Now you'll want to grab some planters and combine them with the masks around the Chinese Opera House. You can make another three beer hats around this main plaza easily. One last beer helmet, using dragon mask plus planter. One more bucket along with a table means another beer hat. Finally, grab the motor oil and combine it with the dragon mask into a flaming helmet. That's one more lap down. Save your game. This time you should check your PP trial progress and then go ahead and restart chapter 1 once again. Lap 9. I wonder how many laps will do. Standard stuff, jack in the box, and two tires. Now head southbound, grab a hunk of meat along the way, then enter you break we fix it. Two more jack in the boxes please. Fill your inventory with household cleaner now, then exit. Head to the Chinese Opera House now. Flaming helmets are on the menu this time. This is for no reason other than I'm bored to tears currently, and I wanted to switch it up. Inside, combine the cleaner and the mask to make flaming helmets. Dump these as you make them. Do a lap around the Chinese Opera House grabbing masks and buckets and making as many flaming helmets as you can. When you're done, grab some small potted plants and then head to the shortcut. One bucket and make yourself a beer hat. Dragon mask inside the tunnel is another beer hat or flaming helmet. Next, exit to the southern street. You'll want to head up the street now to get close to Sunny Luck Fortune. Make a beer hat at the picnic table, then another beer hat with the bucket. Now head through Sunny Luck Fortune. This is a sprint to the gun store once again. On the way, make another two beer hats by the movie theater. Afterwards, head into the gun shop and grab eight guns. Clear your way through the streets and make your way to Aduna Boxing Gym once again. One lap of Aduna means eight more jazz hands. Progress. Save your game now. Check how much left there is to go, cry silently to yourself, and then restart chapter one. Lap number 10. Same deal, two tires and a jack in the box. Down to you break, we fix it for another two jack in the boxes and an inventory full of chemicals. Outside, head right and make your way straight to the Chinese Opera House. Inside, proceed to make as many flaming helmets as you can. Use all the nearby dragon heads, Blanca mask, and buckets inside to make flaming helmets with your stockpiled chemicals. When you've used up all the masks, restock on some nearby small planters or handbags. Then you should head northbound through the shortcut tunnel. There's a bucket and a dragon mask here for two beer helmets or flaming helmets. Then head outside to the streets. Head towards the north side again, grabbing two pylons along the way. A nearby briefcase means you can make a beer hat. The nearby motor oils can be used for flaming helmets. Picnic table means a flaming helmet, and then bucket by Sunny Luck Fortune is a beer hat. Exit and head back northbound. Your goal is the gun store once again. Make your way there and grab some buckets, bags, and pylons as you work up the right side. These can be made into beer hats easily. The movie theater has two more beer hats. Afterwards, just get to the gun store and fill your inventory with guns. Eight more to be exact. Leave and head for a Duna Boxing Gym blasting everything in your way. More kills equals more gooder. Inside a Duna Boxing Gym is another eight jazz hands. Oh boy, just over halfway done the jazz hands. Save, check your trial progress if you want, and then restart chapter one yet again. Lap number 11. Two tires and a jack in the box, if you please. Southbound once again, this is two more jack in the boxes and you break, we fix it. Fill your inventory with chemicals. Thankfully, beer helmets are almost finished for me at least. You can use a pylon by the fire truck to make an extra flaming helmet along the way. This is once again a straight run to the Chinese Opera House. Inside, make as many flaming helmets as you can. Use all of the masks you can find with your stockpiled chemicals. When you're finished in the pavilion, head down and grab some handbags along the way. Use the bucket and dragon mask in the tunnel to make yourself a beer helmet or flaming helmets. Exit now and head back towards the picnic area northbound. Grab the two pylons along the way. Pass the barrier and make two more flaming helmets using the motor oils. Now it's just a trip to the gun store. Head northbound. You can stockpile two buckets and some pylons along the way. Get to the movie theater and grab a few beer hats now. When you're done, it's off to the gun store once again. Grab eight more guns, then leave. Kill your way back to a Duna boxing gym on the north side. Inside, make eight more pairs of jazz hands using gloves with your stockpiled guns. That's the end of that lap. Save your game, check your progress, and then restart chapter one. Lap 12. Feeling a little like torture at this point, but we're actually getting very close. Two tires and a jack in the box. Back in the U break, we fix it. Two more jack in the boxes, followed by an inventory full of chemicals. Head to the Chinese Opera House now. Make a flaming helmet along the way by the fire truck. 
Now just get to the Chinese Opera House and grab yourself as many flaming helmets as you can. Dragon Mask plus Chemical. Bucket plus Chemical. Blanca Mask plus Chemical. When you've cleared the area, head into the tunnel. There's another bucket and dragon mask in here for two more flaming helmets. Now you can exit out to the streets. Grab a couple of pylons as you pass through the street and combine them with two motor oils on your left. That's two more flaming helmets. Stop by and grab another dragon mask on the picnic table for another one. Now off to the gun store once again. On the right side there's a slew of pylons and buckets you can stockpile if you want. Otherwise just get to the movie theater, make two more beer hats here. Thankfully, I managed to finish my beer hats this pass. This simplifies the route a little bit. Back in the gun store once again. Eight more guns, please. Kill your way back to Aduna Boxing Gym and make another eight pairs of jazz hands using the gloves inside. That's one more lap done. Save your game, check your progress, and restart chapter one. Lap 13 in our torturous quest for Prestige Hound. Unlucky 13. Two tires followed by one jack in the box. Back down to you break we fix it, good old two jack-in-the-boxes and an inventory full of chemicals. Head back to the Chinese Opera House. Stop and make a flaming helmet by the fire truck. Off to the Opera House again. And once again it's another set of flaming helmets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven flaming helmets. Ah, ah, ah. And conveniently that was also my last set. With all the helmets completed we're over a big hurdle. Head back to the gun store now. I also managed to finish my 50 knee drop kills here. 13 is supposed to be unlucky? Ignore everything and get yourself back to the gun store and grab another 8 guns. Blast your way into a Duna boxing gym and prepare to make another 8 jazz hands. Thankfully what happens when you do things in sets of 8 and the target is 50, you don't actually need to do a full final set. Only 2 combines and we're finally done making jazz hands. Not that we're not going to use them later on. Save your game. We're finally done in chapter 1, for now. The last set of combines is the Jack in the Box. Basically the first one we started tracking. Head back to chapter select and this time choose chapter 4. Chapter 4 has easy access to a weapons locker. You should head into the communications tower and head to the back room to find the locker. Grab yourself a full inventory of toys, 8 little serve bots please. Exit back out to the communications tower now. There are a lot of miscellaneous items nearby the staircases. There's paint cans, pallets, tires, and boxes all over the place. You should go ahead and do your combines now for 8 additional jack-in-the-boxes. Now save your game and do it over exactly the same. Thankfully this was my last lap. Inside, 8 more serve bots from the locker and 8 final combines. That was pretty awful but thankfully it only took 2 hours. Now if you're not finished all of your combines, you can finish by exclusively using this weapon locker. It's slower than my routes because you can only make 4 combines per loading screen due to locker energy. This is really slow, mostly because of the huge number of harsh loading screens you'll have to endure, but you may prefer to do your combines this way. That's your choice. Now it's time to make sure you're finished all of the PP trials for building before continuing with the guide. These are actually tracked for once so you can make sure that you finish them all. Do any combines that you didn't finish at this point. But there is one final task in chapter 4. We should do the final wrap up on combo weapons that you have not built yet. Save your game and then use chapter select to get back into chapter 4. Chapter 4 again has access to an easy weapons locker. You should make sure to make any weapons you have not crafted yet. If you kept up with me in the guide I'll go over the final ones that I missed. You may have missed a few yourself so if you know which ones you missed just make those now. And if you didn't, well you're gonna have to work through it systematically. The first combo weapon I haven't built is the tactical handgun. You get this at the end of chapter 0. Head to the locker and grab the flashlight from electronics and then a handgun from firearms. Combine these into a tactical handgun and then save. Next is the flamethrower. Head to the locker and grab a cooking oil or anything from chemicals and then a leaf blower from mechanical. Combine these together into a flamethrower. We got this one after we uh, comboed Rhonda. Finally in this lap you need to make a set of mini chainsaws. This is a chainsaw from mechanical and a machete from blades. Yes, even though you got one from Ravi, you didn't build it. Build yourself a pair now. Now you should save and restart chapter 4. Alright, time for some of the more annoying ones. We need to make every iteration of the Freedom Bear, the Big Bomb, and finally the Buffet Carts. That should cover what's left. You should head to the locker inside and grab materials for Freedom Bear. This is Robot Bear and an LMG. Combine these together into a Freedom Bear. Next, head back to the locker and grab yourself a wheelchair. This will make a Pushy Bear. Now you need to make the final iteration, the Grizzly Bear. Grab a dynamite from the locker and combine it with Pushy Bear to make a Volatile Bear. 
Finally, head back to the locker and grab a portable stereo. Combine this with Volatile Bear to make the Grizzly Bear. Way too many Freedom Bear variants. Save your game, but don't restart the chapter just yet. The Buffet card is super annoying to build, but it's easiest to make all of the iterations in Sunset Hills. Grab a combo weapon of your choice to clear zombies along the way. Split shots are pretty good. Anything will work, though. Exit the communications tower now and head to the south exit of Sunset Hills. You can stop at the Speedy Espresso for an elemental staff if you want. Now head westbound. Beside the laundromat in an alley are materials for all the buffet cart iterations. Start by picking up the ham and lettuce nearby. You should then pick up the drink cart. Combine the nearby drink cart and ham to make the buffet cart. Then combine the buffet cart with the lettuce to make the meat buffet cart. Hilarious. You sure showed those vegetarians, didn't ya? Now you can safely drop this. We'll need to head directly north to finish these off. Head northbound past severed ties and jump the wall to find the parking lot and stairs. Search the dumpsters on your left to find a ham, lettuce, and large soda. To your right is another drinks cart. This time, combine the ham and drinks cart into a buffet cart again. Now, combine the large soda with the buffet cart to make the drink buffet cart. Finally, combine the lettuce with the drink buffet cart to make the ultimate buffet cart. Once that's done, you can save your game. You can reset your chapter to chapter 4 one more time. It's time to finish out the last of the blueprints with a bang. The final combo blueprint to build are the iterations of the Enormous Bomb. You get the blueprint at the very end of the game, so you probably haven't built it yet. Start by heading to the locker as usual. You'll want to pick up all of the items first, it just makes this combined sequence go a little bit smoother. Start by heading into explosives and picking up an RPG, then a propane tank, and a grenade. Next, pick up a gasoline canister. Finally, you should head to the electronics tab and grab a microwave. That's all for the grabbing. Time to combine. Start by combining the RPG and propane tank together into a big bomb. Next, add the grenade to make a bigger bomb. Next, er, is to add the gasoline canister to make it into the huge bomb. Finally, add the microwave to turn it into the enormous bomb. Feel free to head to the street to try this out, but that's the last of the combines we need to do. At this point, you should spend your points to max out your combo crafting speed and grab the very useful Indestructible Vehicles final upgrade. That should be a maxed out nick. If you thought the PP trials were done, oh boy, you're in for a shock. We're just getting started. We've grinded more than any person should, but it's time to grind some more. This time it's for the combat-based PP trials. Head to Chapter Select and choose Chapter 6. I'll explain along the way. Start by heading left and making yourself an elemental staff using the components by the lift. Now head outside to the streets of South Almuda. Swapping your elemental staff to ice is recommended here. Check your PP trials now. You'll need to complete the various skill moves a lot of times. At least a hundred for most of them. Check your menu for how to complete these skills specifically, but basically you need to get around 500 to 700 kills using skill moves. Yes, it's a lot. These are tied to your directional stick directions, plus neutral. So stick center, stick up, stick right, stick down, and stick left. I would recommend working these through systematically. Work from neutral and then clockwise starting at the top. To get started on these, run into a group of zombies and blast them with an ice shot. They should give you enough kills for a skill move. Perform a skill move using Y plus B plus whatever direction you're currently working on. This is not glamorous, and it's not really anything worth noting. Just keep running around, blasting groups of zombies, and performing skill moves. This video has been long enough already, so I'll be going through this part quickly, but basically, just spend time running around collecting kills and performing skill moves. I had to do pretty much all of these from zero. If you made some progress through the main story, you'll have a bit of a head start on me. I just opted to work my way through South Almuda to the highway, and then I headed over to Central City via the bridge. Ditch your vehicle when you get inside Central. Continue taking shots at zombies and performing skill moves when you get a combo going. You'll also want to save periodically as you do this. Very important to save, you don't want to lose progress to a crash. Through Central, I opted to clear the South Safe Zone. This gives you access to a locker, which I used to grab more elemental staffs. This is just a way to keep this going a little longer without a reset. Continue to work your way up the street eastbound, collecting kills until you get past the hospital. One of the more annoying combat PP trials is to defeat football player zombies with the shoulder tackle. The best way to accomplish this is to freeze them, and then back off, sprint into them, and perform the shoulder tackle. 
Football zombies are in various locations around Los Perdidos. Most notably are the stage in South Central, then by Sport Trans in North Central City. The next major density are at the school in the southwest and then southeast side of Sunset Hills, very close to Speedy Espresso. You'll need to do many tackles. There is a PP trial for generic zombies killed with the tackle, but the easiest way to get the generic ones is actually to do them all on football zombies. You are simply too powerful with the elemental staff at level 50, and uh, everything will die, so you need some beefier targets to freeze. And killing zombies outright with the shoulder tackle is very annoying. When you're in Central City and you see a football zombie, try and freeze it and tackle it for progress. When you're done with Central, head up to Sunset Hills and continue focusing on trying to freeze and tackle football zombies on the way. In the middle of the highway, there are actually some football zombies here. And of course, make sure to keep collecting your skill move progress. Once you get into Sunset Hills, you can do a lap of Sunset, and once you're done Sunset, you should save and restart the chapter and continue farming kills until you've finished all the PP trials. This is not glamorous, just keep running laps until you finish all of the combat-based PP trials. Finally, you should be done with the various kill PP trials for all the weapons from following this guide. If you aren't, just go ahead and enter Chapter 4, and use the locker to quickly grab weapons that you may have not finished the kill trials yet. This is just a matter of heading outside, exhausting the weapons, and then saving and restarting Chapter 4, but you should have done all of the weapon kills during the main game. It took me just under 90 minutes to get the remaining combat-based PP trials from start to finish. It's pretty brutal and very obnoxious, but you'll have to do it if you want the glory of all the achievements, and at this point, I'm regretting my decision. Before you leave this section, there should only be one PP trial left. Well, actually, it's two to three, but it's tiered and it's zombie kills, and we need to get a lot of them. But once that's done, it's finally time to move on. The next task is Nightmare Mode. Now it's time to do Nightmare Mode. The only real differences here are that you have less time to complete the game and you'll take more damage essentially. The only other nuance is that you cannot quick save. You'll have to save at restrooms slash porta potties like the other Dead Rising games. This shouldn't be an issue. I've been subconsciously training you throughout the entire guide as to where these porta potties are. There isn't really much to explain here. This is just a very stripped down playthrough of Dead Rising 3. You should ignore the vast majority of side objectives and simply focus on the main story. Continuing to kill zombies is a priority, so use whatever you can to make progress. Any downtime you have while waiting for main story progress is time spent driving around in combo vehicles for kills. This should take you around 3 hours to complete. My time was about 2 hours 20 minutes. Since you've already played the full game at this point, I'll be abbreviating the core steps. I would also recommend skipping cutscenes as well for time's sake. Start a new game of Nightmare Mode now. Cutscenes once again are optional. The tutorial is a simple pass through, just run to the Dilly Diner. Make a sledge saw and then head to the car and drive directly to the Rancher Rama. Inside you can make some combo weapons or at least stockpile some crowbars. This is a chance for a tactical handgun using a flashlight and handgun if you missed it earlier, but you shouldn't. Next you'll want to go ahead and make a beeline for the gun store. Crafting two beer helmets along the way should have you situated for healing items for the entirety of Nightmare Mode. Inside the gun store, grab materials to make split shots. These will be your go-to weapon for this playthrough. Making a czar or two is a good idea. When you're stocked up, you'll want to complete the side objective at the motel. This is because you are forced to wait around anyways, so you may as well get access to this safe house at least. This is a quick trip to the east and west sides of Ingleton. You'll notice that time progresses a lot faster in Nightmare Mode so you'll get calls a lot earlier than you're used to. Otherwise, just finish the side quest to unlock access to illegal safe houses. I still had some time, so I opted to take Anna and do Garden of Peace, but it's totally optional. Xi does melt with jazz hands though, even in nightmare mode. I went ahead and got the southern safe house unlocked and cleared it as well. I grabbed a restock of jazz hands and split shots from the locker. After that, it's time to head back to Rhonda and wait to finish chapter zero. Now on to Chapter 1. Chapter 1 is a quick driving segment followed by a boss fight with Hunter aka SRG. Clear the highway using the turret rig, doing your best to collect kills. Save at the storage units, just in case. Next, the boss fight is a joke. Just blast your way through the first 10 bikers, and then when SRG himself makes an appearance, you can just unload on him. He'll die very quickly at level 50. That's Chapter 1 over and done with. 
Chapter 2 is a lot shorter without side quests. Make yourself a roller hog and then just head straight into Ingleton. Now head for the utility company and pass through the sewers. Run the tunnel gauntlet murking all the zombies with split shots or jazz hands and then enter the cemetery. Get to the end, meet up with Gary and have a wacky adventure. Finally just drive the hearse to the strip club and that's chapter 2 over and done with. Chapter 3, the longest chapter. Oh joy. Head south and make a fresh roller hog by the hardware store. Now you'll want to head up to the highway and drive to the hangar in South Almuda, collecting as many zombie kills as possible. Afterwards, you'll be sent to Sunset Hills to meet with the illegals at the comm tower. Once again, make combo vehicles and collect kills as you drive there. You know the way at this point. Lauren will want her ring box and tattoo kit. That means you're heading north to the construction site, grabbing MacGuffin 1 from the safe house. Then you head south to the school, grab MacGuffin 2, and head back to Lauren. Save in the comms tower, and it's time for a lap around the districts. Head outside and clear the three cameras in Sunset Hills, and then get a combo vehicle and drive south to Central City. Destroy the two relays in Central City, grab a new vehicle, and head into South Almuda. Take out the first supply drop in the warehouse, and then double back to Almuda Farms. Save at a porta potty nearby. I really appreciate that the slowest, most annoying 7 Deadly Sin psychopath is the one that's mandatory. Once you've beaten Albert, take out the supplies. You're probably in need of a restock, and since you're at Almuda Farms, you may as well activate the safe house up top and take what you need from the locker. Now you just need to find yourself a combo vehicle and double back to the communications tower. Save your game here. Next stop is the police station. Grab a combo vehicle and drive it to the south side of Central City. Restock on weapons from the nearby locker and then enter the police station. Hilde should go down easy with your jazz hands. Then it's off to the Burgess Dawson Hotel to meet up with Annie and Red. See? Says right there in the bottom left. Afterwards, you'll have a waiting around period for Red to find fuel. You should spend this time driving around and killing zombies. This is just for efficiency and kills. I personally didn't feel like it, so I just headed back to the communications tower, saved and waited for the chapter to finally end. I probably made a sandwich. Chapter 4 is next. Start off by getting a combo vehicle and then drive to Ingleton. Head to the cab company and climb to the car dealership to activate the sequence. Just head to the objective markers in the cab company, kill anything in your way, and blast the Jennies. Then you have to fight Commander Kane, and that's Jazz Hands directly to the face. Afterwards, you'll need to head to Central Storage. Get a combo vehicle and drive to Central Storage by the quarantine zone and save your game. Now grab the key and get the fuel car. You'll need to drive this to South Omita's plane hangar once again. Take the route through Central City. When you get there, Chapter 4 is done. Chapter 5 is time for Night at the Museum. Leave the hangar, save, make a fork work, and drive it to Central City's museum. Now, uh, quote unquote, engage with a boss fight with Diego. Just shoot him until he dies. This is not a problem. Afterwards, it's time for Nick and Diego's excellent adventure. Grab a new combo vehicle and drive into Sunset Hills. Take out the bikers, save the girl, and grab the plane key. Get yourself another combo vehicle and take Diego back to the plane hangar now. This is more waiting around time. Glad Rhonda spent the time painting the plane pink instead of doing the research. Very important. Save and drive around killing zombies and combo vehicles to escalate your kill count. The highway is a good option, as is Ingleton, which you'll see a little bit later. Afterwards, you'll get called back, or you can just wait for Rhonda to finish. I'm not your dad. This is about 10 minutes of waiting around. Use the time to kill zombies. When you return, it's Chapter 5 done and time for Chapter 6. This is once again a simple trip to the Collector's House in Sunset Hills to pick up most of the plane parts, then a quick detour to Ingleton before heading back to the plane hangar. Back at the hangar? Disaster strikes? You'll be inside the lab now. Make yourself a slew of combo weapons. This should be mostly acid jars and maybe a heavy metal and an iron edge. Of course, you can grab an electric rake too, as well as some healing items. When you're done, head downstairs and start the boss fight with the loaders. The loaders aren't any different than last time. Throw a few acid jars at them and maybe finish them off with a couple of wax with a heavy metal or pummel blast. Unfortunately, this fight's pretty long relative to other ones. Just work your way through the sets of loaders and eventually you'll exit out the aqueduct, which ends chapter 6. Chapter 7 is actually the final mandatory chapter. Make sure to restock on split shots by grabbing a lot of blunt objects. Then jump up the concrete pillar and combine them with guns along the way. This is important. Do the most absolutely tacked on section by going through the subway station. I, I hate this part so much, it's unreal, bros. Afterwards, head upstairs to ground level. This is just a straight trip north to BB's box. 
Now you don't need to finish the facts and overtime mode this time around. If you want the real Mega Buster unlocked for completion's sake, you'll have to get Ronda to Gary and then complete overtime mode in nightmare mode. I personally don't care about the Mega Buster. Once again, this is all achievements, not 100%. You should just kill Gary here. It saves you some time. Blast Gary in the face with split shots. Now head into BB's box and make sure to grab the Jazz Hands on the way in. We'll use them for the final boss. Now rescue Annie. This is just a speed run back to the plane hangar. Drive whatever you can to get there. Now you should just go ahead and enter the plane hangar and then shoot the crane once with a czar. Now it's the final battle versus Red. Shoot hundreds of bullets at point blank range into his face. Should be fairly simple. That's nightmare mode complete and you should get the achievement Nightmare Master for completing it. It wasn't so bad at level 50. Now we're almost done the meaningful content. Time to finish the last DLC, Chaos Rising. It's finally time to tackle the last DLC. Head into the menu and choose DLC 3, Chaos Rising, and start a new game. We're getting right into it this time. I'll give you a preview of what's to come as you get out of the police station. You've done this once before. Just like all of the other DLCs, there's a slew of collectibles as Hunter. So you're gonna have to do a lap around Los Perdidos. Starting off, there is a failable achievement with the collectible bikes. We're gonna tackle that one first. Then we'll do a fairly standard lap around Los Perdidos while collecting all of the DLC specific collectibles and progressing the main story. All in all, this should take you about two hours, mostly because of how much driving we have to do. Back to the task at hand, head upstairs, grab the key, and head downstairs and exit the garage. There's lots of materials in the garage for split shots, so take advantage for some early inventory. Not that it's gonna matter. Now get into the police car and drive all the way to the quarantine zone. This is a loop around Central City. You should avoid all of the collectibles for now. Just get out to the highway and head to the quarantine zone. Ditch your car, make some weapons if you want, and you'll get some dialogue. After a while, you'll be tasked with getting some special reserve whiskey. This is in Sunset Hills nearby. Head to your main objective marker. Make some weapons here, there's lots of stuff, and then pass through the medical trailers to get to the highway. Head westbound and you should be able to find a van. Drive this van into Sunset Hills. If you want to stop and combine it with something along the way, feel free. Otherwise, just head left towards the school, get out, and then head northbound up the street. The liquor store will be on your right. Just walk in and grab the special reserve whiskey from the ground. Now just double back to your vehicle of choice. I got in a nearby sedan. This is just a quick trip back to the quarantine zone to confront a Spider. Bail out near the medical trailers and then talk to Spider. Uh, oh no, you've been deceived. This is a joke of an encounter, especially with a handful of split shots and or czars. Just turn left after the dialogue and start blasting everything that comes out. A couple of waves later and you'll get shot in a cutscene. Because SRG over here needs to die to Nick in chapter 1 of the main story, these bikers will leave you in a dumpster. You'll be devoid of inventory. Immediately grab the healing items and heal yourself, and then pick up the shotgun in the dumpster. You should also pick up the first special reserve whiskey here. Now exit the dumpster and head to your right. Build a split shot out of the nearby gun and sledgehammer. Pick up the nearby hard hat and then combine it with a nearby pallet for a beer hat. That should give you enough healing to get you through the DLC. Head to your main objective now, this is on the southwest of Sunset Hills. You can snatch up a few guns by the barricade. Head south to the next barricade and enter Ironside Motorcycles. Pick up the final blueprint for the splitter. This is a shovel and sawtooth. Make this, and you've made every single combo weapon now. Congratulations. Talk to Torque, and he'll request bikes. Two motorcycles and a sport bike. Very specific. Head to the window and use some of Torque's chairs to make some split shots. Next, pick up the second reserve whiskey. Only 28 more to go. Once Torque's dialogue is exhausted, leave Ironside Motorcycles. Two motorcycles and a sports bike. Head westbound and you'll find a bike close by. Just drive this bike back to Torque at Ironside Motorcycles. You're gonna have to get used to this one. This is unironically the majority of this DLC. Finding motorcycles and bringing them back to Torque. Double back to where you found the first bike. Now you should turn eastbound. Clear zombies with your split shots, but be very careful. You don't want to accidentally blow up a bike. It's more likely than you think. 
The sport bike is by Rojo Diablo Mexican Restaurant. Grab it and drive it back to Torque. Drop it off and then you want to double back southeast to get back to where you grab the sport bike. This final bike isn't overly tricky, but keep heading eastbound past the bus. They should be just on your left. Two motorcycles and a sport bike. Don't grab two sport bikes. Yes, there is a difference. Torque simply won't take it. If you have trouble finding a motorcycle, you can use the Rancho Rama to grab one. Otherwise, take the one from in front of the gas station. Head back to Torque and he'll tell you about his special bike. You should save your game now. This is the most important side quest. This is failable, so you'll want to make sure that you do this first. Having indestructible vehicles here will help a lot, but it doesn't actually help that much if you drive like an idiot. Drive carefully whenever you're riding one of these special bikes, and for the love of god, do not accidentally shoot them. If these bikes blow up, you're starting over. Save and the side quest hell begins. There is no good way to do this. It's constant back and forth between the bike's location and Ironside motorcycles. The first bike is close by. This is just south of your location at the subway station. Find the bike and drive it carefully back to Torque. You actually need to drive this into Ironside motorcycles for credit this time. Once you've safely delivered a bike, you need to save your game. The next bike is on the southeast side of Sunset Hills by the medical trailer. Make your way there now. Driving cars is a good idea. Unfortunately, you are going to have to do a lot of legwork here. We're driving away from Ironside Motorcycles and leaving the bikes we bring back, so we're gonna have to hoof it. You're just gonna run out of vehicles. Grab the bike and again, carefully drive it back to Torque. Once you return to Torque, get the bike into Ironside Motorcycles and save your game. Bike 3 is directly east of you on the other side of Sunset Hills. Head east and make your way to the hardware store. You can try to kill as much as you can along the way for extra kill credit. That's the next major task. Otherwise, just get there as fast as you can. The faster you finish the side quest, the better off you'll be. There will be bikers here, so you can safely take them out with weapons or avoid them. When you're satisfied, get on the bike and head southbound. Then just turn westbound and then head northbound and drop off the bike at Ironside Motorcycles. That's all the bikes in Sunset Hills completed. Save your game. Next up are the bikes in Central City. I will flash forward to Central City here. All of the bikes are marked on your map, so this shouldn't be a huge deal. The next bike is on the east side of Central City. Loop around as per usual. Get to the Rancherama and ditch your vehicle. The next bike is just outside. Get on this and carefully drive it back to Ironside Motorcycles and Sunset Hills. Once again, I'm flash forwarding. You've driven from Central City to Sunset Hills enough times. Just drive extra carefully with this bike. One more bike safely returned. Make sure to save your game once you get credit. The next bike is also in Central City, on the west side this time, so head back to Central City now. From the north side of Central, you want to take the shortcut through the pedestrian-only road. Clear the area using split shots and then jump the barricade. Continue southbound and the road will eventually open up and you can turn right into an alleyway. This bike is hidden near a crashed van. Enter the garage and then get on the bike. No surprises here, but drive the long way around. You should drive past the museum so you can get back to Sunset Hills. Once again, I'm flash forwarding back to Ironside Motorcycles. Oh look at that, another easy plus one to the bike side quest. Save your game. Central City is completed now. Unfortunately, it's not that easy and there's lots left to do. Next up, we may as well grab the bikes in Ingleton. Head northbound and work your way to the bridge. Then find a vehicle and drive it to the location of the first bike. Once you're in Ingleton, turn to your left and drive to the end of the street. You'll find the bike just outside the north entrance to the cemetery. Ditch your vehicle and swap to the bike. Now it's easy to get to Ingleton from Sunset Hills, but it's a lot harder to get from Ingleton back to Ironside Motorcycles. You'll need to go the long way around since it's all barricaded in Sunset Hills. Head eastbound and then turn south to get back to the highway. Now you can drive the motorcycle all the way eastbound to the entrance of Sunset Hills. These trips from Ingleton are the longest, but they're not so bad. Just don't drive like a maniac. You should actively try to avoid zombies while on these bikes. The collision in Dead Rising 3 is just a mess, and even with indestructible vehicles, you are liable to blow one of these up. Otherwise, get back to Ironside Motorcycles, drive in, and drop off the next motorcycle at Torque. Once you've successfully dropped off the bike, save your game. Continuing on with Ingleton, the next bike is near the northwest side of Ingleton. Work your way back to Ingleton now. This time head westbound and stop at the last house on the right side. 
grab the bike, and this is exactly like the last trip, so I'll just go ahead and fast forward back to Ironside Bikes. Oh, look at that. Plus one to your bike counter. Save your game. One final trip to Ingleton. Once again, this is going to be a fast forward. Friendly advice here, but don't be like me and accidentally use the strong attack on your junk car for fun and then blow up the bike. That's a real bad idea and you'll have to reload your save. The last bike is near the highway, so that's kind of convenient. Just drive to the last bike in Ingleton and get on. Driving this one back's the easiest since you're already at the highway. Flash forwarding back to Ironside Bikes and that's plus one. Save your game. That's Ingleton done and there's only four bikes left. Let's start with the ones on the highway first. Exit Sunset Hills and get on the highway with a nearby vehicle. Drive this to the center of the highway now. The bike is in between two crashed train cars. Swap from your vehicle of choice to the bike and then you know what to do. Carefully drive this back to Ironside Motorcycles in Sunset Hills. Drop it off safely and you'll get plus one bike and when you get credit, save your game. The final district is South Elmuda and it's three more bikes to go. Head to South Elmuda however you see fit, but I'll be approaching from the central city side. This is convenient because there's a collectible bike on the south bridge. Head to the west side of the bridge. You should plow through some of the cars blocking your way. It'll make your trip back a little easier. The bike will be sitting by the semi-truck. You can grab a special reserve whiskey now if you want, but otherwise you should get on the bike. Standard practice here. You can choose to loop around South Almuda or head back through Central City. The fireworks factory is a huge no-no for getting a vehicle unscathed, so head back the way you came through Central City. Just make sure to dodge the exploding barrels on the south side. Back at Ironside Motorcycles, you'll get another plus one and you should save your game. Two bikes left. Head back to South Elmuda once again. I opted to use the north entrance near the power plant this time, for no other reason than I felt like it. The second to last bike is near the Zip gas station on the south side of South Elmuda. You should head there by hanging a left and wrapping around the construction site. At the gas station, make sure to grab the bike. Once again, this is a simple trip back to Ironside Motorcycles at Sunset Hills. Just be careful and double back the way you came from. You can go north to get to the highway or use the Central City Bridge. Both should be just fine. Back at Ironside Motorcycles, deposit your bike inside and then save your game. One final bike to go. This is the only motorcycle that has some kind of wrinkle in the plan. This bike is at the parking lot in Laos Cream Dream in South Elmuda. Make your way there now. This area of South Elmuda is locked in via barricades on all sides. It's basically impossible to drive around here. The way that you get this bike back is by driving it through the thrift store southwest of the bus depot. You can squeeze your bike into the store and then leave via the exit on the west side. It is a little bit finicky, but you should be able to get the bike through unscathed. You have options now to get this back to Ironside Motorcycles. You can head north through the industry tunnel to get onto the highway, or you can drive south and pass through South Elmuda and then Central City. Make your choice and drive carefully, but make your way back to Ironside Motorcycles and deposit the last bike for torque. When you finish, you should get the achievement add to the collection. Make sure to save your game now. If you failed and a bike exploded, well repeat this part of the guide and do it correctly. This took me the better part of an hour though. Oh, you thought you were done delivering bikes? Well, guess what, buckaroo? The main story needs us to deliver one more. Thankfully, the second half of this DLC will be a lot easier and faster overall. Collecting Torque's final bike is a very simple task of leaving Sunset Hills and heading to Central Storage. Grab a vehicle and head there now. Head to the gate and open it up. Just start blasting everything in here. This area actually has a lot of blunt objects and hand cannons, so it's a free way to restock on split shots for the rest of the DLC. You can do this now if you like. Next, open up the locker door, get on the last bike, and drive it northbound back into Sunset Hills. This one actually has durability, so you don't get the infinite durability vehicles perk. Proving once again that those Vancouver boys don't know anything about how numbers actually work. Drop off the last bike at Torque and you'll be told to wait around. This is a very short waiting period, but go ahead and save at the nearby restrooms. Time to get the Sunset Hills collectibles, a final hurrah around Los Perdidos. Head southwest to get to the subway station. You'll want to head inside and then shoot the emergency phone, that's one of 20. Now find a vehicle and head eastbound. You'll want to drive to the parking lot again. Stop, get out, and shoot the emergency phone by the fence, that's two of 20. Continue eastbound. If you want to stop and make an elemental staff at the Speedy Espresso, feel free. Otherwise, head to the communications tower now. You can shoot the third emergency phone just outside. 
Now it's time to head northbound and get to the hardware store. Head to the counter and pick up the third special reserve whiskey on the floor. Next stop is the mayor's mansion. Head northbound, hop the barricade, and then hop the fence. Climb up the stairs here. The special reserve whiskey is on the left side of the gazebo, so grab it. There's also an opportunity to make a set of jazz hands here and it's a good idea. Use the nearby boxing gloves followed by a nearby six shooter to make jazz hands. You can use these fairly freely, but you should reserve them as a boss killer. They're really strong. The next task is directly westbound. Head back to the streets and work your way northwest up the landslide. Jump over and continue running. Pass the school bus and then on the left, shoot the fourth emergency phone. There will be several bikers here, but ignore them and work your way back to Joey's house. Take a right at the blockade and then head inside. The special reserve whiskey is on the left side just sitting on a table. Do a smash and grab, and leave. Continuing westbound now, kill zombies as you run up the street. Torque should finish his plans, but we do have a lap to complete. It's almost as if I designed it this way. As you get to the highway, shoot the fifth emergency phone on your left. That's the last one in Sunset Hills. Now, it's time to head back to Torque. Head southbound and hop the barricade. Continue south past BB's box, but take a quick pit stop into Jug's Bar and Grill. Head to the bar behind the counter and grab the special reserve whiskey. This is 6 of 30. That's all for collectibles in Sunset Hills. Head south and talk to Torque. He's got a new combo vehicle for you, the Thrasher. This is objectively worse than the Roller Hog, which we mysteriously are not allowed to build yet. Finish talking to Torque and you'll get to the meat of Hunter's DLC. This is dealing with Spider's gang lieutenants, who reside in each of the districts, cool. And yes, it's lieutenant, not lieutenant, because I'm Canadian. Save your game and then get on the bike, which has zero story significance. We're done with Sunset Hills, so it's just a matter of making your way to the mayor's mansion once again. Drive the Thrasher there and then hop out when you get to the barricade. Climb up once again, you can stop to make some combo weapons if you want. As you head upstairs to the tennis courts, you'll have to deal with some bikers. Just shoot them, and then head up the staircase. Gang rings are there just for PP, so you're free to collect them or not, it's irrelevant to the achievement standing. When you're ready, head to the top and then wrap around to find Razorface. Razorface, believe it or not, is exactly like Red. He just charges you. You'll be noticing a theme in terms of boss mechanics. Dodge Razorface if you want, but otherwise blast him in the face and give him the jazz hands. Easy game, easy life. Afterwards, it's time to head to the next location. Save your game. Snake is in Ingleton at the apartments. Just go ahead and take the north bridge to Ingleton now. I'll fast forward ahead since we've done this many times before. Inside Ingleton are a slew of collectibles, but we may as well start with Snake. Head left and bail out of your car on the way down to the apartments. Head down the alleyway. Two bikers will be guarding the door. Just blast them. Now head inside and up the staircase. Work your way to the end of the hallway and then loop around to the next staircase upwards. Snake is a coward. Your goal is to chase him down. He's invincible until he gets outside, so follow him out. A burst of the jazz hands should take him out, but if you miss, just sprint after him and shoot him in the back. Guy will just keep running until you eventually finish him off. Alright, now we're in Ingleton, so we may as well save and then do a lap for collectibles to no one's surprise. Start by making your way to the south side of Ingleton. If you want, you can stop at a Duna boxing gym. You can grab gloves here that we can turn into jazz hands at the gun store. I opted for the full inventory. Six to eight pairs of gloves, please. Now head south of Aduna Boxing Gym. The sixth emergency phone is between Aduna and Shanks. Take it out however you can, there's a sword nearby. Now head southeast. You should enter the liquor store by the barricade. Inside, at the back on a shelf, you'll find the special reserve whiskey. Pick this up. You may have to clear some garbage along the area to pick it up, but otherwise that's 7 of 30. Now jump out of the liquor store and head eastbound to get to the gun store. Make your gloves into jazz hands now. A full inventory of jazz hands with one beer helmet will take us to the end of the DLC easily. Your next goal is to head to the park south of the gun store. Blast your way out and pass through the alley. Head inside and you'll find an emergency phone inside the playground. Kind of a weird place for one I guess, but okay. Blast that and that's 7 of 20. It's time to work your way southwest, a bit of a detour. Head through the alley and cut to the streets via Sunny Luck Fortune, but stop inside and grab the special reserve whiskey. This is tucked away between two cabinets. This one's also annoying to grab, but make sure you have 8 of 20 before moving on. Head outside and southwest bound now. There's an emergency phone hidden behind a concrete pillar. 
wrap around and blast it. That's 8 of 20. The next collectible is directly north of your location. Blast the zombies in the way and head to the restaurant. Smash the glass, then grab special reserve whiskey 9 of 30 from the window. Now you'll need to head to the north side of Ingleton. Head north and get in a nearby hearse. Drive this into the cemetery and continue driving northbound. Work your way to the exit. You'll find an emergency phone just before it. Blast it for 9 of 20. You can combine the two hearses here for a junk car. This is worth building. The next collectibles are westbound, so move forward. Head down the alleyway to the apartments when you can. There is another collectible in here. Head back up the stairs and work your way all the way to the end. Head upstairs again and pass by the corpses of the goons you killed. Enter the room on your right and grab the next reserve whiskey, that's 10 of 30. Do a repeat of your battle with Snake and jump outside. Head westbound this time and make your way to the south side of the buffet. Keep sprinting and working your way to the west side. You can enter the kitchens here. The special reserve whiskey is on the shelf. That's 11 of 30. You should head westbound down the street to reach the end. There's another special reserve whiskey in Shavy's garage, but it's inaccessible at this point. Don't worry, we'll come back as part of the main story. Turn southbound and work your way to the highway. Turn left instead and head towards the Rancho Rama. Take the classic alleyway beside the Rancho Rama and work your way into the garage. Turn to your left and grab the 12th special reserve whiskey from the locker. Now double back westbound towards the highway. You can grab a nearby van here. You can also combine this with a taxi into a junk truck. Drive this a short distance and then stop. Shoot the 10th emergency phone on the way out of the highway. That's all we can do in Ingleton for now. It's time to make your way to South Almuda. This is once again a lap around South Almuda followed by a minor boss fight. Head down the off ramp to enter the east side of South Almuda now. This is where your lap begins. Disembark outside the fire station. The 11th emergency phone is just outside so make sure to shoot it. Now continue on foot through South Almuda heading westbound. You'll want to head southbound when you get to the bus and head up to the metro station. Head to the pedestrian overpass and work your way to the end. Blast the 12th emergency phone here. Now you should double back all the way to the northern street. If you want to make an ultimate shout, go ahead and make one on the fly. Now head west and pass the bus. On your left, enter Special Jay's Cafe. Grab the 13th Special Reserve Whiskey off the floor and then leave. Head left and make your way into the power plant now. On the west side of the power plant is another emergency phone. Shoot it and then head south out of the power plant. The next task is to hit up the liquor store. Turn to your right and head forward. Turn into the liquor store now and grab the 14th Special Reserve Whiskey from the shelf at the back. Now you'll want to head northwest into the strip club. Head inside, stay on ground level and grab the Special Reserve Whiskey from the bar. 15 of 30, halfway done. Exit out to the parking lot of the strip club now. Use the dumpster to boost yourself to the alley behind Almuda Farms. Continue past the truck and then turn around to blast the 14th emergency phone. The next stop is at the recycling depot. Head south and wrap around the alleyway and then turn northwest. Clear zombies in your way and then enter the recycling depot. The special reserve whiskey is by a dumpster. Grab 16 of 30. Time to snake back towards the center of South Almuda. Head south and exit to the parking lot. Now continue south to Rocket's Red Glare killing zombies along the way. Turn to your left and hop over the barricade as usual. Continue eastbound now and work your way to the crashed train car. This one's in a bit of a hard spot. You'll have to head into the train and grab Whiskey 17 of 30 on one of the seats. That's all done so head southbound now. Exit the train and enter Big Buck's construction site. Make your way south and head to the gas station. On the outside, shoot the 15th emergency phone. We're getting pretty close now. Head westbound again and get to the seafood restaurant on the south side. Clear zombies along the way but density isn't actually that great here. Enter Pirate's Catch and smash the boat display. Grab special whiskey 18 of 30 from inside. Now it's time to tackle the boss of this area. Head north out of the restaurant, then wrap around to the warehouse on your left. Clear out any resistance along the way. Jazz hands should make short work of everything. Head to the top, and then follow cannons to the end of the roof. She'll taunt you, pull a gun, and then immediately die to thousands of bullets directly to her brain. When she goes down, pick up her ring. That's another achievement down, Hunter and the Hunted. I see what you did there. Now you'll want to head to the doorway nearby, but do not drop down the hole yet. Instead, grab the special reserve whiskey from the shelf, that's 19 of 30. If you need some healing items, grab some from the secret room and then head outside and drop back down to ground level at the Rancho Rama. Kick the door open. 
You'll need to head to Torque now, but we still need the Central City collectibles. I really hope nothing bad happens to Torque while we're doing this. Grab a vehicle from the Rancho Rama. I opted for a turret rig here. Drive this turret rig eastbound and then head north and turn east again to get to the bridge. If you skipped the special reserve whiskey in the truck earlier like I did, make sure to stop, jump out, and grab it. That's 20 of 30, only 10 more to go. Get back in your combo vehicle of choice and plow through the area. Drive across the bridge and enter Central City. One final lap of Central City, and I do actually mean a final lap this time. Stop at the intersection. You should head south into the courthouse. Head to the reception desk and grab the 21st whiskey from behind it. Now exit and head eastbound. The 16th emergency phone will be directly in front of you. Shoot it. Now you should head south and enter the liquor store. At the back, grab the 22nd special reserve whiskey. Time to continue along the south strip of Central City for the last time. Clear the police zombies around the area. If you need a gun restock, now is the time to make some split shots, otherwise keep heading east. When you see the parked taxi, head to it. Pick up the special reserve whiskey near the interrupted picnic, that's 23 of 30. The next set of collectibles are at the Burgess Dawson Hotel. Head east and get there. Start in the outdoor dining room. Blast the 17th emergency phone just inside. Now you'll need to head into the Burgess Dawson Hotel and head all the way to the top. Make your way to the main lobby and then head up the next spiral staircase. Enter the door at the top and then head around to find the outdoor bar area. Turn to your right and grab the next special reserve whiskey, that's 24 of 30. That's all in the Burgess Dawson Hotel. Jump off the edge to get to ground level. You can shoot the exploding barrels here and then you know what, save your game at the porta potty. Clear the tennis courts for one last time and then head northbound to the hospital. Turn to your right and blast the next emergency phone. This is hidden behind the bulldozer. Two more phones to go. Continue northbound and work your way to the Rancho Rama. Take a save at this porta potty if you wish, and then turn to your right. Jump onto the electrical transformer and grab Special Reserve Whiskey 25 of 30 from the top. Five more to go. Now head westbound across the street. You'll want to head up towards the museum. Follow this to the T-Rex statue. The 19th emergency phone will be at the foot of the stairs nearby. Shoot it. Continue westbound. Head down the pedestrian walking area on your right. Head up the stairs and wrap around to find a special reserve whiskey on the dining area. Four more of those to go. The next collectibles are northwest. You should head up the street and turn into the alleyway. Head up towards the security office parking lot and shoot the final emergency phone. You should get the stick it to the man achievement here. Now you should head into the security office. Head into the offices of the office, and you'll find the special reserve whiskey next to the consoles. 27 of 30, only 3 more to go. If you need a split shot, make one now. Handgun and chair, classic. The last two whiskeys in Central City are northbound. Head out of the security office and pass through the loading bay to Albert's Apparel. Get back onto the street now. Continue northeast. You'll want to head up to the illegal safe house. Climb to the top and work your way to the left of the ye old toy box sign. Collect the 28th whiskey, then drop back down to ground level. Clear the zombies in the area and continue forward. The last whiskey is actually in central storage. Whoops, should have grabbed it when we were there. Oh well. Head over the highway, climb over the buses and drop back down to the lower level of the highway. Head into central storage now and head to the last unit on the left. Open it up and grab the 29th special reserve whiskey. Now you can restock on weapons if you want, but we're basically done the DLC at this point. All that's left is to head back to Torque. The final whiskey will be on the way. Save if you want and then grab a nearby vehicle. Just drive this back to Sunset Hills. Now take a quick drive back to Ironside Motorcycles. You should know the way. You drove this same route a huge amount of times in this DLC alone. Inside, Torque will have been murdered? Do you think it's because we took too long collecting collectibles? No, there's no way. Regardless, you'll get a standard DLC costume change into Hunter's especially racist costume. The most racist costume of them all. Your task is to get to Shavy's Garage in Ingleton now. This is one last pass through Sunset Hills to get to the North Bridge. Grab yourself a vehicle and make one last pass over the North Bridge too. Inside Ingleton, just take a right and head to Shavy's Garage. Clear out the biker resistance here. You can open the door this time. Inside is Hunter's Roller Hog. I clapped when I learned how we got it. The final special reserve whiskey is in here, so make absolutely sure that you pick it up off the shelf. That's one more achievement in the bag. The final task in Chaos Rising is to drive this roller hog to the quarantine zone and confront Spider. 
This is a simple drive. Just don't flip the roller hog or blow it up and you should be just fine. It's not a good feeling to have to pay attention driving one of these, especially considering how low the durability actually is. At the quarantine zone, you'll get some cutscenes and have to fight Spider. Unironically, Spider is a recolor of red. The exact same tactics, simple charges, etc. It's very, very lazy. Spider is no different than any other psychopath otherwise. Unload thousands of bullets out of your jazz hands and or split shots and he'll go down without much of a fight. I feel like I'm wasting my breath giving this a strategy. Even if he grabs you, he really just can't kill you. Once the fight is over, you'll get another cutscene and you'll be done the final DLC. That's Chaos Rising completed, and the last meaningful piece of content left. There is one final task for Dead Rising 3's complete achievement set, and it's by far the most tedious one. At this point, you'll have finished every meaningful piece of content in the game. You've done the main story with every side mission. You've done every one of the four bonus DLCs. You've collected hundreds of collectibles. You've done many pointless PP trials, but there's still more. Your last task is to get yourself about 350,000 zombie kills to complete the final two PP trials for Prestige Hound. This is a simple but lengthy final trial. You should head to Chapter Select now and choose Chapter 6. Chapter 8 should also work, but I'll be using Chapter 6. Inside Chapter 6, you should ignore everything and make your way directly to the Rancho Rama. Grab yourself a vehicle of your choice. The fastest kill machine is the Roller Hog, and the second fastest is the Turret Rig. I've checked. Your choices don't matter here, but keep in mind, if you haven't finished your 1000 kills with any of the combo vehicles, you can do so now. Your goal now is to spend hours of your life ripping laps around Ingleton. Slap a Fujiwara Tofu Shop sticker on, and then prepare the Eurobeat. You should head north through the Industry Tunnel and turn right. You'll want to travel this loop in a very specific way. Turn eastbound and at the end of the street, turn northbound. Drive all the way to the end of the street and then turn westbound. Drive all the way to the end of the street and then turn south. Drive south and turn east to pass the Rancho Rama. Now you should turn to your right and jump the ramp to get to the south side of Ingleton. Now turn left and drive eastbound. This is the lap that you'll be doing until you finish the final PP trial for the 200,000 zombie kills. This is going to be a massive time investment of just running this lap over and over again. I would personally recommend using the Steam Achievement Manager to unlock Prestige Hound at this point if you're on PC, but if you want to do this legit, or you're on Xbox, this is the only way to do it. You just gotta keep running these laps. If you ever lose your vehicle, just head back to the Rancho Rama and grab a new one. You can build roller hogs at the northeast and southwest corners of Ingleton, so keep that in mind as well. You should save frequently and just continue driving laps all the way to the final kill count. It's boring and annoying, but you should be able to finish in a few hours. Sorry, did I just say a few hours? For your reference, I did one hour kill samples with each of the combo vehicles that needs kills for a PP trial. I ran the same route, one hour each to see the kill rate. I finished all of them and that was five hours of driving. Afterwards, I still had to do another nearly two and a half hours of aggressive focused driving with the Roller Hog, since the Roller Hog has the fastest kill count by a huge margin. We're approaching infinity mode levels of ridiculous here. At least you can save your game. There's nothing much to say here. Just keep doing these laps around until you're done. The zombies should refresh as you work your way around Ingleton, so you'll continually be hitting fresh zombies. Other than that, it's just a matter of taking breaks, resetting the chapter if you ever feel the need to, reevaluating your life choices, you know, the usual stuff that comes up while playing video games for fun. This is also supposedly doable in Chapter 8 as well, but personally I think there's just too much junk around, and Chapter 6 is just fine. Chapter 8 has the benefit of having unlimited time until you get to the roof of the movie theater, so if you never go to the movie theater, you never run out of time. But as usual, run the laps, save, take breaks, and reset the chapter whenever you feel like it. Run this lap around Ingleton until you're bored to tears, and you know what? Keep driving even after that. After you hit the required kill count and unlock the last PP trial, you will get the Prestige Hound achievement for completing all of the PP trials. And with that, you've done all of the achievements for Dead Rising 3 Apocalypse Edition. At least the ones that are PC exclusive. 
Xbox has a whole other game mode for you to engage with. You can wait for that one in a future video. This one's long enough. If you got the glitch with Brad and his corpse piles, you should now go ahead and refer to the Ashes to Ashes supplement video. That's another 37 minutes of content for you, and even more views for me. But otherwise, that's Dead Rising 3 all achievements over and done with. Congratulations.